Hello and a very good morning to you all. Welcome to the Hawthorns, the home of West Bromwich Albion, here for the ESFA National PlayStation Schools Cup Finals. It is day three of four in this PlayStation Schools Cup Finals Festival. And we start this morning with the under-14 small schools final. It's Leaf Studio taking on Moreland School. Well, I'm delighted to say I am once, once again joined alongside by former Aston Villa legend and England international winger Tony Daly. Tony, once again, great to have you here and looking forward to another full action-packed day ahead. Yeah, thanks Isaac. Very much so. Again, we had a, a wonderful day yesterday with the games and uh, I'm really, really looking forward to today's games as well. It's got beautiful weather again for it. Be a, a nice and exciting for all the players. So we, we all, we all, we all should be good and looking forward to today's games. Tell us a little bit about your memories of playing at, at the age of a schoolboy. Did you have these sorts of opportunities when, when you were at school and what would it mean for the players today who do? Yeah. No, I mean, not, not really. I mean, the best we got to, we didn't have like national schools, which is ab absolutely, absolutely fantastic. We've gone from school to school. The, the road we went through was uh, obviously, obviously playing for your district. My district was Aston at the time. And then for following that, uh, going on to uh, play for uh, your county. And mine was the West Midlands, West Midlands County. And... Um, I managed to play for West Midlands County and we played in regional games and we, we, we played in the likes of West Brom, you know, pitches like that, West Brom, Walls, playing at Walls, always remember that, so it's a big occasion then, but you only did it, did it at, a, at a higher level, so you know, these players as well, it's great that they can go through their schools to do that, where I had to go for the district and county to get to this level. Well, here come the two teams then, Leaf Studio on the left there and Moreland School on the right. Let's take a look at how the two teams here line up. So for Leaf Studio, they have Zach White between the sticks in goal. Then the rest of their starting lineup is made up of Harvey Vaughan, Amelia Green, Faye Smithson, Oliver Bartlett, Jimmy Munro. The captain is Bo Jenkins, Lewis Gunn, Leo Thomason, Johnny Fry and Lucas Garrell jones As for Moreland School then, they have Callum Beddoes in goal to begin with. And then the rest of their starting eleven: Hassan Mekdi, Ben O'Leary, Connor Grace, who captains the side, Caden Lightbrown, Scarlett Bolton, Archie Higginson, Braden Fergin, Zach Meyer, Isa Patala and Tyler Steed. On the substitute bench for Leaf Studio, Abby Yanez, Tia Brooker, Billy Martin, Finn Richardson and Marvin Doney. As for Moreland School, their substitute options are Liam Garner, Manuel Githendu, Alton Fielding, Max Douglas and Charlie Knox. The referee for this one this morning is Mr Paul Cook, his assistants Alex Cook and Trevor Redmore and the fourth official is Ronnie McNaughton. Well it's going to be interesting then, it's a boys game but it's a mixed category up until the under 18s and Leaf Studio here with five girls in amongst their squad as well we believe that's the most that any side have ever fielded on finals day it's going to be an interesting dynamic with the, the mix between the players and it's good to see out there as well yeah absolutely that's fantastic and t uh, a testament to them that they've got uh, here to this level really really good be interesting to see this game and how it, play how it plays my first experience of uh, watching a mixed a mixed uh, game first and foremost impressed with Moreland School's kit Re retro England one it looks like to me <laughs> there's so the old Admiral kit <laughs> very impressive <laughs> I like that yeah it does look like it doesn't it mm. well this is a repeat of the final two seasons ago that was 8-2 to Leaf School on that day I'd be very surprised if it was that one sided this time around Leaf Studio looking for more success up against Moreland School here this morning It's just the first of five games to bring to you today. This Wednesday's full day of action. We have many more categories still to come. Each and every one of the games a final in their own right. And the two teams have worked so hard to get to this stage as well. It all comes down to this for their PlayStation Schools Cup campaigns. And we are now very nearly ready to begin.
going to be important that they start on the right foot, isn't it, Tony? It is very much so, as it, as it is now. We saw yesterday an early goal goes in, then you know it, it, it's become very difficult for the other team chasing. But we did see though, beginning of each game, it's very, very hectic, very, very, very. Uh, really really close games in terms of not close down but as the games got on there's more space created the game is a little bit more open again the size of the pitch uh, you know and tired legs comes into play and we saw more excitement during the end as well but let's see what's going to happen today yeah, it's been a really entertaining first two days and hopefully more of the same here on day three as the day gets underway the first game gets underway and it's sent long forward there for Morland score on the attack immediately Good tackle, initially. Always good to get a first early yeah. tackle in like that. Taken down there by Tyler Steed for Moreland. Under pressure, though. Did well, actually, to wriggle away from the first pressure. Looking to go on the overlap there. Right back for Leaf, it's then played forward and after it now is Jimmy Munro. Goalkeeper though, Beddoes did well. Yeah, did the roll there. And that for safety. As you can see both teams pressing early doors as well. Limited space available on the pitch. Taken down nicely there on the chest by Johnny Fry. Number 10 in the middle of the park today for Leaf. Morland coming forward now. Trying to play that one in behind there from Braden Fergin, but it was cut out. Swept forward to try to test Tyler Steed, but he's equal to that challenge. First 90 seconds played all this might be problematic though for Morland at the back. He's driving into the penalty area and well, it's a good challenge in the end, really important one. Yeah, lovely deception there. Jenkins was just thwarted. Not to be a good opening, though. Now good ball. What a great ball. Excellent ball in behind. Onside as well. Real chance. And the first yeah. goal. And it's Braden Fergin for Morland. What a start. Yes, a super ball played through. One and one. What composure there as well, though. Had a lot to do. They're the hardest ones those finishes when he got so much time. Picked his spot superbly. Fantastic finish. Brilliant ball through and a brilliant finish to match it as well. We are off and underway for day three of the PlayStation Schools Cup Finals. And it's Moreland School who get the first goal of it. Yeah, great ball through Higginson and play that through ball. Perfectly done. Look at look at that good finish. It really was. No mistake in front of goal for Fergin. It's just the start that Morland were looking for. Now they're down the other end, looking to hit back straight away here, Leaf. Thomason into the box. It's going to roll behind for the game's first corner. Yeah, good response by Leaf there. But it does now open the game up a little bit now as well. than here to be sent in by Johnny Fry. Out now though for the goal kick. Long downfield there from the goalkeeper Callum Beddoes wearing number one for Moreland in goal in the green here this morning. Two periods of 35 minutes this game, by the way. At the under 14 level, the category for this one. If we are level at full time, then it would be straight to penalties, but it doesn't look like we're going to have a lack of goals after the very early one here for Morley. Header on, but the offside flag is raised. Goalkeeper held onto it well, anyhow. The offside flag went up. Yeah, good for the keeper there as well. Good strike. Well, he was offside. Oh, 
Beddoes long down the middle of the field Fergin here the goal scorer trying to go around down the line down the wing yeah, good challenge there by Vaughan Foul. Subsequent free kick. O'Leary there. The player to send it forward. It wasn't dealt with. It runs all the way through. And he's back to it is. What a finish. It is the dream start for Moreland. They are two goals up with just five minutes on the clock. Is that man Fergin again? What a fantastic finish. To be fair, the free kick should have been, should have been dealt with. But what about the finish? He had a lot to do there as well. Had to lift it over the goalkeeper. Keeper come for it. Fantastic finish from a tight angle. Braden Fergin with his second of the game. Excellent finish, wasn't it? Yeah, superb, superb finish there. So a lot to do here. Leave to get back in this game. Just need to steady the ship, I think, as well. Don't go too gun ho. Vaughan coming forward there for Leaf. They've got to respond now though, haven't they, Tony? Leaf, it's, it's not the start that they wanted at all. Yeah, not at all. But the thing is though, is you, you know they can't go too crazy because they don't want to be 3-4-0 down. They look from this counter attack for the same breath, get some passing, get some confidence, you know, and build from there again. Build, build again. Up past Mia, after it here is Jimmy Munro. The shooting opportunity around the goalkeeper, and it's three. Well, it really is dreamland now for Morland. It's Brendan Bergen again with a hat trick inside seven minutes. Boom, boom, boom. That is some hat trick. Three good goals he's taken there. Again, using his pace. Very high line. Broke through. And a great finish again. Doesn't look composed when he gets to a goal. Does not look like he's going to miss, does he? <laughs> uh, Certainly doesn't. Yeah, takes it round the keeper. Slots it away. Yeah, Three Monroe was back there doing all he could to try to prevent mm. that hat trick, but couldn't. And Fergit. Just so composed in front of goal. Look at that. Round the goalkeeper. Simple finish in the end. It's a dream start for Morland. Yeah, it's important for Leaf now. You know, really just get some confidence back now. Really is. Get some touch of the ball. Trying to concede any more goals. That's the most important thing. Really is. Goalkeeper Beddoes. Oh, that's loose. It's going to end up back with him though. Moreland boss Charlie Jackson, it goes without saying, will be absolutely delighted with the start that his side have made. Yeah, it's an absolute dream start, isn't it? It really is. Battle on for it in the middle of the park, Munro. Good touch there, good deception. Took it back to the goalkeeper. Again, Fergin after it. This is Mia. Mia bearing down on goal now. Can it get even better? Yes, it does. And it's 4 0. We've just nine minutes gone. Zach Mia gets his goal to add to Bergen's hat-trick, it's four! Yes, it's, it's that uh, through ball that's causing absolute chaos in that Leaf, Leaf studio defence and again, really good finish broke through again, it's a really good finish composed slid it in Four chances and four goals for Moreland score already 
great yeah. finish. Yeah, just slot it. It was a really good finish. Slot it in the near post. Keepers near post. Holland coming forward again as well there. Fergin having scored the hat-trick very, very early on was the provider for that one with the assist. Forward there from Smithson. Unlucky there, Smithson. Morland won 5-4 in their semi-final. So far in the final has been plain sailing for them. 4-0 up already. Doesn't look as though they're going to have to endure the chaotic nature of that semi-final win. O'Leary with the pass out to the right there. Latest goal scorer Met. Mekti was after it, but Green got there first. Good footwork into the feet of Patala. To the penalty area and the header on as well, but it's held by the goalkeeper that time. Yeah, great ball into the box, and he's on it, on it again, Fergie with a good header. For say for the keeper. Yeah, good cross. Rose really well. Really did. Such a tough start to the game for the goalkeeper, Zach White, because there wasn't really too much he could do about the no, first four goals no, at no, all. Absolutely not. Exposed, running through on him. 1v1. So hard for the goalkeeper. I've been saying that as well, you know, there were really good finishes as well. Yeah, they made it hard for the goalkeeper. Yeah. That's why it's 4-0 already. Swept up, back to Beddoes. Perkins done superbly well again. Rob Smith's in a possession to begin with. Yeah, Great challenge though from Vaughan. Yeah, good covering there. Such a threat to Fergin is. Got pace to burn. As we can see, a knife for a goal as well. It's a foul. Will be a free kick for that. Not a bad position for this free kick no, either, it is, is it? Good range. It's a, it's a lovely range. Just to get it up and over. It is a direct shot Ooh, on goal, but yeah. it drops just wide in the end. Decent effort, though. Yeah, it was. It's a really good effort. Just outside the post. Had the dip for sure. Whipped it across the, across the goal. He certainly got it up and down. Just not quite the direction on it in the end. the feet of Mia but he wasn't able to bring the ball under his spell that time Thomason looking to try and break away here for Leaf well held up though oh, it hits the corner flag in the end the ball's still in play not often that you see that but that's what happened Thomason in the end with the final touch goes behind for the goal kick This, if they are to go on to win today, it looks that way, will be the fifth national title for Moreland School in the last eight years. Really good going, really good history. They've built up now over the previous decade as a school. 
see what a great ball that is. Coming forward again here. Advancing forward here down the right as well. To the penalty area for Mia, but just wasn't able to keep it in, was he? Yes, he has. Still got there. Mia cuts it back. Nearly a chance for number five. And there it is. It's tucked away again. And things just continue to get worse for Lever. Better and better for Morland. Max Douglas there with the finish. Yeah, it's a really good finish again. Keeper had no chance. Wave after wave of attack. Did well to keep that ball in. Played in. Couldn't get hold of it. Just and swept into finish. the bottom yeah, corner. Finish. Five nil. With a quarter of an hour on the clock. This is some performance for Morland. Yep. They have everything, everything's gone right for them today in terms of performance. All players playing with a lot of confidence now. Ford up there looking for the hat trick hero, Fergin, but it was wayward of where he was that time. Smithson. Back to the throw in. the goalkeeper might be in a bit of a sticky situation but did well there he actually did well. he did do well go that work got that really well steed Connor Grace sent it back to the goalkeeper Pedos happy to play out Higginson trying to slip that one through Clipped over the top. Here, yeah, looking for Gunn. Gunn got the touch to it, but couldn't take full control. Put him away there from Harvey Vaughan. Goalkeeper alert again, and we'll see that one inside his 18 yard box. Yeah, you can see the goalkeeper's a bit further up now as well, playing that sweeper system. there for Jenkins the skipper but only momentarily it's back there with the latest oh, score of Douglas pass. excellent ball look at that for a pass lucky there by the light burn. fantastic spray the ball out and over that right hand side and the recent successes that Moreland have enjoyed they uh, have partnership links as well with Blackburn Rovers Academy and also Manchester City Academy both category one academy setups and good work there from Jenkins to nip in and win the ball back Jenkins looking to burst clear locked into the right as well with Gunn still Jenkins yes, it just wide but that's the closest that Leeds Studio have come and their best moment so far yes great run by Jenkins Jenkins so some good power as well to get away from the, the defenders he was unlucky they struck it across there so good strength there well that's encouraging really is yeah, definitely a better sign for Leaf Studio that and it will take it back to the goalkeeper but he opted to just smash long clear here's Scarlett Bolton good pass Fergin on the turn again good challenge though 
Was that one going to drop? It dropped for Leaf, and they were able to hit that ball then up to halfway. It's a foul. Conceded there by Archie Higginson. It's taken relatively quickly, long diagonal. Good ball from Vaughan. Very good ball. Not quite the follow-up pass to match it, though. Over the head of Fergin that time, and he was offside. 20 minutes played, still 15 to go until half-time, and it's 5-0 to Moreland. Alex Cook there, the linesman over on the far side, having, ranged, having raised the flag. Drops through, where's that one going to fall? It's eventually into the grateful open arms of the goalkeeper. Yeah, just played a little ball behind defence. Keeper did well there. He did. Amongst all the chaos. Yeah, it was chaotic back there. Much better passage of play here by Leaf. Mia. Back to Steed. Flicked on as well here for Scarlett Bolton to get after. Back across for Mia. It was just too far ahead of him though. He has it now. Force back. Happy to go back and maintain possession. Via first O'Leary. Now it's Higginson. Back again to O'Leary. O'Leary got away from the first challenge but not the second. into the tackle there as well as you said there and more than quite happy to you know keep the ball moving if it needs to go back another 20 yards doesn't matter keep possession of the ball great play to wriggle away from the first challenge there from Liam Garnett and Mia will go for goal and this time just wide he didn't quite get hold of it there but nearly snuck in that far post. He picks the ball up there. Inside the defender. It's whipped across it. Just on the outside. Fergin again. Good number save. Seven. Parried back oh. though. And there's number six. It's turned in by Scarlett Bolton. There to convert the rebound. Bolton adds her name to the score sheet. It's 6 0 good little finish there as well they don't look as easy as seem there off the keeper straight out straight out to Bolton again important to keep it low keep it down and a good finish really was keepers on keepers unlucky there as well it's made a decent save it fell nicely and that's six It was a good stop to begin with, but just parried back to Bolton. Lucas Scarrell Jones here has been introduced for Leaf Studio. He was initially listed as having started the game, but coming on as a substitution. Marvin Doney is also on there to replace Faye Smithson. Connor Grace back to the goalkeeper. Captain today for Morland. Connor Grace in the heart of defence. Their back line hasn't really been tested too much so far. Garner didn't quite get the ball that he was looking for that time Touch. Bolton did well Bolton here again the latest goal scorer for Morland foul though there against Steed Morland just playing the ball around one and two touch building play all the way up for passenger play is really really good 
very difficult to leave to get a touch at the moment. Forward from White. It's only coming back though via Patala. Fergin again after this one in behind. Fergin goes past the goalkeeper again. I'm sliding out of his penalty area there, White. Fergin though was disrupted. Back to Bolton. Clipped forward now on the turn. Good turn as well and into the corner. Well, can you believe it? It's 7-0 with 25 minutes played. Douglas with his second. Morland with their seventh. Super turn. Yeah, and there's been a finish there. Good, really good finish. Watch his turn here. Lovely little turn. And across the goalkeeper. Well, they have been clinical when in front of goal, Morland. On the other end, it's played in there by Munro. Lofted high for Thomason. It's a foul on the free kick, but clinical the word to describe Morland in front of goal so far. Very much so. I mean, Virtue scored with every shot, haven't they? To be fair, that's, that's some conversion rate, to be quite honest with you. Brought back for another free kick here for Leaf. In a better position this one. Looks as though they are lining up for a direct effort on goal then. Can they test the goalkeeper Beddoes? at least force him to make the save Johnny Fry here will step up to it struck it well enough but it was just always rising high and wide good connection on it yeah it's a good strike but yeah, it was high high and handsome but decent strike Morland School, I'm told, actually brought in Yaya Torre to one of their training sessions recently before this cup final. Well, whatever we said to them, it certainly worked for yeah, them. Absolutely. <laughs> Scarlett Bolton after this again down the right wing. Really sharp Bolton down there. Shows good pace. She's got a goal take kept wide a really good touches in this game closing in now on the final five minutes of the half it's the first game of five today here at the Hawthorns for the PlayStation Schools Cup Finals Festival Bolton. Ball over the top there from Higginson, but didn't quite reach the intended destination. Slip through again, they're looking for Fur again. Good challenge, tackle that yeah. time. Good challenge. Looking for an outlet here in attack in search of Leo Thomason. Thomason might be through here. Can they get one back? It's Thomason into the penalty area. Oh, unlucky, so unlucky. 
Thomason did superb there. He really did. Really strong. Showed good pace. Just couldn't get a finish. There he goes, strides away. There he goes, nice and strong. So got stuck onto his feet. Managed to get a shot on. Keep get a save there. I think the keep got a yeah, touch to yeah. it. Yeah, good save. Yeah, really good save. Keith did extremely well. Yeah, the effort was on target, but yeah, just did enough there. The goalkeeper Bedos, who has been a spectator for the large majority of this first period, but very much called it to action there. Slip through there from Max Douglas on a hat-trick himself now, of course. Fergin. Higginson. And he's trying to turn defence into attack, but on hand there for Moreland was O'Leary. An option to the left here if Leaf can utilise it. Thomason did try to play that pass, but it didn't quite work out in the end. Douglas. Steed. Calm, composed, comfortable in possession. Fergin went sliding into that. Got the ball though. Fergin still trying to advance into the penalty area. Good tackle again though. Still committed. There, Fergie. Fergie wants, he wants more goals. He does. In fact, he's crowded out. Good defending. He's been marshalled pretty well since his hat trick. Came out of the blocks with lightning fast speed. Got that hat trick inside seven minutes. Leary, with a touch inside, got there though to get his outstretched right foot to it. Pass to Patala. Patala again trying to feed it through with the through ball. Fergin again goes for goal this time, it's wide. Again, it was that through ball though, Tony. It was again, really just plays on the shoulder. And, and as he said, then Vital played a fantastic through ball. Again, defended well. Again, just didn't get his angles right there. Closing in on half time now. So we'll have the second half to bring to you after the break but then following the conclusion of this game we'll have the under 13 small schools final as well goalkeeper has come for that one and got there as well nice and brave the keeper to get his highest points Patala up and then how on to the man who just took the ball off him well taken down there by Munro nice switch as well there Thomason Thomason into the side netting he's looked really sharp up there that's Thomason That's been a threat. Really great touch there. Just couldn't reference this possible angle, really, to be fair. It's a good strike. This touch was superb. Ford again here looking for the Leaf outlet in Thomason. He has it once more. Driving to the line. 
challenge. Corner. Well done, play by Thompson. I love it, but super play then. A lovely challenge there by Steed. Matched him stride for stride. Well, let's see if Leaf Studio then can get on the score sheet here in this first half. Corner is taken short and returned back by Amelia Green. The offside flag is raised. We move into just one minute out of time at the end of this first period. Heading back, the goalkeeper on hand to collect again. It's going to be so difficult to lift spirits in that Leaf studio dressing room at half time though Tony yeah it really is but you know all we've got to do is come out can they win the second half get a result the second half now just as simple as that okay shocking for them the first half but let's go second half and win win that second half put a really good performance Douglas trying to feed it through again here's Fergin once more back to Douglas Patala in search of Bolton Back for Steed. Bolton past the defender, then got her really cross into the penalty area as well. She's been bright as well over on yeah, that right wing. Referee calls time on the half. And what a first half it was then for Maul and Skull. 7 0 to the good here at half time. It was superb for them in that first period, Tony Daly. Yeah, it really was. I mean, uh, you, you, you know, this guy here, hat trick. In seven minutes, tie over, game over, final over. But in, in fairness now, they've gone on, they've been ruthless, no, nothing wrong with that, scoring goals, plenty of goals. But for, for Leaf now, the second half is, is one where they can put that, this, this first half behind them now. Let's play two games. Can they come out the second half with a good performance and win, and win the second half? Well, these were the goals then. What a ball that was. Bergen really was the star man to begin with with his hat-trick. Yes, some pass there though, superb ball by Higginson. This was the one this to one make it 2-0, yeah. not yeah, long yeah, after right. at all. That's right. Just got there for the keeper, but had the way means to get it over. Love it over the keeper from a tight angle. Had a lot to do there still. Keeper wishing to have him, good finish. And just two minutes later, yeah, it was three. Three for Fergin as well. A good finish. Composed there to go around the goalkeeper. Then it was Zach Mir to add number four. Again, took it really well. It's a good finish as well here. Done him at the near post. Good, really good finish. Douglas, the scorer of the fifth. Finish from inside the penalty area. No mistake. then here Bolton got her goal on the rebound after a save to initially palm it away it's tucked away yeah made sure instead of seeing those go over the bar and those rebounds is bobbling but timed it really well good finish and there was time as well for Max Douglas to complete his first half brace I'm sure he'll be looking for a hat trick in the second half as well Super finish across the goalkeeper. So those are the moments then of the first half 
It is 7-0 to Moreland School at the midway point. S-E-V-E-N. Seven goals in that first half. Make sure you join us for the second period.
Welcome back then to the Hawthorns, the home of West Bromwich Albion for the second half of the first game today and it is 7-0 to Moreland score here up against Leaf Studio in the final of the ESFA Under-14s PlayStation Small Schools competition. What a first half that was for Moreland School, Tony Daly. Yes, it really was. You couldn't have, have wanted a better start. You know, when you're 3-0 up after seven minutes, yeah, they're, they're, all I'd like to say to them now is that they continue, they want to continue, the manager will as well. You know, the game football to carry on, can they score many goals? But equally, if the Leaf now, can they come out of the second half? You know, put in a good performance and win this second half. We'll get a better result this second half. That's how they should be looking at this game. Substitution here at half time with Caden Light Brown coming on to replace Ben O'Leary for Moreland. And I think we're also going to see Hassan Mekdi as well here for Moreland. task in hand now for Leaf Studio just to go again in this second half they'll keep fighting right until the very end but just up against a stronger team today in Moreland missing a goalkeeper at the moment for <laughs> Leaf which <laughs> makes things even more yeah. difficult for them <laughs> you definitely don't want that <laughs> here he comes Zach White just making his way into the goalkeeping position now. We are now ready then, and the referee will blow his whistle for Leaf Studio to restart proceedings at the start of this second 35 minute period. There's no question that Morland are going to be lifting the trophy. It's just a case of what's the scoreline going to be and how will this second half play out. They can really enjoy themselves out there though now in this second half. They have that freedom. Yeah, definitely so. No pressure on them. It would need an unbelievable comeback here than anything else. So they can enjoy the game for sure. As says for Leaf, first and foremost, can they get on the, uh, the, the goal sheet? That would be lovely. Underway then. And another half-time change there, having been made as well with Abby Yanez on to replace Amelia Green for Leaf. They will look to attack to the left in this second half. We're more pleasing for them if they can attack more as well. Very much under the cosh. And up against a clinical Moreland school side, who very much took their chances in that first half. Had a play for the throw. If they can get the ball up uh, to Thomason as well, he's shown as well a couple of occasions. He's got the pace and power to cause a lot of problems. If you can feed him. Bounces through, back to the goalkeeper. Beddows did have to make that one save in the first half when Thomason was in one on one. It was a good stop, actually. Other than that, though, he wasn't really tested at all. Tala. On the turn there, Fergie, yeah, but he was disrupted. Trying to take it on the spin. Yeah, good interception as well. It's better, need to mark him touch tight as well, don't give him that freedom. Yeah, definitely did have a freedom in the first half of the first half in particular, but across the course of it really. Braden Fergin was such a danger man up, up front, leading the line for Morland. There's Steed on this near side now, still on the right wing. Delivery comes off Doni. Moving to corner. It's 
Coming into the penalty area. St. Clear by Lucas Scarrell Jones. Oh, he's away there. Side. Jenkins, that might be in there. Thought for a moment Thomason was going to be free. Yeah. Jenkins does get it forward now, but it's only back. Yeah, if he looked up, he looked up early, he was in, wasn't he? Thomason. Yeah, it's TV1 for a moment. Utilised though. Foul given for the challenge on Garnet. Taking it quickly as well. Steed here on the right. Steed forward for Douglas. Kept in play, preventing the corner. Up to Thomason. Runners both left and right here. Options either side. The big number nine as well. Good run there by, uh, by Munro on that left hand side, wasn't spotted, but wonderful free kick still did Thomason. Didn't see him. Super burst down that left hand side. It was free if you could put that pass through to him. Vaughan here taking charge of the free kick. It bounces comfortably into the grateful arms of the goalkeeper, Callum Beddows. Behind and that might spell trouble again. Oh, well defended. Yeah, did well. Yeah, did do well. Super defending. Corner then here though for Leaf to have to defend as a result of it. Swung right in there oh. and two players coming onto it. The Second of whom was Tyler Steed, but there was a player in the, the centre that looked like might have been dropping favourably favourably for, but it didn't in the end. Now here's Steed. Just in turning. Trying to take that one on the turn there as well. Jenkins. Lead captain, though Jenkins would have been dreaming of lifting the trophy come full time it's not going to happen for Leap today good play good cut back as well Mia into the box well disrupted though uh, Jenkins has it once more it has been in comparison better start to the second half for Leaf than it was in the first half and there might be a way here as well Thomason making a nuisance of himself again Mekti though did well Leaf were already two goals down at this point of the first half, but it still has to be work on the scoreboard at half time here with five minutes gone in this second period. <laughs> Douglas. Trying to slip that one through again. Oh, okay, but judged that one really well, though. Yeah, he's much quicker off his line. Hit himself as well. Yeah, maybe just come out of that challenge. Mm. A little worse for wear in the end. Yeah. White, which is yeah, like a worry for them. Medical team here being called for for the goalkeeper. Done better there. They're working that sweeper system. The keeper out quicker this time. There's that same through ball that caused so many problems for yeah. them in the first half, but different yeah. outcome that time. That's right, yeah. They've, they've managed to get a grip of that one now, I think, as well. Next after this today, we'll have Mary Webb School and Science College 
here up against St James Senior Boys School in the under 13 small schools final goalkeeper is still down at the moment players taking the opportunity to come across onto this near side take some, some drinks on board and the messages from the two team managers as well they're a bit better they start to second half Leaf look, look more secure defensively as well still having a bit of a threat up front challenge so much better as well following that next game it's a step up to the under 15 PlayStation Schools Cup National Final then we'll go to the under 14 final for the B teams that one half past three and at half past five we'll have the under 15 small schools national final as well so plenty more still to come today and we'll be live with you on ESFA TV tomorrow as well to round off all of the games tomorrow in the PlayStation Schools Cup competition. Has been a long, hard season for Leaf Studio to, to reach this stage. It's an achievement in itself to even reach the final. Doesn't look as though it's going to be, well, it's not going to be for them. Today, after that first half, the game's just gone completely but hopefully they can take some good memories away from the season in its entirety and even reaching the final though it's another achievement yeah that's the one important to stress I think he's correct as well it's a massive chip get to the final here as well in fact if we can get him play on, play on this beautiful ground here as well Yeah, once the dust settles, hopefully it will still be an occasion to remember, albeit not the game for Lee Studio, who have scored at least three goals in every game en route to the final. They've actually only conceded 12 goals en route to the final as well, but they've seen their net breach seven times in that first half. This is turning into a substantial period of stoppage now, with the goalkeeper still down. Also happening today here at the Hawthorns, we have the PlayStation Schools Cup FIFA Finals as well, happening in the concourse area. The good news here is that the goalkeeper is back to his feet. Zach White back standing up and hopefully he'll be able to carry on then now. That's good news, it's good to see. It's quite a lengthy stoppage in the end, but Brown uh, White, I beg your pardon, back to his feet, which, as you say, is good to see, and we're back to the action. Bartlett. Got the delivery into the box. It's out now, and as far as Yanis. Moylan will look to break and again opt for that through ball. Goalkeeper comes but doesn't get there that time. Round the goalkeeper and it's just rolled home. It's another for Moreland. They're first in this second half. And that takes them to eight. Yep, good finish. And again, around the keeper. He's very composed in front of goals. Fergin again for Moreland. Almost a carbon copy of the goal that he scored in the first half when he went past the goalkeeper as well. Great pass though, great through ball.
Goalkeeper's first involvement since getting back to his feet really was to pick the ball about the back of his own net. Taking our cameraman out there. Yeah, <laughs> pretty good shot that one. <laughs> Ooh, the system is signaling yeah. there for the free kick. Yeah, a little bit harsh that one. Yeah, a bit of a mm. soft one. Mm. Ray Smithson here was coming back on for Leaf Studio. And on to a place, Johnny Fry. It's a defender on for a forward minded player, and probably just to change to maybe shore things up. Damage limitation in the second half for Leaf. Let's see where Smithson goes and plays, though. He's in the back line to begin with, and it looks as though she's going to go back to defend this wide free kick that can almost be treated like a corner in this position. as well with Amelia Green coming back on and it's Lucas Scarroll Jones who started the game on the substitutes bench and he's going to be back there now so time for the free kick then Patala here is going to be the player to deliver it's delivered low into the penalty area though Steve couldn't take full control of it it's Connor Grace. Coming forward again, but a good challenge that time from Bartlett. And Leaf will look to break away on the counter. And they work a shooting opportunity to try and get themselves a consolation goal. Forward for Munro. Didn't get there though. Green. Ball from Yanez. Munro into the full body challenge. Munro got it back again and will go for the effort, but it's speculative from that sort of distance. A fair distance out of that one. Two more changes here being ready for Morlin, Ben O'Leary and Scarlett Bolton who did score in that first half, Scarlett Bolton. That pair both coming back on. one of the players to have been withdrawn Didn't quite catch who the second player coming off was it's definitely O'Leary and Scarlett Bolton who've come back on Vaughan oh, good first driving forward then just left the ball behind though into the foul in the aftermath
This is the furthest that any Leaf Studio side got in their different categories competed in across the PlayStation Schools Cup here to finals day. They did have four sides make at least the quarter final stage though. Oh, Maybe an opportunity here to get oh, one back. The oh. is superb. Great goalkeeping, Keith wasn't it? Superbly well, the keeper. Fantastic save. Big chance there for Jenkins, captain. Yeah, nearly the consolation for Leaf Studio. Goalkeeper though was alert to it. And down the other end after it again, Fergin. And still, and into the corner once more. Braden Fergin again. He has five, Moreland have nine. It is some display. Yes, again, once he's put through those areas, he's more likely going to score. He really is. So a little flick through. Got on the end of it the there. And good strike. They're going to change the goalkeeper here as well, Lee Studio with Tia Brooker coming on to replace Zach White. It's difficult circumstances for a goalkeeper to be coming on in though, 9 0 down. He is just so clinical in front of goal, Braden Fergie. Really, yeah, really is. And once more, look at him, he wants more goals. Defendu is also on there for Morland. It was just after that opportunity for the, the consolation goal as well at the other end. The goalkeeper was called into action, Beddoes and Morland went down the other end of the field and once Fergin was played in he was always going to find the net. They'll be in search of double figures now Morland. Defending to do at the moment, oh, and they've got oh, one back. Good finish. Leave Studio on the score sheet. That's the consolation. Really nice moment for them here on finals day. Yeah. Captain going in. Nice little flair. Really good goal. There goes the all and clean sheet as well with Jenkins finding the net. They had had that opportunity, hadn't they, for the goal just prior to the Moreland number nine, but on the score sheet now. Yeah, really pleased for them. Douglas with the ball up, but it's taken away. Then Munro had it, but only momentarily. Cynical. Sign of the frustration there. No one near the ball, really. Oh dear. Chapman's there from Jenkins, looking to find the ball through there to Thomason. Jenkins, scorer of the Leaf goal and trying to turn provider for another. Oh, 
into the penalty area. Jenkins, good tackle though. Yeah, good challenge. Had to make his important one there. Had to make that one. Jenkins leading by example. He really is. Yeah, obviously difficult for Leaf in these circumstances, but they'll keep going right until the very end. Yep, yeah, sure they will. Then here for Leaf to attack. Swing right out of the penalty area though in the end. Move it really into the danger zone. It's dealt with. Yano is back there for Leaf. to Thomason Thomason oh, goes past the defender good. like he isn't there he recovered he recovered well didn't he really did Thomason there again showing his pace Corner then here again for Leaf as we're heading towards the 60 minute mark. Can I get on these? They'd be quite good with the corners. Into the box, but good header away. Now here's Tyler Steed. Steed on the charge forward from Moreland again. Still going down the line and still then finally halted it took three of them to stop him referee said no foul the game was allowed to flow freely on the turn there Mia Mia with options here as well there's a couple to the left is that offside yes says the linesman the ladies coming together yeah Smith so did well host of changes here Fergin one of those coming back on I'm sure he'll be hungry for more having scored five already fielding here is coming on as well Meyer is to be replaced here by Fergin Changes being made by Moreland manager Charlie Jackson. We will as well hear from him at full time. Hoping to hear from him with our stadium announcer Dave Aldridge. So do stick around for that as well as the trophy presentation that is still to come. Make sure you head over as well to at schools football over on Twitter. Where the player of the match vote is just about to go live. Take part in that play of the match vote. Jenkins here is trying to make inroads into the Moreland defence. It's well dealt with though. And then cleared away. It's always two nominations from either side, despite the scoreline, so that won't change things. The nominations from the Leaf Studio side, the goal scorer, Bo Jenkins and Leo Thomason. And as for Moreland, well, there's been plenty to pick from. Braden Fergin obviously up for it, having scored five and also Scarlett Bolton played really well over on the right side and got her goal as well 
in that first half. So that's goals football for the player of the match vote. Tony, forward to Munro. Munro, the ball across, and it's wide in the end from Finn Richardson. Richardson could get a, on the end of that one. Couldn't get much connection. 2 1 is the second half score. Yep. It's a lot better than the 7 0 from Leeds' point of view. Albeit they are, they are still behind in this second half in isolation, but it's been a much improved display. Moreland understandably having just taken their foot off the gas a bit though as well. Forward here, Jenkins. Is the goalkeeper oh, going to keep it again. out? No, it's through the hands. And Leaf do have their second. Jenkins again. Excellent. Well done, Jenkins. Well done, Leaf Studio. He's second. Well done. Yeah, goalkeeper might yeah, be disappointed. Disappointed. Yeah, we'll be, dis we'll be disappointed with that. It doesn't matter. Jenkins doesn't care less about that. Second one for him. Well, it was 8 2 that Leaf won this particular fixture in the 2022 final. It's 9 2 here that Moreland are ahead to get their revenge. It's 2 2 here in the second half now. Yeah. So the message from the manager was to, to go out and take the second half in isolation, try and win the second half. Well, they perform much better. They're definitely out of the second half, to be more organised, more of attacking threat, defensively played really well. I've had a number of past students who have gone on to get professional contracts as well Beef Studio mainly with AFC Bournemouth but Jimmy Jane Morgan actually only left Leaf Studio in 2022 and signed then professionally for Southampton before being bought by the Chelsea Youth Academy setup where he's now involved moved there in the January transfer window not long ago he was playing for Leaf Studio in their school's teams Great bit of skill there. Options both oh, left and right here, but there's a runner to look. the left. Yeah. Jenkins, maybe just didn't get his head up there. No, he didn't at all. Lovely burst by Donny down left hand side, it was free. He didn't get his head up. Oh, he's in. Oh, chance. what a chance. Oh, good save. Yeah, what a chance. Strangled big, big that chance. one, yeah. Nearly 9-3. Here's Garnet. Into the final three minutes of normal time. We did have that stoppage when the goal hit was down. We'll see if the referee adds time on for that. <laughs> that was the opportunity. Yeah. Just got on, stuck on his feet, didn't it, really? Comfortable for the goalkeeper 
changes here happening very late on. Liam Garnett being replaced there for Moreland for the closing stages. We'll wait to see if we will have stoppage time. That one's slipped through again. Looking for Ferguson. Oh. Still Moreland going in search of double figures. That's the target now for them late on. on out wide here for Bolton Bolton trying to make him roads in the defence again that's it now though to Thomason Thomason just took time to get it under control then was crowded out and Douglas did well to get there Douglas told to get back to his feet good challenge in the eyes of the referee made the game flow the ref to be fair to him oh, he's in again, again. Oh, defended looks as though the defender's going to get there oh. is he no it's Broken through here for Thomason. Oh, and the penalty. referee says penalty. Yes. And Jenkins it was. I beg your pardon, who was taken down. Having scored the two Leafs studio goals. Well, he's won his side of penalty now as well. And looks like he's going to take it as well. Well, Jenkins here has the opportunity to score a hat-trick on finals day, despite the scoreline. So Jenkins then from the penalty spot and slots it away. Very good penalty as well. Set the keeper the wrong way. Done it with the eyes. And a hat trick. Fantastic achievement. And more importantly, let's take your second half. It's 3 2 now, is it? It is. Second, second off, half, yeah, yeah. Just what you can ask, can't ask for any more. What a fantastic response there by Leaf Studio. Just that opening period win, yes. really, which means that the game is yeah, it's just completely did, did, gone absolutely, from them. Absolutely. The second half, they've been much, much better. 3-2 yeah. in the second half. It was the first half, which was disastrous. We're into stoppage time as well now. Here at the end of the game. Connor Grace, the captain for Moreland, is back on and he'll soon get his hands on the silverware. Amelia Green into the penalty area again, it's flicked on by Jenkins oh. and there's an opportunity, it's a big chance. Big, big opportunity that for Thomason. Leaf definitely all over them this second half there. Super, what a fantastic response this is. Really is. Lovely flick. Yeah, got the one all wrong. It's amazing how things can change though in terms of the, the, the play because yeah. Leaf could hardly get forward in yeah, that first great half. Great ball in by uh, Green as well. Super play. Yeah, Green with the delivery. The, the flick header on from Jenkins, just not the finish. see any indication as to how much stoppage time will here be added on so it's up to the referee's discretion after that goalkeeper's stoppage and under pressure there it's going to be put home surely it is well we're into six minutes stoppage time and Fergie has six goals staggering yeah it's a six one there as well Keeper couldn't get out of the feet, closed down. Mullen have double figures. Goalkeeper who was on as a substitute just couldn't quite get the ball out of her feet quickly enough there, Brooker. And Fergin was always going to pounce and take full advantage.
Thomason. Corner. Been very open yeah, in this second half. It really it? has, yes. Tired legs and all comes to the play as well. But Leaf haven't stopped. Really had a go this second half. Fantastic response. Into the penalty area in search of Munro, but it never came his way. And down the other end again, and Fergin's on his bike for it once more. Fergin bearing down on goal. Oh, what a save. He begins to save, big stop. Great save. What a save. Brooker making amends for the error with that stop. Yeah, without doubt. Really was super safe. Lewis Gunn coming on here to replace Jimmy Munro in stoppage time. Good save that was, wasn't it, from Brooker? He was. Is that, is that the first one he's actually hasn't scored from? Yeah, I think it's the Chance, first time yeah. he's been denied, yeah, Bergen. Yeah. Don't know it. Make this header back. In behind the offside. turn there oh, Jenkins Gene. good ball as well yeah Thomason for it Thomason tries to go around the goalkeeper but it's only into the penalty area and into his arms definitely much encouragement though in the second half for Lee from their boss Daniel Evans yeah as I said so much better second half performance following that one Bounces really through. good performance through to the goalkeeper Oh, well good by Deep Ball. Good work there. Yeah, Bolton did brilliantly. Yeah. It's the time for one last goal. We've had a plethora of them. Good tackle to halt the progression of Leo Thomason. Free says there is time for the corner. It's been taken short, and that maybe just caught Morland off guard into the box, and there is time for another. Oh, the goal! It was a good goal. Ten four. Really good, powerful header as well. Fantastic finish. It was a great header. Got his goal, across the defender. Thomason with the header. 14 goals we've seen today in this opening game. Down the other end, Fergin still looking to try to get his seventh, unbelievably. The referee blows the full-time whistle. Morland score with their victory confirmed. A good response from Leaf Studio in the second half, but the job was done at half-time when Tony Morland was 7-0 up, and it finishes at 10-4, the final score.
yes a convincing win it was all done in the first half but we got a fantastic response there for, as you said for, uh, by Leaf in the second half yeah well full time then here in the first game Moreland are champions of the ESFA under 14's PlayStation small scores competition for 2023 goals goals and more goals plenty of them this was the one that got it all started please stick around as well for the trophy presentation just as we're showing you all of the goals from start to finish we'll have Ella Toon here England star on the pitch to make the trophy presentations as well and then we'll hear from the Moreland manager Charlie Jackson once the trophy presentations are complete but it was a really brilliant start for Morland and Bergen it was at the heart of it all yeah it was that it was a mad seven minutes wasn't that ten minutes wasn't it really game was done and dusted then that was Mia's goal took to it make well 4-0 Douglas there with the finish as well to make it five just kept on coming in that first half for Moreland and good for Scarlett Bolton as well to get the goal there. Look at turn is to go. Seven before half time with that. Yeah. Just now in the second half. Again round the goalkeeper and Fergin with the simplest of finishes in the end. Yeah, it's yeah, a good finish that one, isn't it? Yeah, unsurprisingly, yeah, yeah. Bergen again. Yeah. Tucked away from the corner. Yeah, yeah. Jenkins with the first of his three for the hat trick that then followed. It's a consolation for Leaf. Good penalty. Keeper there was just caught on the ball. Still persistent late on there, Fergie. And all the goals kept on coming. It finished 10 4 in the end as the match officials here step forward to take their medals for the trophy presentation. Referee Paul Cook, his assistants Alex Cook and Trevor Redmore fourth official Ronnie McNaughton we'll find out the winner of the player of the match then from the player of the match vote Braden Ferger scorer of six today and he could have had more as well and it's hugely deserved as Fergin comes forward to take his individual trophy and the PlayStation vouchers as well greeted there by Ella Toon hero wasn't she in the European champions England campaign the Lionesses Lionesses star down there to make the presentation across Leaf Studio then will come forward to take their runners up medals Bo Jenkins might feel a bit hard done by to be on the wrong side of the scoreline at the end of it, having scored a hat trick himself. He'll have to lift themselves up, but it has been a good season. And it's an achievement in itself to reach this final stage. result that they came for though but it was a much better performance in that second half as we were alluding to they did manage to find the net four times as well which is good consolation but a consolation nonetheless it was the defeat
defence that was the problem, and Fergin really that was the main problem in the Moreland school team. And it will be Moreland's moment then as they'll come forward here once again to be greeted here by Ella Toon. Collect their medals and lift the trophy. Meadows, the goalkeeper first up, Connor Grace, the captain, in amongst it as well. He'll be the man to lift the trophy in just a moment or two. Bolton got her goal as well as Maya and Max Douglas with a brace in that first half. To add to the six from Brandon Bergen. Braden Bergen with the six goals. Unbelievable. And it's just the first of five games today. Here at the Hawthorns, do stick around for the under-13 PlayStation Small Schools Cup Final as well. That'll be up next when we'll see Mary Webb School and Science College take on St. James Senior Boys School. As I said as well, we'll have the interviews once the trophy is lifted. Down with David Waldridge, the stadium announcer. So stick around for that as well. captain there, Connor Grace, played his role in the back line for Morlin, with the captain's armband on, posing for the photo as well. He gets his hands on the trophy, and will lift it high into the sky as Morlin can begin to celebrate. A hugely convincing victory, the job was done by half-time, and ultimately they got into double figures as well with the ten goals. Leaf well, it's commiserations for the Leafs studio. Got four in the second half as a consolation, but nothing more than that. 10-4, the final score. Once again, a big congratulations to Morland. with coach Evans from Leaf Studio it was a repeat of the final from last year and uh, just wasn't meant to be no I think uh, yeah fair play to Moorland obviously they came out in that first half played fantastic football caught us on the break um, but actually for our players it was a real test of their character um, we had a few students that at half time didn't really want to come back out and to go and win that second half 4-3 against obviously the start inside as well I think that's a testament to our students and their character their self-belief and they carried on playing and, and pushed them right till the end I mean the first half didn't go to plan let's be honest but the second half it has to be said your team the effort was incredible the amount of chances created could have easily got back into it exactly our team have done that all season um, obviously that first half like I said a bit of a write-off but it's an opportunity for them to learn um, obviously they show the test of character and yeah, next year hopefully they can come back. It's now 1-1 between Leaf and Moreland. So uh, we'll see if we can get a third final next year.
But of course, even getting to the final, not to mention once, but doing it twice, an achievement in itself, you've got to be so proud of your students. Yeah, not just this year group. Um, we've actually had four teams get through to the quarterfinals or further. Um, we've still got a team under 15 girls in the uh, semi-final of the Small Schools Cup as well. So, yeah, we're definitely punching above our weight. Um, and, yeah, all of the students at our school are, are fantastic. So really proud of every single student this year. Well done, Leaf. Well, thank you for your time, Daniel. One more time, let's hear it for the Leaf Studio. So I'm here with our winning manager from Moreland School and uh, what an impressive performance. So clinical in that final third. Outstanding. They've, they've played so well this year and we haven't got the results sometimes in some of the rounds. But the way they play, we constantly tell them to press and play and do the things in the right way and it will come off and it did today. It wasn't even the pressing, it was the link-up play between that attacking third. They're a good crop of players you have there. We're, we're a small school, we bat well above our weight in these competitions. Um, it's the same with the older groups, we do really, really well in competitions. But our emphasis is on pass and move, and you saw that today. I think that was obvious today from everybody's uh, fan base that we've got today shouting for us as well. And this is the thing, it's not just about the tactics that you've taught on the pitch, but the culture that you've built at the small school as well. These guys are great. We travelled down last night, there was no trouble. They went to bed at the right time, they were a great bunch of kids and they deserve this. This has been coming for three or four years with this group and they deserve today. Well coach, I'll let you go and celebrate with your team. A massive congratulations one more time. Let's hear it for Moreland School! And of course still plenty more on the way here in the PlayStation Schools Cup 2023.
Welcome back then to the Hawthorns, the home of West Bromwich Albion and our host venue for all of these ESFA PlayStation Scores Cup Finals. Here we have the under-13 Small Scores National Final. It is Mary Webb School and Science College taking on St James's Senior Boys School. Well, let's quickly run you through the two team lineups then, starting with Mary Webb. They have in goal Matthew Morris, and then the rest of their starting 11 there Cohen Booth, Ethan Parker, Harry Thomas, Seth Williams, Luke Summers, TJ Adams, Jack Edwards, the captain Evan Waring, Reese Rowe, and Morgan Whitney. As for their opponents today, standing in the way, St James's line up with Liam Martin between the sticks in goal, and then they have Ryan Fagan, Joshua Lavery. Karen Via Baines, Ethan Shaw, Noah Monterio Paver, David Hurton, Max Echebarria, Archie Lovett, Kai Russell, and the captain, Cameron Giles. For Mary Webb School manager David White, they have substitutes Harry Hammer, substitute goalkeeper Ewan Harvey. Bailey Lowe and Hayden Cartwright available and as for Bill Jeffers in the opposite dugout he can choose from Leo Mackley, their substitute goalkeeper Leon Furtado, Maxwell Paul, Gus Coa and Ayush Abari. Well Tony Daly alongside me we saw plenty of goals in that first game and hopefully plenty more still to come here. Yeah it was, it was a, a, a bit of goal fest wasn't it? Yeah. Yes, hopefully we can get the same here again and as per usual you know it'll be these two sides again I'm sure again it's going to be a really high intensity game as always the pressure but as a, as a game uh, filters out there'll be more passing more, more passage of play well early goals have been the story of the games that we've seen here this week so far let's see if we get an early goal here in this one as well be a big old pitch for them here as well today as well I'm sure they're going to enjoy it it's a warm morning. Yeah, big full-size pitch here at the Hawthorns, of course. The under-13 sides take to it, take centre stage. And there's plenty of support as well in-house on the stand at the near side to our commentary position up on the gantry. Well, it's going to be St James's senior boys' score then to get the ball rolling in the darker blue and white Mary Webb School and Science College out there in the sky blue and it's St James's senior boys school then who will attack the goal to the left in this first half it's a direct effort on goal I think from the kickoff it's not often that you see that mm -hmm. trying to catch the goalkeeper out that's very ambitious that one really ambitious coming back here and it's dangerous as well the goalkeeper with the clearance but it was only coming back their way first attempt at goal there Archie Lovett it was for St James's on the turn there Monterio Paver but he's been robbed of possession good challenge Trying to unleash then over on the left was Whitney. Nice. Runs it forward down the right there. St James is it's a, a lively start. It's David Hurton. With it here at the moment for them. Well defended though. Fagan. Forward again looking for Hurton. Didn't quite go his way that time. And it is now cleared away but not completely for Mary Webb swept out here onto this near side it's the skipper Giles past the defender like he wasn't there Ooh. Giles just a whisker wide great effort the St James who started the game much the brighter keeping the ball moving really well working the wide areas and a fantastic effort there just wide 
by Giles, the captain. Lively start, though, here in the first couple of minutes. St. James is with the possession again. Out to Lavery. Lavery in field and and it's returned back to him. Challenge there from Russell. Still Russell, past the first challenge as well, and he was fouled. He's had his boot taken off as well there, and it's a free kick. Yeah, good feet by Russell there. Cutting inside, definite foul. And St James is on top at the moment, and this is a really good position here for this set piece. Referee just making sure it's to be taken from the correct spot. Love it here, stands behind it. That's the obvious option to take by the looks of things. Goalkeeper Matthew Morris just making sure that his wall is aligned. It's just a two-man wall. The third joining now, perhaps. So it's Lovett who goes for goal, but it was always rising. High up over the crossbar. So it's St James who started a brighter so far. Clearance away from the back for Mary Webb. Looking for their outlet in attack wearing. He wasn't able to keep hold of that one that time though. Hurton gets the throw in. Mary Webb School and Science College here representing Shrewsbury of course and Spellthorne is the English school's FA that St James is here representing on finals day Barrier trying to work something there over on the right for St James's, but it's out now for a throw in. Mary Webb maybe just settling down after that fast early start from St James's. Clearance slammed long away, and I think Waring instead wanted it played to him. But they're isolated at the moment. Evan Waring. striker who actually plays for Shrewsbury Town in their academy setup. On the turn there Russell. Couldn't feed it through though to the runner on the left. Back with Russell. Clearance away. Giles, oh, good feet. skips past the first challenge, Giles good into the penalty there. area, good cross as well, just nobody there in dark blue to get on the end of it. Pink offside. touch, He's forward offside. there to Waring. Yeah, he's offside. Yeah, the offside flag up. Assistant on the near side was well in line with that one.
that was the previous moment. Yeah, fantastic. Cross. Yeah, fantastic bit of wing play there in a beautiful area. No one there to attack it. Forward long there from Shaw. Here's Giles. Referee allows the game to continue. Felt that, that was a fair challenge there on Russell. Tim. Turning away there, Edwards did superbly well. Likewise, there the challenge to get back at him. Oh, good feet by Edwards there. Booth here, the right sided defender forward here to take this throw in. Booth with that throw. Thomas tried to make the most of that, but St. James's were able to then recover the situation only momentarily, though it's only coming back, and the shot at the end is just wide, not far away actually, in the end. The best moment that Mary Webb have conjured up though so far. Yeah, it was, it was a good effort. Edge of the box. Fell to him. Just couldn't wrap his foot round it. It's a good effort. Thomas with the strike, but just off target in the end. That's promising though for Mary Webb. Thought of the goalkeeper that didn't get as far as he wanted at all. Hold back on the shirt there. It's a clear one for the referee. Yeah, Edwards very creative in there as well in that midfield area. Definitely their playmaker. Yeah, little tug of the shirt as you said there. Great little turn. Yeah, just felt the need to pull back at the shirt there. It's a barrier and just a talking to as well from the referee. Edwards then, the creator in midfield for Mary Webb. It looks as though he's going to be the taker here to provide from this set piece. Edwards goes for goal alone, bounces it straight into the hands of the goalkeeper though. Right behind it. Ten minutes played, it's still nil nil. But it's been a very entertaining watch this one so far. Oh nice touch from Lovett. He then made the forward run as well. This is Giles. Jeez. Still the skipper goes on Giles. Palmed away, still there though on the rebound. It's over the bar. Great play by Giles again. Fantastic turn. Got onto his left foot. From the resulting save by the goalkeeper. Just couldn't get on the end of it. Over the bar. The defender get a touch on that one, sorry. Yeah, for a corner. Yeah, the referee signalled for a corner. Yeah. Oh yeah, after, yes, through, yeah. after the defender, yep, yep. It's good defending in the end. Plenty of players here lurking around the edge of the penalty area. They're going to make their way in now. Palmed away by the goalkeeper. Put two firm hands to it there, Matthew Morris. Still coming back his way though. Hurton. Provider of the cross, back out onto the edge. And then the strike from just outside the penalty area. A couple of yards wide in the end. Yeah, that was the effort, but 
Not going to test the goalkeeper like that. Baines was beaten to it there. Back there with Lavery. Russell. Trying to slide oh that one through there for Hurton. Through. You see the intentions? Yeah. Equal start by both teams. We already see Joel's straight down his left hand side here. Thrown over there in the right back position for St James's. Taken there infield, but then swept long forward away to Waring. Outnumbered, but made the most of it there. Evan Waring, good ball as well. Goalkeeper is going to come and try and get there, needs to. Well, Cooper, fantastic little ball through. By Waring. Throwing down the line. Head around though. That was the goalkeeper's intervention. Just running away from him. Yeah, we got there in the yeah, end. He did, it, did it well. Did, yeah, he did do. Lavery over the head of Russell. Mary Webb coming back. Tackle to begin with, but still Mary Webb looked to continue forward down that left wing with Adams. Waring wanted that one slip through. Never quite came his way. Neat touch from Giles. Man who plays for the Watford Academy. Oh, brilliant skill past the defender. Giles then tried to go between the two. Got back at it though, still Giles, now into the box. Across the face of goal. Oh, oh what a save. Oh, outstanding. Well, it looked for all the world as though that one was going to ripple into the back of the net. But what oh, a stop so that was. It was. What a fantastic run again by uh, Giles. Super work here. Some great strength there as well. Again, clean pair of heels he showed him down that side. And this is a difficult chance. He's hit a great strike and what a fantastic save. Yeah, Matthew Morris went flying across to his left. And he's called upon there. Corner still is going to have to be dealt with. Referee wanting a word with the player from either side here, just about of the holding that was going on in the six-yard box. Giles still standing his ground in there. It's in towards that six-yard line. Dealt with vote for Mary Webb. Adams Rowe trying to slide that one through there the offside flag is up again against Waring just trying to play on the shoulder but that's twice now that he's been caught offside yeah, he needs one time doesn't he he was unlucky both times to be fair only just yeah, it was a tight call yeah he's playing on the shoulder great little ball through it was very tight Foul, it will be a free kick for that. It's 
Swung right in there again, but it's a comfortable header out that time. Back to the original taker. That's sold slightly short, though. Yeah, Wang yeah. again looking to throw play on the yeah. shoulder. Yeah. Nice touch, good turn. Options both left and right there as well. Went for the return ball on the one, two. Ended. Chabaria just couldn't quite find that return ball back. Nice link up play, though. And behind now for Waring, who's onside this time, and after it here, bearing down on goal now. Evan Waring, 1v1, good save. Waring denied by Liam Martin. What a big, big moment that could turn out to be. It's still there, though. Waring then that time was closest to it, but it's through to the goalkeeper. What a fantastic save there by Martin, bearing down on him. Got his mercy, had a good angle for him as well, for Waring. Great save, super save there. Stayed, stood big. Jails again, that time played it first time. Yes. Crossfield ball. There's a man down here, but the game goes on for the time being. It's being stopped now. The physios are being called for. Big chance that was for Waring. Yes, it was. Both keepers pulled off really good saves. For both teams. Important ones. Yeah, both sides now having had opportunities to get the opening goal. This was that moment again. Did that everything right, yeah. Did everything right. Angle was right. Just keep it. Now it's angled that superbly well. Stood strong as well, stood up. Players here at the moment have just come across to the near side whilst there was there a man down, but will resume shortly. Therese Rowe, who was down then, but back to his feet. Referee eagerly awaiting the return of both sets of players, but I think they're both pretty content in just taking a little breather here. Aaron Beer Baines replaced there by Leo Mackley in the first of the roll on roll off substitutes that we'll see made in this game. Baines will more than likely be back. Players all back out there now. Such a hot day as well this morning as well, so give them a good break there, get the fluids back on. Changing there as well for Mary Webb. Jack Edwards replaced by Hayden Cartwright. Ball there was dropped back to St James's and they'll come forward again. Well, just lost his footing though at the crucial moment there. He stayed down as well, but Mary Webb might be away on the counter attack. Back to his feet now at the moment. Love it and I think just frustrated with himself that he couldn't make the most of that. Forward again here to feed Giles. Giles with a cutback that time, chance. Whoa. And the clearance away before it reached the goalkeeper. Back to Barrier. Past the defender again like he wasn't there. And time though through to the goalkeeper. Just ran out of route. Yeah, big chance there for Russell. On his left foot. Again it was Giles down at left hand side. Cut it back. Strangled it. Strangled the ball there.
22 minutes on the clock. Still goalless. Both, but both goalkeepers have been called into action here in this first half. Okay. Giles slips it through once more. Now Lovett couldn't quite get there. Well. Brilliant keeper off his line quickly. Very much the man to stop at the moment, though, isn't he? Cameron Giles down yeah, his left wing. Yeah, he really is. Forward from the goalkeeper, but the clearance hardly got off the ground. Giles with the first time ball inside with the outside of his foot. Oh, good defending. Didn't quite make its way through. Giles with a great turn away there, but the referee had already blown his whistle. Yeah, maybe a slightly soft one, but the referee felt there was enough in there for a foul. Boone sends it back. Space to control that one as well at the second time of asking. Swung all the way across, it didn't quite beat Ryan Fagan though. Important defensive intervention there. Row. And Sue was taken to ground. It's a good passion to play there on the left hand side there with Row. <laughs> Waring here looks as though he's going to take this one. Does take it as well, but again, it just bounced into the hands of the goalkeeper. That's twice that's happened now in this first half. Yeah, just has to lack a bit of quality on these set players at the moment. <laughs> Off on that turn yeah. there, wearing. Offside though, anyway. Mm. And defended well though, they wasn't to know that. Linesman there had to flag it, but mm. the game going to carry on. <laughs> Delivery, where's that going to drop? It's onto the roof of the net. Well, everybody watched it with mm. eager anticipation. And in the end, it was just over. Yeah, a little cross shot there. That weird tend to go, but nearly fell in the back of the net. Just over the bar. Again. Decent uh, build up by Mary of Ebb. Four again direct from the goalkeeper. 
got further that time. Chibaria happy to go back and St James's will try to build again. One is ahead of the ball as well. There's a lot of ground there. Russell has it back. Trying to weave away through. Halted then though. Barrier there with the ball up. That's again here for Giles if he can keep it in. Managed to do so and in the end gets the throw in as well. Yeah, he did well there. Just played behind him. ball all the way across it's taken down over the sky there by Hurton Hurton though robbed of possession Waring again looking to make that run in behind Evan Waring will get to this as well it's another 1v1 chance here it's Waring once more and this time no sure. mistake and cue the Mary Whip School celebrations Evan Waring makes it 1-0 wasn't going to make any mistake there Waring what a fantastic finish we had a side too early on with a fantastic save of the keeper for his left hand side and put it in the back of the net with no problem at all. Brilliant finish that time, one Brilliant. on one. Great finish. Now the Shrewsbury Town striker scores for his score. First blood to Mary Webb. Substitution happening here as well. Just the introduction of Harry Hammer. It's being held for the time being. Oh, the header on here's Giles. Would it be an instant response? The touch just took it wide though. Oh, oh crossbar! Oh. <laughs> And it stays out in the end, but it was very nearly an instantaneous hit back to make it one each. Oh, wow. Yeah, you get it there. Key, the key, yeah, key, 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 sees his progression down the wing halted and last touch off Adams as well we will now see that change Hammer to be introduced it was going originally to be yeah. Parker replaced but it's Adams now taken off that was the chance yeah back off the bar yeah took it a while with that first touch but still managed to get it get his shot off yeah that first touch there tight angle but still managed to get that shot off Giles first time all the way across. Defended. Good header. Pass. Up to Waring. Waring trying to click that one in behind for the runner. He was the substitute up there with him, Hammer. Maybe just playing a little higher and in support of Waring now.
Well, let's see what Mary Webb then this time can work from his wide free kick. We've seen them be a little wasteful on two occasions in this first half with balls that have just bounced through to the goalkeeper. And we're looking for something better than that here. Yeah. It swung in it's there that one. time towards oh. Waring. Goalkeeper got there. Yeah, better on that one. Good, good ball in. St James is looking to come away on the counter attack though. Loose yeah. ball in the end from Echebarria. Parker after it, but land on the cover to see that one out there. There's Max Echebarria. Really good defending there. An option of three people to put in. the final 90 seconds of normal time in this first half Mary Webb would love to take this one goal advantage into the interval Rowe oh, okay. important challenge again really was hurt and they're up to Russell Russell that time trying to feed it through the back line of the defence Giles, great control once more. Giles tried to be intricate that time. Got back at his opponent, though, to win it back. Giles oh. just drilled it, goal yeah. band, but it was a comfortable stop for the goalkeeper. Giles, very tenacious, isn't he? Lose the ball, wins it back. Strong lad. Quick. And for his left foot as well. He'd be disappointed with that one after doing all this hard work here. Super, super fit feet there. Done hard work. Didn't get the connection he's looking for. Ontario Paver there with the clearance away. Let's see how much stoppage time then we will have at the end of this first 35. Just the one minute then mm. at the end of this first half that we move into now is the period of stoppage time. Oh, good touch. Row into the penalty area, wearing mm. again. Just allowed for the defender to get there. It's still there though on the edge. Still they can't hack it completely clear. Russell down on the deck at the moment and the referee blows the half-time whistle so then Tony Mary Webb one goal to the good then at the midway point they'll be delighted with that the goal coming from Evan Waring brilliant finish one-on-one -on -one. yeah it was took, took his goal really really well yeah and to go in one nil be really pleased with that but looking at St James there they've had a couple of chances as well so it's very very tight this can go either way this game here really good really good first half Let's have a look at the moments then from that first 35. There were chances to score before that goal did finally come for Mary Webb and Evan Waring. Well away with that first effort, but then here down the other end, the goalkeeper called into action. On a couple of occasions, both goalkeepers had to make saves as well. Giles has been... The star performer really hasn't he for St James's and he looks their most likely route to goal in the second half. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so he breaks through here. What a save that was. Yeah, really good save. 
Keeper has angles correct. Stood up. And then wearing with no mistake. One on one this time. Pass that was. Both occasions he ran from his own half. Got the finish right. Boom. From one end to the other, just like that. And that's the reason as to why Mary Webb School and Science College here are one goal to the good at the midway point. Great finish there. Still plenty of time for it all to change though. Make sure you stick with us. But there's the half-time score. It's Mary Webb 1, St James is nil. first goal in that European final in a memorable moment some of these guys on the pitch today they're going to be having memorable moments of themselves yeah it's amazing obviously that was probably the best moment in my career so far and a memory that will last with me forever and yeah it's nice to see the kids out today enjoying football and scoring good goals and this is going to be inspirational for them and how important is something like this for the development of their careers yeah it's really important it's all about just getting involved and being competitive and playing football games and, and that's where you learn the most and doing it with uh, your friends as well is, is it makes it even better so yeah I did stuff like this growing up and it's been a massive part of my journey to the top. Well Elliot it's amazing to have you with us here this morning but I believe we're going to get some people out of the crowd right now for Ella Toon's crossbar challenge right? All right, let's go for it. So I, we need three people out of the crowd. Ella, you can help me pick who we're going to go for here. Who are you thinking? So we need three people out of the crowd. Should we have a little look more in this way? Because let's, let's, there is a lot of people here at the Hall You've got to get Ella's attention. She's the one that's going to pick you here. Which one are we going for, Ella? Which, who are we going for? Who are we going for? There's so many. We're so many. Oh, oh. Oh, him with the microphone. Oh, him with the microphone can come on down. All right, he's our first participant. So, Mr. Microphone, come on down. And we need two more. Ella, who are we got? Oh Some of these really want to come on the pitch. Um, lad with the red bucket hat. Red bucket hat guy over there. Come on down. Red bucket hat is coming down. And then we're going to choose one more from here. The girl right in front here with the with the sheer. There we go. Come and join us. Yes, we have our three participants for Ella Tunes Crossbar Challenge next. All right, okay, we'll be guys. All right, so we have our three participants for Ella Toon's PlayStation Schools Cup Crossbar Challenge. Each of our three participants get three attempts. Who is going to be the winner and walk away with the prizes here this afternoon? Is it going to be participant number one from Mary Webb School in Science College? Or how about St. James's Senior Boys School? or Kings Hill Primary! All right then guys, let's line you up. Who, what, we're going to try, should we try and do a three-way rock, paper, scissors here, Elliot, Elliot, to start who goes first, but I'm not quite sure how we're going to do it. So if we just get everyone to crowd round together and go for rock, paper, scissors, come on in guys. And after three, we'll go for it. Okay, one, two, three. We, I can't believe it. We all went for scissors. I wish you guys could have said that. Let's go really again, one more time, one more time. All right, so it's this one to go first. Our representative from Mary Webb School and Science College. I love this. Ella Toon talking her through the tactics of this one. Left footed, apparently. Very fancy. Anyone you want, every participant gets three attempts. Any ball you like. Just got to get that crossbar. It's a tough decision. Whenever you're ready. Oh, th that's not bad. That's got some good distance on that. All right, we'll go for our next goal here. We'll go for St. James's. Here we go, St. James's. I'll tell you what, you went up with some confidence there. It was a pretty good attempt. All right, here we go. 
I've got a feeling he's luring us into a false sense of security. I think the next one's going to be good. All right, let's go again. St. Mary's, here we go. That's all right, that's all right. We're just warming up. We're just warming up. All right, here we go then. Here we go. St. James's. Not bad. Oh, he's going to go for it straight away. Not even waiting. <sighs> all right, one more. St. Mary's, here we go. Not bad, not bad at all. Okay, here we go, here we go. I don't know what happens if nobody makes it. We got to keep going, right? That, oh, <laughs> I thought that was it. All right, Kings Hill. You know what? We still got some balls around here. Let's give them another go. What, what, what are you thinking so far, Ella? Are you thinking pretty impressed? All right, just warming up, just on target. Ellis saying for that. We'll go again. Oh, we go three attempts all again, right? There you go, one more. <laughs> she didn't know the rules. You did amazing because you didn't know the rules. What are we actually trying to do? Instead of the what are we actually trying to do? We're trying to hit the crossbar. That was a good attempt, the first one. You didn't. <laughs> all right, let's go for it again. Let's go. What? I'll tell you what, now she knows the rules. She's doing pretty well, right? Yeah. Oh! That wasn't bad. Oh, that one. Nearly on target. All right, here we go. St. Mary's once again. It's still, it's fine, it's fine. We've still got some more goes. Oh. I'll tell you what, <laughs> every time he goes up. All right, three more. Here we go. Send Mer Mary Webb. I'm getting all confused with the names. Mary Webb, here we are. Oh, <laughs> that was good. I love the confidence of this guy with the bucket hat and just goes all guns blazing every time. Should we should we give him one one more go, Hawthorns? Some of you are half saying no. We're gonna do another go! We're gonna do another go. Ella Toon, talk us through. What, what should they be trying to do this, this, this next go? What, what can we do to get bang on that crossbar in the middle? Oh, um... I mean, the thing is, you're used to scoring all the time, so that's why it's hard for you to say how they hit the crossbar, right? Yeah, I don't want to hit the crossbar when I'm shooting, but just lean back, take time. And, uh, yeah, I reckon someone's going to hit it this time. Third time lucky. Here we go, third time lucky then. We'll keep with the same order. Mary Webb to start us off. We'll get those balls all in line, ready to go. Okay, here we go. Mary Webb, whenever you're ready. Oh, oh, we gotta get, we gotta get the, the tech team out of the way. Sorry, they put you off. Sorry about that. Whenever you're ready, Mary Webb. All right, we got St James's. Here we go. Ah, oh, my bucket hat guy. Come on. Oh. I'll tell you what. They are good finishes, aren't they? Great finishes. No keepers getting near them. All right, here we go. Come on. Oh, that's got to be the closest, surely. He's asking for the crowd. Oh! Oh! <laughs> that is a strike and a half. Bucket hat, man. you got to go for it. you got to go for it. Can you go through with him? Oh, great attempt though. King Hill makes some noise. Mary Webb makes some noise. But your winner of the Ella Tune Crossbar Challenge, St. James's Seat High School. I mean, Ella, what do you think of that? That was absolutely incredible. He asked for the crowd. The crowd gave him what he wanted. He had some booze and he still managed to hit the crossbar. So, well played. Some, re some really good talent here at the PlayStation School Cup, right? <laughs> yeah. And I love the celebration. It's all about the celebration. One more time, let's hear it for our participants of the Attitude Crossbar Challenge. And of course, your England Lioness, Attitude.
Hawthorns, please welcome back onto the pitch your finalists in the ESFA Under 13 PlayStation Small Schools Cup 2023, Mary Webb School and Science College and St. James's Senior Boys School. Welcome back then for the second half here of the ESFA Under-13 PlayStation Small Schools Cup National Final. It is 1-0 to Mary Webb School and Science College up against St. James's Senior Boys School at half-time. Evan Waring, the Mary Webb captain, with the goal in that first 35. But it still hangs in the balance moving into this second period and very much still all to play for Tony Daly. Very much so. If you look at the two teams there that have played, they had lots of chances. Uh, uh, did St. James's in that, in that uh, first half. It's still in a balance. They've got the advantage there as well. But um, for me, it's going to be a really close game. Yeah, it was pretty evenly matched in that first half. Both sides had a number of opportunities in addition to the goal that we did see. Well, it's going to be a substitution here, I think, for change of goalkeeper. It's going to be Ewan Harvey here coming on to replace Matthew Morris. So change of goalkeeper then at the start of this second half for Mary Webb School. Are we hoping to keep a clean sheet in this second period? If they do, Mary Webb, well then they'll have the job done. Have kept themselves on the right side of the scoreline. In every single game, of course, on route to the final, but without the need for penalties. If it were to be level at full time, then there would be no time for extra time and straight to spot kicks. They are back underway here at the Hawthorns. It's Evan Waring, 16th PlayStation Schools Cup competition goal of the season. That's the difference between the two of them out there at half time. I think Tony, the St. James's boss, Billy Jeffries, will be asking for his side to change anything or just keep going about the game plan and, and the chances will come in the second half. Yeah, I think chances will come. I mean, um, the key man for me is obviously Giles getting the ball out to him for the can do. He's been effective. But it's very much the same. It's very, very close, very, very tight. And no chances will be both, both ways. Throwing there was thrown back to Whitley. Mary Webb now attacking the goal to the left, of course, but it's St. James's here coming forward to the right of the picture. That's a good Lots ball in tough. behind. Maybe a chance for the equaliser right at the start. The second half! Brilliant finish! Slotted past the goalkeeper, and we're back on level terms. What a fan. Let's talk about the pass first. What a fantastic pass that was. Running through. Never looked like missing, to be fair to him. I don't know who played that pass, and you see Isaac, I'm not sure who that was. But beautiful ball, over the top, and a really good finish. Yeah, Giles with the finish. Didn't quite catch myself who played the ball, but it was splendid, right on the money. Great through ball. That's just the start of the second half that St. James's senior boys score were looking for. Yeah, couldn't ask for anything more. Back on level terms. Yeah. 
This is the goal again. Yeah, thank you. Ball play through yeah. there from Lovett. Yeah, Lock Lovett. It what a fantastic ball. Really was. Waring took that one as it sat up for him on the volley, but it was a very long way out. James is on the attack once more here. Into the penalty area as well. It's cut back. It's there for Russell. Bouncing around. Appeals for handball as yeah, well. And the decision yeah. goes their way too. Yeah. Again, Giles trying to keep clean pair heels. Cut it back superbly well. Found his man just slightly behind him. Russell there. Hurton. St James very much on top this second half start of it yeah the replacement goalkeeper for Mary Webb Ewan Harvey has certainly been thrown in the deep end at the start of the second period trying to play on the shoulder again there wearing he is now robbed of possession though just picked his pocket Russell again in search of Russell and Mackley was close to it as well Mary Webb though with the ball now would have favoured the left foot control there but Hamid tried to use the outside of his right Good football there by St James. Passing the move in, keeping good possession. Referee's just gone across here to see to Kai Russell, who stayed down for the moment. Explosive start though to the second half for St James's. Yes, maybe very interesting now getting that early goal as well in the second half. here back on he replaces Jack Edwards there for Mary Webb still Russell is off the side of the field to play at the moment just waiting to be called back on by the referee and waiting patiently as well jumping towards the penalty area there love it Oh, he's the it. referee gives the penalty oh, <laughs> well he was given the decision to make and no doubt in the mind of referee Trevor Redmore well St James is here are going to have the opportunity for this second half turnaround yeah it's a penalty, yeah, it's a penalty. ref took his time I'd thought about it and it was the right decision for me it was a pen Maxet Chabaria was the player taken down Giles placed the ball down but it's going to be left here for Archie Lovett instead by the looks of things so Lovett to complete this turnaround 
It's Lovett, left footed. 2 1 up from 1 0 down. And St James is set up to celebrate again. Come from behind. Turn around early in the second half. How do Mary Webb respond to this now? Respond to this. Well done, love it. Kept his Pressure, call. Yes, he did. Pressure, Pressure penalty. penalty. Yep. Yeah. Pressure was on his shoulders, but he was up to the task. And now the onus is on Mary Webb School and Science College to come back and hit back themselves. Oh, great play. Oh. Still oh. going. What amazing one that was. What a goal! Unbelievable! <laughs> Harry Thomas, take a bow! That is a ridiculous individual goal! Now that is for me the goal, our best goal I have seen over the three days here. What a fantastic run, super skills, look at the poise, look at the balance, super feet and he's pinged it in top bin, <laughs> outstanding goal, super feet, what a run that was. That started a good 20, 20 metres further back as well. We've just seen the back end of it and it's still a fantastic goal. Super finish. He just kept on going and kept on going and had the finish to finish it all off as well. Great play by Thomas there. Game on. Game on indeed. We're back level once more. Talk about the perfect response. Instant. Yes, the reckon recognising of Danger Man now there, Giles. I think you probably get a bit more of that treatment, I think. Keep him at bay. Well, free kick then here for St. James's. Straight into the hands. There, though, of Harvey. It's all square here now. Another substitution. It's going to see the reintroduction of TJ Adams on for Harry Hanmer. It's been a great game this one so oh, far. It's fantastic. fantastic. The second half has really opened up. It's a good, it was a good first half as well, but this second half now it's really kicked on. Can't see who's going to win this game yet. Waring was threatening again. End to end stuff, really is. Oh, brilliant turn again there from Thomas. Up to Giles. Giles away from the first challenge. Oh, what a pass. Brilliant what ball to Just four slightly wide, but the chance is still there oh, and it's wide. It's took it wide. Giles' vision there was unbelievable. First touch there. Let's let Lovett down there, to be quite honest with you. Did let him down. It's unfortunate. What a fantastic pick that was. 
Look at that for a ball across yeah. and then love it just took it yeah. too wide. Just that first touch there. Keeper did enough to put him off as well. Another stoppage. Yeah, there's a play down at the moment. Forty-eight minutes played now, but it's been a second half in particular that you really can't take your eyes off. St James's support trying to cheer their side on. After that hit back, they had it all their own way in the second half up until that point. And they completed the turnaround, but they weren't ahead for long. away from Russell at the crucial moment forward again here for Giles Giles will look to take on the defender again that time halted though it will be a corner Which way will the pendulum here swing next? It's been back and forth between the pair. Just under 20 minutes of the 70 left. St. James is here taking their time of the taking of the corner. But it will come now. And towards that near post area, sent out though. Straight away. All the way through, goalkeeper perhaps could have called for that one, let it run through, but it was dealt with instead safety first. Where he brings it down and controls. A double ricochet in there, that was a heavy challenge. And again mm. in the aftermath, but the referee was happy with them both. Well, see, he's going to give a foul for the second. Yeah. Yep. Full bloody challenge. The commitment out there. Driven into the penalty area, but it didn't get past that 18 yard line in the end. Oh, neat touch in there from Rowe. Looking to feed Waring in behind again. We're in the left channel, Waring. Crowded out though, was outnumbered there. 
still breaks back here for Thomas. A through to Waring, but the flag's offside, up. Yeah. The flag's up for offside. Nearly though for Mary Webb. Yeah, it was. No way through there. That's all for Waring. Well defended. Hurton. On the turn oh, there, love turn. The flag's up again this time at the other end. Back through to the goalkeeper anyway, so the player will be allowed to carry on. Wouldn't have stood though if anything had come from that. Looked handball. Feel free agreed. Russell just seemed to stop as it came his way. Pulled up with cramp, I think. Mm. They'll be coming together again. And again, St. James's get the free kick. That tally of fouls just beginning to creep up now for Mary Webb. Yeah, they've been strong in the tackle, haven't they? Delivery from Hurton. Think good header out though. Lavery. No room through. Waring. Trying to kick start the attack again. Oh, Foul. Yes, That's yep, a cynical one. one. Yep, yep. Always going to take him out there. Yeah, it's a clear decision for mm. the referee. I think he's going to get the yellow card out here as well. First booking of the game. Can't have too many complaints with that one though. Shown the way there of Ethan Short. Thou shalt not pass. <laughs> Yeah, it was one of those as Waring was otherwise through on goal. Good touch. <laughs> Game B spread out now. Team's not pushing up at all. A big old pitch now. Fagan there with the throw in. Thomas lofting that one in behind again here for Waring. Waring still twisting, turning, toying with the defence. Into the penalty area on his left. Across the face of goal, but it was always flying wide that one. Heading towards the final 10 minutes, and as it stands, we would then have penalties, but there's still, of course, time for multiple goals left. It's been a game full of chances as well. You've seen me 
So uh, St James is very, very deep at the moment, trying to push him up the field there as well. Both teams are deep as they start to get tired. The more spaces. Trying to feed that one through after it here. Oh, is Adams. Well well defended though, did really well there. Did Fabian. really did well. Corner taken in low there. Bounced a couple of times before reaching anybody in the centre. And swung back in again right on top of the goalkeeper, but he's able to take that one easily. This Mary website were the winners of the under 12 Shropshire President's Trophy last year. They've come here today with the clear intentions of winning this national final. Open edge group, of course, married to the under 13s this season, and it's been a such successful campaign for them, such a successful campaign, particularly here in the PlayStation Cup competition. Will it go their way though here? In the final 10 minutes, well, St. James's will have different ideas, and they're the side here coming forward now. Cleared away again up to Waring. Waring here with the runner to the left. Progressing forward still. Good pass. Great ball to Adams. He's on the end of it too. Pass the defender. Close, just close down, it. yeah. Yeah, close down in the end. Tired legs there. Supporters here in the stand on the near side just being told and it gives me an opportunity to tell you at home as well to head over to at Scores Football on Twitter to take part in the player of the match vote. The nominations for the player of the match, Mary Webb's Harry Thomas, scorer of that spectacular individual goal and Evan Waring who got their goal in the first half and it all started so well for them and for St James's it's their two goal scorers as well, Archie Lovett and Cameron Giles. So head over to at Schools Football over on Twitter and we'll find out the winner of that player of the match vote come full time. Battle for it there in the middle of the park. The referee thought about that one in the end as well, but in the end opted to with a free kick to St James's, penalised rope. Yeah. He's a chance left for either side. Here we've got plenty of time for it. Have they got the legs for it? Some tired legs out there now. Yeah, fatigue of course obviously an increasing factor as the game progresses towards its conclusion or conclusion of the regular 70 at least. A reminder that it would be straight to penalties. Russell there with the ball back. Again, it's another foul.
substitution for Merriwebster and Science Forest in number 16. To Vince, Craig has to the race number 7, CJ Adams. Jack Edwards here is back on. He's wearing number 16 now. A change of shirt for him. And he's back on for Mary Webb School. Sent back in there, but would have been offside had it there fallen for St. James's. Off the head of Waring. After his own flick on. Oh, and it was cleared away, but only against the foot of Waring. Got away with one there. Rowe. Sent back by Luke Summers. Playing in the heart of defence from Airy Webb. He's gone about his business well as well. That's the course of the game. in play but the offside flag is raised yeah. can all change in just a moment will it be another piece of individual quality Often a, a defensive error in these sorts of situations as well. Now every moment with an increasing amount of importance. Lovett trying to turn that one in behind, but the goalkeeper is comfortable to see that one through all day. tough to call isn't yeah, it Tony it if we is. are to get a winner yeah it is defences are on top now he says he's, that his tired legs are coming to play here hardly any chances at all it is a tough one Edwards there with the ball in behind yeah, well defended Ontario Paver did his job there it's a player down over on the far side I'm not sure the referee has seen it though has now Yeah, it's a really tough game to call this one. Who's going to get this one? But looks for it. He is headed for penalties, I'm afraid. That can soon change, though. Yeah, well, neither team want to lose it now, do no, they, in the final no, five no, minutes? Absolutely, yeah. If it is to be a penalty shootout, it's going to be Mary Webb's first of the competition. And that goes for St. James's as well. Neither team have had to go through the penalty shootout in reaching the final, but it looks as though that might be the decider here on finals day at the Hawthorns. Ella Toon there. England Lionesses star signing some autographs for the supporters, the fellow students. Of the players out there on the near side. Players slowly returning back out onto the field of play. And we'll restart with the throw in for St. James's senior boys' school. Throwing his foot. 
Mary Weber for the referee. Initially seemed to signal it the other way after they return back out onto the field. Got there in the end, I think. Long distance strike, comfortable the keeper there. Thomas trying to weave a route through again, but no such fortune that time. Fagan couldn't quite get there. been stoppages in the second half as well with the players going down with cramp and different different little niggling injuries three goals as well of course in this second half with the celebrations that followed each of them so we expect there to be a period of stoppage time that could still bring about late drama Russell with the ball up Russell's gone down here again. Has been down before Russell. The referee's going to stop it. Well, Paul there has been sent out to warm up. Maybe being ready if Russell can't carry on. Getting to the stage as well, Tony, when the two managers will have to start thinking about who they want to be on the field for the penalties. Yeah, yes, I think that's going to be an important part to play now. Most definitely the way that's looking. After that equalising goal, there hasn't been any chances at all. You know, both both teams line deep, defence. Defences have been fairly strong to be quite honest with you. Hasn't been an opening. So it looks like penalties might be the order of the day. St James is here just with a bit of a get together on the field of play. A bit of a huddle and some words from one of the coaches who's on there at the moment having gone on whilst Kai Russell was still down. Referee. Now sending him off the side to get back into his technical area. It's booking, isn't it? That one? <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Three minutes at a time. Here at the end of the 70. We are going to see then the introduction of Maxwell Port, who presumably is going to come on and have a penalty as well. And Paul is on to replace Russell. Struck down with Cramp Russell and he then now is replaced. Back to the action as the ball there was dropped back to Luke Summers. Ontario Paver. Just about managed to get there then, Hurton. It's the one last chance left. St. James is trying to conjure one up, perhaps. Yeah, that's a lot there. Just too much on it for Mackley. Everything this season has been building up to this, to the PlayStation Cup final. Now then, is this a chance? Is this the moment? The goalkeeper's come a long way, but got there. Oh, good keeper. 
crucial that was because if he'd have stayed back then it would have been a free route to go yeah it's a, a miscue on the clearance there from Whitley <laughs> I'm saying you meant that. <laughs> Flick header. We've played the three minutes that we're adding on. Forward from Summers. All eyes now on the referee. St James is with the ball into the final third. It's taken down there by Lovett. Love it back across. Oh, and the clearance oh, away oh, is oh. crucial. This is this will be the last play, surely. But so unlucky. Beautiful play by Lovett. Brings it down superbly well. Works his way to that byline. Cuts across. And beautiful defending. Right place, right time. That's the art of defending. This you would think will be the final action. It's a barrier here. We'll take the corner. Paul is up there in the penalty area as well. Just freshly on. Still defending to do here for Mary Webb to force the penalty shootout. And Chabaria's delivery, it looks a good one as well. Header away, it goes back out to Echebarria. Referee happy for it to come back in. And it should be cleared now. All the way up, and there's the time. Referee blows the full time whistle. So we are heading for a penalty shootout to decide who will be crowned champions. Will it be Mary Webb's school and Science College or St. James's Senior Boys School? Don't go anywhere. We'll find out next. Well, here we go then. A penalty shootout to decide who will be crowned champions in the ESFA under 13 PlayStation Small Schools Cup competition. The penalties will be taken in front of the South Stand and an opportunity for the two goalkeepers as well to make themselves a hero within their school communities. 
Were you involved in many penalty shootouts in your time as a player, Tony? <laughs> it was important, a very important one uh, when Villa in 1994. Uh, and we got to semi-finals and we, we went to penalties against Tranmere. And uh, my penalty was the resulting penalty, even that, uh, that we, I scored that one. We went, I was the second person after the five was taken. Um, and we managed to win that game. The goalkeeper, Mark Boston, saved it. But let me tell you something now. In training, when we're taking off penalties, so easy. You know, you did. <laughs> you know, on the crunch game, when they used to score that goal, it's like a five-side goal and the goalkeeper's a massive giant with big, massive gloves <laughs> on. It's tough. So I know what those players are feeling now and what they're going to be going through now. The advantage with this now, it's everyone expects you to score. This is where the goalkeeper becomes a hero because no one, you know, any stop, any save he makes now, He's got the disadvantage, believe it or not. So it's just all about keeping your nerve. That's all it is. Keep the side that you're going to take the penalty. Do not change your mind. Well, to step forward then first here for Mary Webb, it is going to be Evan Waring. Pick a side, pick a place and stick to it is the message. Let's see how this shootout will go down. Waring, who has now scored in six of the seven games in the competition. But can he here convert from the penalty spot? Yes, he can. No missing. It's the perfect start in the shootout for Mary Webb. That's what you want. You want Captain, put in your head. Confident penalty. Noah Monterio Paver. All eyes on the St. James's map. Goalkeeper at the moment just behind the line. Monterio Paver. Good penalty. It was a good pen. It was a good pen. Very good pen there. Jack Edwards. They need to come forward now for Mary Webb. Edwards, it's going to be left footed. Scores as well. Three good penalties so far. No mistake in that one. Bottom corner. Keith had no chance with that. Cameron Giles, superb in the regular 70 minutes, but can he hold his nerve here from the penalty spot? Left the penalty in the match to love it, but it's Giles here for St. James's and slots it away as well. Sent the goalkeeper the wrong way. Good penalty. Four good, great pens to be honest with you. Really good pens so far. Summers here with the long walk from the halfway line. Handed the ball by the referee. It's Summers against Martin. Summers, it's still a perfect record. Boom. All spot kicks have so far been converted. And now the ball is back in the St. James's court. Very good pen there. Etcher Barrier. Just making sure the ball is placed perfectly on the spot.
Uh, Jabaria into the oh. corner as well. What a good turn that was. No keeper saving that one. Right to the side netting. Not a single mistake as of yet. Hayden Cartwright started the game on the substitutes bench. He has here put himself forward to take this penalty. Penalty number four for Mary Webb School. Cartwright, oh, Ooh. just about. Breathe again, just about. Keep on lucky. He'll be gutted, he could he couldn't keep that one out. Got a touch to it, I think, Martin, mm, but couldn't yeah, keep it out. Yeah. Tucked yeah. away again. Yeah. Still level. Again, another brilliant penalty. They've been converted with conviction so far. No mistake from Ethan Short. It's four each and it's effectively sudden death now. Ethan pressure, Parker. Now. Yeah, the way the pressure starts now. Martin got a hand to the last one. Can he keep this one out? Parker from the spot. He can't. Slotted away. And look at what it means to him. St. James's must score. Mary Webb just one away. Pressure on. It's Archie Lovett who scored his penalty in normal time. Keeper got close to it. Very close. Now we are down to sudden death and now Tony we're to the stage where players have to step forward who weren't in the first five. Yeah. This really pressure is now. They're, they're the ones that the true pen takers have gone. The ones for whatever reason are the six, seven takers. It's a long walk, this one. Oh, is that? Here comes Morgan Whitley. Perfect record from those who wanted a spot kick. Can Whitley here follow suit? Whitley scores! Oh, that's a good penalty. And still we go on. And again, it's back in the court of St. James's, who once again need to convert. St. James's must score. Can the goalkeeper here make the stop? It's into the corner again. And on we go. We're down to the seventh penalty takers. Reese Rowe for Mary Webb. Yeah. 
a row play just behind the striker as an attack minded player comes forward here for Mary Webb's number seven penalty can Rowe hold his nerve yes oh, he, he can certainly has what a good penalty that is look at that for a penalty David Hurton and now is the man to step forward for St James's as their seventh taker if he misses then Mary Webb have won if he scores then on we go Hurton does manage to score just needs him there just needs him puts it back in the net he scored it was a p-roller but it won't matter Seth Williams now. Will the 100% record here continue? Goalkeepers haven't had any joy yet. Williams put his foot through that one. Wow. Wow. No messing about. I've seen some really top class pins in this. Now it's the substitute, Maxwell Paul. Hardly had a kick of the ball as he was brought on only for stoppage time. It's pretty much his first involvement. Paul! Ooh. And manages to stroke it into. Right in. Amazing this. Now we are really down to the stage when those who did not want to be in this situation have found themselves there. Not far away from the goalkeepers taking them as well. You can completely sense the tension. Harry Thomas. Well, what a goal he scored in normal time. Can he, though, here find the net? Thomas. Yes, he can. Good penalty. I'm surprised he's that far down to be honest with you. Seems race where he can strike a ball. Doesn't matter. Big puff the of the in. cheeks. And he can breathe a big sigh of relief. They have to score, oh, and they good do. Ten. Good, ten. good penalty from Leo Mackley. That's the case every single time now, isn't it, for St. James's? They've got to keep mm -hmm. scoring because Mary Webb keeps scoring themselves. Cohen Booth now. We're really far down the list. I'm sure those watching at home will be watching from behind their sofas. The last outfield player for Mary Webb. It's Booth straight down the middle. No missing. Banked on the goalkeeper, moving out the way, and that's what happened.
Well, it's Ryan Fagan as the final outfield player. Fagan, who has had to wait his turn. Fagan! We're down right. to the goalkeepers! Amazing. It's unbelievable this, yeah, Tony. It really is. Really good. A standard of penalty taking. That's he's, he's, he's superb to be fair. It's really, really good. Down to the keepers. It's Matty Morris who hasn't been able to keep any out, but can he find the net himself? Oh, it's saved! It's saved, but it's not over yet! It's not over. No. Nope. Need to score. Get yourself back, son. <laughs> <laughs> They've jumped the gun yeah, a little yeah. with the celebrations. Martin has to score himself. Can Morris make amends? Can Martin find the net? Such, such drama here at the Hawthorns. Goalkeeper Liam Martin! Oh. What a penalty! That Top might have been bin. the pick of the bunch! Top bin! What a way to win, win the competition! Unbelievable stuff! St James is set off to celebrate! What a penalty! Oh my dears! Unbelievable! What a way to win it! Commiserations to Mary Webb School and Science College. They'll feel hard done by such a horrible way to lose. And they were so good from the spot as well until that Liam Martin save. But Martin the hero with the save and then the penalty to win it as well. Stick with us, the trophy presentation is on its way. Well, time then for the trophy presentations. Such a way to win it for St. James's Senior Boys School. Incredible, really. To go to a penalty shootout. To see every man go before you. Slot it away. Then make the save. To deny your opposite goalkeeper but then have the nerve to hit it hard like that into the top corner. Unbelievable. The referees came forward there for their medals. Trevor Redmore, his assistants Paul Cook and Alex Cook and the fourth official was Ronnie McNaughton. And now the turn of our runners up from Mary Webb School and Science College.
And before we see his side come for their medals, it's Harry Thomas on the losing side. But with that absolutely stunning individual goal that there is presented with his player of the match award and also the PlayStation vouchers from our partners here of the Schools Cup finals. So now Mary Webb School and College then come forwards. Harry Thomas in there as the player of the match. Sucked his penalty away as well. Of course, it's disappointment for Mary Webb, but it really could have gone either way. In normal time as well, it was so evenly balanced. It started so well for them whenever Waring got the goal in the first half. They had chances to have scored before that and after as well. Didn't lie down when they went 2-1 down. Their mentality was brilliant as well as their physicality and technicality out there from start to finish also. But ultimately the celebrations are here for St. James's. Liam Martin, the hero in the shootout, in there as well. Goal scorer is Archie Lovett, who also tucked away his penalty in the shootout. And Cameron Giles, who was absolutely brilliant. He'll feel hard done by as well that he wasn't given the player of the match. But every single player played their part for St. James's as has been the case across the course of the season. Scored 23 goals in the competition. And actually, the two that they conceded today were as many goals as they conceded en route to the final in the six games that went prior. Brilliant defensive record to go alongside the attacking quality. Ella Toon there, posing with the captain, Cameron Giles to lift the trophy. So your champions of the ESFA under 13s PlayStation Small Schools Cup competition, it's St James's Senior Boys School. The celebrations will continue, particularly after the fashion in which they got over the line. Such late drama in the penalty shootout. Liam Martin, the hero. A big congratulations once again to St. James's. We're hoping to hear as well from the two team managers with our stadium announcer over the tannoy, David Waldridge, in just a moment or two. So stick around to hear from both David White and Billy Jeffries. Up next, though, we'll have the under-15 national final between St. Peter's Catholic High School and Hurstmere School. So if you're tuning in for that one, rest assured, it's on the way. So I'm here with Mr. Leach. Mr. Leach, I mean, it really did go down to the wire. We ever heard them, your team, during that penalty shootout. Your students are a credit to the sport. Yeah, no, they've played really well today. They deserve, they deserve more. Um, the game went right to the wire, and to be fair, they just missed out, obviously, right in the neck. Um, it was really unlucky on them, and they're devastated, devastated. Well, no one deserves to go out on penalties, your team showing an incredible performance and absolutely fantastic support as well from the crowds yeah no no the school's been excellent the crowd to be fair today been really loud made the atmosphere great for the boys um and yeah to be fair it's been a great occasion amazing occasion well mr leach thank you for your time one more time i think it's only right that we hear from the fantastic support that is mary webb school in science college
So I'm here with Mr. Jeffries. Mr. Jeffries, oh, what a game! No, it's doing my ticker no good. I tell you that, it's been some weeks, it's been some weeks, so yeah, doing my heart no good at all. And this is it, your guys showed commitment all the way through that game and nerves of steel to get through that penalty shootout. Uh, it's all about them today, they're just such a good bunch, like, we've been non-stop support from the parents from day one, so today's about them, it's been, it's been a brilliant day. I know, it's been absolutely amazing and you've seen the support spreading into the crowd as well, I know you had some parents fly in to watch this game even as well. Yeah, I know, I heard that same parent's going to treat us all uh, to a nice dinner after, so, but no, it's been non-stop support and fair play to them they made it a real game so like any it was a toss of a coin with penalties so we're just delighted we got the luck of the draw today there we go mr jeffries i'm going to let you go and celebrate a very emotional moment one more time let's hear it for st james's senior boys school but of course ladies and gents don't go anywhere because we have still got plenty more action on the way coming up next here at the playstation schools cup 2023 kingsdale foundation school taking on formby High School!
Welcome back then to the Hawthorns for the third game of the third day here at the home of West Bromwich Albion in the national finals for the PlayStation Schools Cup competitions. This is the under-15 national final here being competed between St. Peter's Catholic High School and Hurstmere School. Well, I will then run you through the two team lineups starting here with St. Peter's. They have Joe Draper in goal. Then the rest of their starting lineup there Lewis Kennedy, Andrew Gordon, Jack Price, Harry Barrow, Callum Short, Nick Hassan, Sam O'Neill, Tom Madison, Jake Seddon, and Louis Fitzpatrick. They are led by Matt Seddon. As for Hurstmere, then they have Woody Leach between the sticks in goal. Teddy Miles, Ronnie Sutty, Charlie Lotz, Josh Woods, George Bishop, Sam Robinson, Jacob Connett, Lincoln Hunter, Teddy Campbell and William Wright. William Wright captain in the side here this afternoon. As for those on the substitutes bench then for St. Peter's they have four substitutes named. They are Tom Such, Jamie Breddon, George Ballard and Josh Rothwell for Hurstmere. Just the three, they are Jude Lattimore, Harry Joe Whitfield and Ray McCreary. Two periods of 40 minutes in store for us then, Tony, for this one as we move up an age group to the under-15s. If it's anything like the drama that we've just witnessed in the last game, then we're going to have another great game in store. <laughs> well, I'm just recovering from that, though, that pen shootout. <laughs> it's a fantastic game. There it was, yes, yes, I'll, I'll take any, anywhere near that to be quite honest with you. Yeah. It just see this head, another age level up. What kind of stand they've got the world going to play here? Captain there for St. Peter's is Callum Short. And as I say, the armband there for Hurstmere is with William Wright. Nervous tension out there at the moment for the players, of course, but they'll be lucky to just get underway get the game started now it's all been building up to this talking of penalty shootouts well St Peter's have had to win two of them to get to finals day including after their 2-2 draw of St Mary's College in the semi-final it's going to be St Peter's then here to get us off and underway get this game off to its beginning looking forward to this one Fitzpatrick gets us underway then as St Peter's kick from left to right in this first half that's me there in all red Of course, Tony, both sides with a game plan that the managers have asked them to go out and implement, and it's about going there and implementing it now. Yes, and it is. The manager put everything in place now. It's just down to the players. Can they execute what, what, they, what they've been told to do? Fitzpatrick after that one. The number 10 there for St. Peter's. Shaw, the skipper. Out on the far side, though, and Teddy Miles... We'll have the throw in. Going forward there up to Hunter. All the way over the top there with the bouncing ball. Said and closest to it, but it's well cushioned back to the goalkeeper. Well defended. Nice and calm. Sutty there with the ball up to right. Right back to Ronnie Sutty. Lots with time and space there to decide what to do, and he chose to send it long. Breaks back into the edge of the penalty area. It's the first little sighter there for Hurstmere, but it's off target in the end. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Coming in there. 
left, left foot strike off target struck it well but it was off target he looks comfortable on the ball William Wright who is part of the Millwall Academy setup. Foul. Price here on this right side for St. Peter's. It goes back there though, and St. Peter's happy to just play it forward once more from O'Neill. the back once more from O'Neill again long forward from Lotz not the easiest ball to deal with it just held up there goalkeeper opted to stay back it was dealt with well yeah, good defending again Travelling towards the edge of the penalty area. Good block, though. Block close to where the shot was taken from. Bishop. It's a long-range effort, but... Going to take something spectacular to beat the goalkeeper from that sort of a distance from the right boot of Jacob Connor. Just trying to get his range there. Goalkeeper there just having gone to retrieve the ball from the stand behind his goal. Five minutes played. Not to have any real clear cut opportunities, just a couple of sighters for her Smith. That one's direct straight out of play from their goalkeeper Leach. Yeah, both teams trying to establish their pattern that in the play. It does look like the St. Peter's Catholic are a bit more bit more direct. Whereas Hurstmore want to get the ball down and play a little bit more. Hunter. Oh, that's a great ball. Goalkeeper just did well though done well there lots there's lots of time and space there as well for Wright still Wright allowed to advance on offloads as well opportunity really really good save what to deny Hunter save. by far the most clear cut opportunity that either side have so far created Wright did superb there and now the, uh, the vision you think he's lined enough to go onto his left peg again there just slots it inside we think in goal keeper so brave there what a fantastic save there by Draper great stop from Joe Draper trust me we'll build again Comfortable in possession and going back to their goalkeeper. Bishop there with the header on, but it didn't break for anybody in red. Long ball forward here for Hunter to get after once more. Disrupted by Gordon. Corner.
Swung high into the penalty area. Good header away, mm -hmm. though. And yep. The referee sent a foul in there anyway. Yeah. Well defended. Yeah, not much going on in there, to be fair. Don't the ref saw there. Yeah, slightly soft one, perhaps, but a defensive repeat, reprieve there for St Peter's Catholic High School who have been the defence under the most pressure so far oh it's a bit awkward that one and that might spell trouble there was an opportunity in there for Fitzpatrick just a bouncing ball that wasn't judged well and another fantastic block by the keeper defender expecting it to, to come through to the keeper didn't shout didn't come for it might have been a bit of an inquest between the yeah. defender and goalkeeper. Had that yeah. one ended up yeah. in the back of the net. Yeah, it's a good see Fitzpatrick really bright and alert. Just couldn't get it past him. But it's another fine save. Yeah, as we see there on the replay, got to the ball first. Oh, and ball. And a ball. push, yeah. No, a little push. Yeah, the push. That's what the referee they pulled up for. Yeah, did strike his arm, but pushed, and that was the reason why. Bishop, four to right. Right again, driving towards the penalty area. Right then with the set back, back to George Bishop. Fitzpatrick after that one, but it bounces through there to Teddy Miles. Good feet. St. Peter's turn at the moment, just to have probably their best spell of possession so far. Yeah, especially these conditions, just keep the ball, you know, just keep it movable, moving. We need possession of the ball. So much easier than running around after this. Wait for that opening. Eleven minutes on the clock, it's still goalless. Here in the under fifteen. PlayStation Schools Cup National Final. Right. Then trying to dic dictate play in midfield, but the header down there, where's that going to drop? It's promising here for Hurstmere into the attacking third. Drops onto the roof of the net. How do you think the two managers will be feeling about the, the start that their respective sides have made so far, Tony? Two chances, up one at one each end. You know, it's, 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 going, it's going to be a little cagey at first, as it is. But to be pleased with both their starts, and he's created a, an opportunity in the opening part of the game. Yeah, a big chance at either end. But neither of them taken. Yeah. 
Robinson. And it was a long range effort. Not the first long range strike that Hurstmere mm. have tried from a similar sort of range. long from the goalkeeper that time Sotti couldn't find a teammate Miles with the ball all the way across still work to do it, it's collected here by Campbell Connor sent that one in first time Good challenge, timed well. St. Peter's with the possession at the moment. Bit of a loose touch though, and that presented the opportunity for the Hurstmere man to nip in and get there. In search of Seddon. Meant back for Sutty, instead it comes there to Lotz. And Miles it was a big part, and Miles here with it now as well. Miles across the penalty area. Bishop robbed of it though. There, good work from Callum Short. It's another over to it. Yeah. Good football. Swept long downfield. That will be the goalkeeper's ball all day long. in the press there from Wink and Hunter but eventually collecting and then we'll send it long Draper <laughs> flick header for Campbell to get after good collection once more Right, driving forward with the ball at his feet again. Good ball through. Again, the goalkeeper there to make the stop. Really good run that. Robinson that time on the end of the slip through ball. Again, well defended. What right, showing is definitely a danger man in his team. The most creative player. Yeah, he's their top goal scorer in the competition as well this season. Captain Will Wright with eight goals en route to the final. Swinging left footed delivery, the goalkeeper didn't get there. Mm -hmm. Got away with arms. it. Fell into his arms in the end. Good delivery. Wasn't particularly convincing to start with, but he would have been able to take a side of relief when it came back to him. Short. Again, looking direct. Nice header there from Hunter. Oh, 
right was caught there and it will be a free kick here in a relatively good position for it too yeah, it's a good range good distance out I think it's an ideal position here he's not just a touch too far out but it's not too really choosy Well, right then, having won this free kick, looks as though he's going to take it. It's four in the wall for St. Peter's. Right, and the wall did its job. It certainly did. Brave wall. Fitzpatrick is going to leave that throw in there to Jack Price. Steps forward here on the right. Knocked away there by Jacob Connor. Price. Good ball that. That one likewise. Here's Seddon. Why can he get the delivery in? Drives to the penalty box. Chosen. This Hurst Mere side last season reached the semi-final of the competition. They've gone one better this time around and looking to get the job done here today. The under-15 B team did actually win the National Cup last season for the, for the B team sides. Locks forward there and he was one of the players involved in that big team success story along with Teddy Campbell into the A team this season and that pairing looking to make it two wins in two years in the ESFA national finals they'll take that one name That's the midway point now of this first half. It's going to be a Hurstmere free kick. Goalkeeper was coming to take that, but it was taken instead there by Woods. Hunter. Put and but to work though for the goalkeeper. that one just dropping out of the sun as it came down touch couldn't get the pass though there uh. pass O'Neill <laughs> clearance away from Miles but it didn't get far away as it came back off Seddon Have you seen this one then so far, Tony, with 22 minutes on the clock? Yeah, very even. Both teams had that, those one chances each. Other than that, you know, the, it's, it's been a final delivery. There's been a lot of playing to the midfield areas, a lot of battling. The defences are definitely on top at this present moment. It's going to be a tight one.
Goal kick here, left for Woody Leach. Just had that one worrying moment. The mix up at the back. Other than that, though, he's yet to really be called into action so far. Certainly in terms of save making action, anyway. Casmir here today looking to complete the season treble as well. They've already won the Kent competition and the North Kent competition as well. So a win here would make them treble winners. This though, very much the most difficult final that they'll have been involved in. again from the right boot of the goalkeeper there, Leach. Kept in play there by Connor. Back for the throw. It's just been that quality to that box, hasn't it? Lacks in that, in that final third, not that much in the final third here. Yeah, yeah neither side just unable, neither side have been able to find the key to unlock that back line as of yet, really. Goal is here at the moment, but we have seen plenty of goals already today. The 10 4 win for Moreland School in the under 14 small schools final to begin with, and then the 2 2 draw. And the late drama in the penalty shootout to see the victory go the way of St. James Senior Boys score in the under-13 small schools competition. Just lost, lost track of it there, right? But still, his side do have it. Out on to the right. Hunga Pie back in there from Connor, but no pressure on the goalkeeper. Comfortable catch. It's just gone a little cagey now in these last five or ten minutes. Yeah, it really has. There was moving a passive way of passing without being overturned. Gordon there with the switch of play from right to left. Wasn't taken down though. And Madison wanted to. Here it's nine games played on route to the final and they've kept a clean sheet in six of those. Their defence has held firm so far today as well. This is the case for St Peter's. Goalkeeper Joe Draper to thank for that though when he made that great save. Big, big stop early on. saw it taken away from him there and then just lost his footing so 
it's a very scrappy game at the moment. Neither team had been able to get any bit of possession. Right. That's the ball behind. St. Peters will try to break their way forward now. Fitzpatrick. Seven. One back though in the midfield for her Smith. Looking for a more direct route through that time, but again the goalkeeper out to the edge of his penalty area. Yeah, very alert. Yeah, if we saw a moment's hesitation from the goalkeeper down the other end, there certainly hasn't been for Draper in coming to collect those sorts of balls through, commanding of his penalty box. Vantage here being played by the referee, Ryan Middleton. Brought back now, though. Right, who's stayed down for the time being. Just came out of that challenge a little worse for wear. The player's going to come over, I think, get some fluids on. This has been very, very scrappy. His first 30 minutes, his first half. And the other side not creating too much. Yeah, just started with that chance a piece didn't we but since yeah. then hasn't, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. hasn't been much at all no. two sets of travelling supporters trying to urge their sides on here on finals day at the Hawthorns West Bromwich Albion having now of course completed their EFL Championship campaign Still down here at the moment, yeah. right? Yeah. It's been assessed there. Yeah, it's turning into a bit of a mm. more lengthy stoppage. Mm. Maybe the game will brighten up though when we get back to the action. Third of five games here today. Still to come after this, we'll have the under 14 B teams final and then the under 15 small schools cup final as well. Brookhouse College will be competing in that one. Brookhouse College actually were involved in this route to the final as well for Hurstmere, who got past them in the knockout stages. Yeah, very lengthy this one. It takes up. Yeah, just readjusting his socks now and shin pads, and he's back up to his feet. Right, and they'll hope that he can continue. Yeah, he's an important part of this team here. He's their create most creative player. Ready to resume then. And it will be Leach again here to take. Writers waved back on.
couple of short options here from this goal kick if St Peter's goalkeeper Draper wants to use them but said it's just yeah, going to go straight long yeah he hasn't used them all game so it'll be interesting with their set up there and yeah, they're setting up for it but then yeah. just, just going long from it uh -huh. instead yeah Rode the first challenge well there, did Campbell. Campbell again. Maybe tried to work the shooting angle. If it didn't get off the ground though. It's tame in the end. Campbell again, just with a flick of the outside of his foot. Bit of football. That's me just beginning to stroke it around well. After the resumption following that stoppage when White was down. Here he is now. Into the penalty area. Still right. And still right. On he goes. And drags oh. it just wide. It runs well wide in the end, but it looked for a moment as though that was going to be the opening goal. Yes. Took a superb bit of dribbling. However, it was on his right foot. His weaker foot. And pulled it, pulled it wide, but the run was amazing. Every time he thinks he's going to get closed down, going to get tackled here, never happened. Got a shot off. Yeah, he did everything right there until the finish. Yeah. As you say, Tony, I think he would have preferred it if it was mirror image on the other side yeah, on his left absolutely. foot. Yeah. I think he's celebrating a goal if that was the case. Price there with the throw in. Gets it back as well. Here is right again, holding off the defender this time. Bishop trying to spread the play further forward upfield. Back again for Bishop, playing in the middle of the park, just in front of that back line. For her smear. Rocks there was under pressure, sent it forward, but only straight to Callum Short. Much of the game being played in this midfield third at the moment. Short there slipped. Wright was then allowed to go past him. Wasn't allowed past the second challenge though. Free kick here. In a good position. Yeah, let's see what they choose to do with it. Plenty of players have gone forward here yeah. from the back as well. Mm -hmm. Big left foot here as well. Cue of players waiting. Just long, just long. So two minds there for me. Well over hit that one. Yeah, just overcooked it that yeah. time. Good challenge, good okay. tackle there. Well, asking a lot. Yeah, it was definitely asking yeah. a lot there of Seddon. Again, St. Peter's Catholic high school just trying to be direct, but it hasn't worked for them yet. Yeah, especially against this uh, three, three men. Central defenders, it's difficult against one as well, trying to find those angles. A touch the ball there though, it was away though from Fitzpatrick.
Robinson. Campbell. Bishop. Back again to Campbell with a little pocket of space. Well, Flicked on as well for Ooh. Hunter to get there, but the goalkeeper got there first. And wanted it, and wanted it more, didn't he? Tass. Look to Fitzpatrick. Just linking the play that time. O'Neill. Again, trying to work the ball into the channel, but again, it's Teddy Miles who is there, that left-sided centre-back. Right, on the charge forward again. Oh, well yeah, good toe in there, important. Players down off the pitch at the moment for St. Peter's. Referee's attention has just been brought to that. See the game goes on. Now the referee stops the game. And the medical team will once again be on. Seems as though there is a change here being readied as well. It's Josh Rothwell preparing to come on here. Again, it's another stoppage in play as we wait to see how much stoppage time we will have here at the end of this first half. We had that lengthy stoppage as well when Will Wright was down. It's very worn down there. So we just see definitely uh, defences on top here. Yeah, it's definitely been the case so far, and the the evident difference in the defensive structures as well, with the three at the back at one end and St Peter's with the four across mm -hmm. their back line. Both as effective. The type of flame. Just two minutes on the fourth official's board. Should then see us through to half time. <laughs> Change made there then as Jack said, Jake said and Big Harden is replaced. He was the player who was down receiving treatment and he goes off to make way for Josh Rothwell. the one late opportunity in the half before we head into the break Federer could take on the chest there though for St Peter's Connor goes all the way back to Leach Leach long forward again though taking on the chest that time by Hassan Fitzpatrick couldn't there get it past Miles start right this time for Hersmeer and the header on should take it through to the goalkeeper it does well defended there again and it looks as though then it is going to be goalless at half time I think that's fair for the first half Tony yes I think it has it's a red that one so two chances, one each end, glorious chances, either side. So that's about it really. I think they did the game where defence have been on top. They've dominated the game. Just urged to press there, the St. Peter's yes, side yeah, from their technical right. area late yeah. on in the half. I think they need to do that second half more often. 
because if you win the field, the, the ball further up the field, you've got more chances to create more, just more energy provided with that there. I think our players as well, you, you, you know, it's a hot day, you're probably trying to conserve energy. It's very difficult if you get in that mode to, you know, to come out of it. All eyes on the referee as we're into overtime after stoppage time now. And there is the half-time whistle. So it is goalless at the midway point. No goals in that first half, but still all to play for heading into the second period. Half-time score here in the ESFA Under-15 PlayStation Schools Cup National Final. And it's still nil-nil. couple of chances in the half but as she said Tony just the, the two to begin with really and then the, the chances dried up after that this one a good opportunity and a good save there good block by the keeper yeah both goalkeepers were called into action I think the best stop really was the first one from Draper early on. But the clear-cut opportunities after those opening two were somewhat few and far between. Don't go anywhere though, we have the second half still coming up on the horizon for you. But it is goalers at the break.
then for the second half here of the ESFA Under-15 PlayStation Schools Cup National Final between St. Peter's Catholic School and Hurstmere School. Still goalless at the break, Tony Daly, but there's still much more football here to be played in the second half and important that the two teams come out firing here. Yeah, you made a good point, Isaac, right at the end of the game about uh, the, the coach telling them to, to press. I think that's needed a little bit more there because at the moment both have been really cagey, don't want to concede goals, uh, playing through the lines. Play, so not playing through the lines, just playing very safe at the moment as well. And both teams have gone quite direct and been very comfortable for the um, central defenders, the defensive teams. So it's important now that they did, you know, they start playing the ball around, start to press, start a bit more effort. Then you, you can win the ball high up the field and more chances will be created. Otherwise, you know, this could be a nil nil going to penalties. I, should, I know I shouldn't have said it, but we, that's what we don't, we don't <laughs> want. But, you know, unless, unless something changes, that's the way it's going. Yeah, well, a good basis for both teams to build on here in the second half. Let's see if they can build on it. Loose ball there in the middle of the pitch. It's out here for Sam Robinson. Robinson trying to take it to the byline. Gets the ball in as well. Ooh. Oh, good save. Just trickling towards that far corner. From the right boot of Will Wright. That's a good start. Better start. Just couldn't, couldn't get the full connection. Good one. Decent pullback. And a good save by the keeper. Just didn't quite get the connection he wanted. Draper made a good stop early on in that first half. This one even earlier on in the second period. Free having just lost something from his pocket there. I think it was handed back to him by Tom Such, who was brought on at half time for St. Peter's. It's a foul on the free kick. That's me, a goalkeeper again here being called forward. And likely to take it. Again, that big line of players all waiting for the delivery. Long and straight that time. The offside flag here is raised. The referee was then told as well. That said in there, the St. Peter's Catholic High School boss. Goalkeeper being moved back to where it should be taken from. This free kick after the offside. <laughs> Robinson there, foul. The referee wants a word with the offender as well here. As we just with the first half at the moment, stop start. Yeah, it's booking there. I think that's persistent fouling, I think. Yeah, Nick Hassan here is going to be the first player cautioned in the game. Yeah, I think it was more for the accumulation of the fouls rather than just that one alone.
Referee pedantic but precise with the placement of the ball here for the free kick. Line being held on the 18-yard line. Swung all the way in there. Good ball. It's not dealt Touch with, in. but it's in. in. Well, there's the breakthrough for Hersmere. It was scrappy, but they won't care how it came. Hersmere ahead. Yeah, scrappy it was, but it doesn't matter. It was put in a good area. But to be attacked. Keeper couldn't get there. Shuffled around a little bit. Sam Robinson, quickest to react, to just prod home past the goalkeeper. Yeah, well done, super work, well done. I'm glad it's an early goal because that, that all that produces now, they have to come out. St Peter's Catholic High School need to come out now. It's a 45th minute goal for Sam Robinson. Nothing that the goalkeeper could do to keep that one out. It was past him in a flash. Scrappy, but Hurstmere won't care. Well, now the balance of the game have to change then. Yeah. Have to be more attacking, a more attacking team. throw it over there on the far side it's exactly the start to the second half that manager personally and Michael Dye would have been asking his side to produce Jude Latimore, the number 12, is also on for Hurstmere, one which went under the radar. That change must have been made at half time. On from the substitute bench there. On the right. but again it was just direct and hopeful up to him it's 1v3 up there for Fitzpatrick as well Robinson here the goal scorer with that throw in there down the line Try to run through as well by Campbell Both sides appealing for it. And then it goes the way of the defending team. Such. 
Well played, we'll switch to play. Yeah, nice switch there, out to Barrow. Did find its way through as well. Managed to get it past lots. Both managers still with plenty of cards that they can play, of course, from the substitute bench. St. Peter's, who's the side with the onus on them, really, to change the course of the game now. They conceded very early on in this second half. That's a good ball up to Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick, turn. And offloaded to the right. More yellow shirts here, committed forwards. Ooh, Heavy challenge, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. The referee was happy with it. Yeah. Could have been a nasty one. Yeah, could have been that one. Shaw has just come out of it hobbling as well. He's gone back down here, Shaw, as well. Yeah. I think so as well. Ooh, both, both of them took arms with you. Yeah, yeah, One's a bit six for one, half yeah, a dozen the other, but yeah. it was a full body challenge. Yeah. Neither of them wanted yeah, to, yeah, to pull out yeah. from it. Mm -hmm. Ten minutes played since the restart. Still half an hour left to play here, though. There's still time. Still time. is going to return to the action. Just waiting for the referee to call him back on. And on he returns. Sent away there by Gordon. Forward then from his opposite number three, Sutty. First touch as well, right. White got the assist for the goal, looking to go alone here, perhaps into the box. Good challenge though. From Tom Such. Very good there. Uh, White's showing great feet. Once in that box, he's got all in total to take players on. Because the timing the tackle has to be correct. If it's mistimed, we know it's gonna be, it's gonna be a penalty. So in that box, no issues at all. This is where he comes a threat, that's why it's such a timely tackle there. Goal scorer Robinson, who was on the end of a set piece for it, has taken that particular set piece. Only into the near post area though. Shooting chance perhaps, but it was blazed high and wide, well wide. Six clean sheets, remember, for Hurstmere en route to the final. They've only conceded three goals in the nine games which have got them to this stage. They have a very good defensive record, and if they can keep a clean sheet here, then they're going to get their hands on the trophy. Shaw up to Fitzpatrick. Maybe Fitzpatrick trying to play that one in behind the back line, but 
This way defender is back to take it back to Leach. What a good touch that was. Has played him in. Right, with a brilliant ball through there. Hunter back across looking there for Campbell, but he can get past the defender. Good ball through though, wasn't it, for oh, Wright? That was fantastic. Such a, such a good playmaker, Wright. Really is. Fantastic ball. Played on chest. Played through. area and it's collected there by Draper still more action to come for you today up next we'll have the B teams under 14 boys final between Formby High School and Kingsdale Foundation School but might be half an opportunity here for St oh. Peter's would have been if it was a better touch from Fitzpatrick yeah. Yeah, that's, that's correct if you, if you see the way St Catholic's and Peter's Catholic play they play the four at the back and one screening in front time to take a bit of gamble really get one more advance forward might be order the day here now put some pressure yeah, might mighty taker a tweak of the system a bit of a gamble for them to try to get back into it because it just doesn't look likely particularly in this second half for them High downfield there from Draper. Look at her on from Fitzpatrick. Oh, good touch. Yeah, good turn. Fitzpatrick couldn't yeah, find the follow up ball though. Okay. Sutty. And it's right leading the charge here for Hersmeer into the box trying to play the cut back it's still there though for Wright well defended just about did enough there at the back St Peter's defenders to try to weave a route through touch of cramp yeah there's a touch of cramp there two down yeah, there's one down from either side yeah, yeah one's cramped the other one's probably a knock Man down on the halfway line for St. Peter's as that attack and period of play continued. Readying himself there, Ray McCreary. Going to be called for next. He's got the call, got the nod from manager Michael Dye. Again, then, as play from either side remain down. Obviously, these players, Tony, with the with the ambitions of going on to to play at a high level. Tell us a bit about the, the transition from your your younger playing days to then moving forward into your professional career. Yeah, I mean, I, I was spotted exactly the same feature. We're talking about uh, playing at county level. Um, and going on and having trials as a youngster playing for England and then um, Aston Villa uh, came uh, knocking which is my local team to require so the team I was supported so when they did it was, it was for me to go on schoolboy forms then was, was a thing for me 
we didn't have an academy as such you know I'd, I'd, I'd train uh, just once or twice a week uh, each, week, the, each, each week as a 15 year old at 16 a week I signed um, an apprentice it was called apprenticeship then yeah and um, I signed uh, there uh, did extremely well my first year and uh, was already involved in the first team at 16 I was very fortunate at that time and then from then it's been it was a, a lovely rise getting the first team I uh, signed the contra uh, pro contract at 17 so I was very fortunate wow it was, it was good it was, it was you know with that and more to me as well being, being, my, being my local team and everything else like that it was great to be playing with players above this i was uh, a year ago cheering on in the stands you know it was fantastic <laughs> yeah 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 and i'm sure these young players and all of the young players that we've had here at the playstation schools cup games so far and those still to be in action still being made to wait will have similar aspirations and yeah. maybe you never know one of them one day might go on to be a star do you know what it would be great to that fact of commentator and someone that's going to come through that you know yeah, you know yeah. it'd, be, it'd be fantastic and i'm sure there will be you know a small percentage that's going to go on and, and play top grade football i'm sure there is because do, what i've seen over this year has been really 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 high standard and there's some talented youngsters that out there on that football field it's the voice of former Aston Villa legend and England international winger Tony Daly alongside me in the commentary box for all of the PlayStation Schools Cup games and the substitution there then has seen the withdrawal of William Wright he's not able to carry on I think he just rolled his ankle so Ray McCreary is on but that's a blow for her Smith. yeah it really is a big blow because he's their, their outlet can someone else take up the challenge I thought he had a fantastic game. He created ever so lot, ever so much of, of what um, Hersmere were doing. So as you said, it'd be a major blow that he's gone. here for St. Peter's chance to send players up from the back again They're coming back down the other way though and Hersmere here streaming forward with plenty of bodies joining the attack as well good recovery though got back really well there Andrew Gordon Touch. Yeah, good defending. Ooh. Oh, yeah, another full body challenge. Yeah. Oh, that, in fact, it's probably a little bit naughty that one, but take granted that away there as well. He did superbly well there with the Josh Woods. Good defending. First and foremost initially seemed to pull up a little bit there as well thought he had a little little knock St Peter's here looking to make it roads in the first me back line that's a difficult ask cushion header back to the goalkeeper With 63 minutes played now nil Hersmere ahead came courtesy of Sam Robinson turning in a loose ball as it bounced back to him from a Will Wright free kick Latimer Connor drives that one diagonally the offside flag is raised good little knock that good ball straight offside Substitution here for Hurstmere. We'll see Ronnie Sutty to be replaced, and it's Harry Joe Whitfield to come on, which means that every single player in the Hurstmere squad here today will now have been involved. It's 
St. Peter still have Jamie Bread and, and George Ballard amongst their unused substitutes. After that, the referee has given the free kick. I think the card is coming out again here for that. I think it's Lewis Kennedy who's shown it. It is. He joins teammate Nick Hassan by way of yellow cards. It feels like the kind of game that if Hasmir could double their advantage and put them two goals to the good, then that's going to be a long way back for St. Peter's, given the limited opportunities that they've been able to create. Yeah, they haven't, yeah as you said, they've even got 1 0 down, they haven't really created anything of note. Into the penalty area again, that time the goalkeeper did well to come yeah, and catch he it. Yeah, needs to well <laughs> defending there. <laughs> yeah, that was brilliant. <laughs> He's not happy about it, but that's super, super play. Stopping the keeper from kicking that ball out. Here we go. After this oh, one behind Campbell. Will well, he get there? Yeah. The goalkeeper got there yeah. first. Yeah. In all fairness there, Gordon did enough. So I apologise. Not good enough, Gordon. Lewis Kennedy, sorry. Centre half. Goalkeeper seems to have an issue Nothing. here as well now. Mm -hmm. He wasn't happy, was he, when, no. <laughs> when Whitfield closed him down <laughs> yes, to stop him yeah. taking it I mean, long, he's done the right thing. You can't let him have a... You know, you, you, you take a booking for that as well, because I think there were uh, 2v2 at the back at the time that prevented him from playing that. And yeah, that was the initial ball in from the set piece. Yeah, take it, we took it really, really well. And, <laughs> yeah, said stop him. Well done, well done. He's done nothing wrong, in fact, to be quite honest with you. Nearly 67 played now then. Just that one second half goal in it. Goalkeeper here is still down at the moment. I don't believe there's a recognised substitute goalkeeper either for St Peter's Catholic High School, so they'll have to be hoping that Draper can continue. Seems to just be a bit of a knock and likely that he will try to soldier on. Of course, we've already lost William Wright as he succumbed to injury earlier. He's actually going through some warm up stretches, though, Wright, so maybe we'll see his reintroduction as the game progresses. Heading towards the final 10. So it is a substitution for St. Peter's, but it's not of their goalkeeper. And it's Harry Barrow off. And Jamie Breddon on. Ball there just dropped back to the goalkeeper. It's back in play again. forward but again through to the goalkeeper who that time just played the cushion pass out has to be a bit of a, a sense of urgency about it now though for St Peter's ultimately just that one moment the difference between the teams but St Peter's as we've been saying has been able to create opportunities we've got defending to do at the moment Robinson goal scorer of a brilliant check back the box but good header away 
Yeah, they're getting numbers in the box as well. They're not, they're not happy with just the one. Looking for that second goal. Good delivery to the back stick. Back across mm. the face of goal. Nobody there in red to turn it home. It was really inviting as it was heading back across. Yeah, the initial play for that was really good. Really good play. Causing a lot of trouble down the right hand side here. Robinson again on that same flank. The goalkeeper collects. It's fouled anyway. Offside flag goes up. Just on the shoulder. And just a judge to have gone a little early there. In behind the back line. It hurts more. It looks a little more, a little more lightly. We've come to the final 10 minutes now. We really need to push on now. Do St. Peter's Catholic high score. Try and get his equaliser. Good tackle. The challenge and it's Hersmeyer again coming forwards. It's Campbell. Campbell drives it across. Again, it was a really inviting yeah, it delivery. Was, it was. Still the danger looms oh, though, okay. no longer. Okay. It's Hurstmoor who really on top here now. Can't get out there half. St. Peter's at all. Goal kick forward again from Draper. Gordon. I don't know to run through, but there was nobody else there, and <laughs> it's all the way through. Some of the arrivals for the next game that we have in store as well. The Bay Teams final, remember, up next for the under 14s category. Form behind score will be in action here against Kingsdale. Slip through there to Teddy Campbell. Well played. Matimor. Yeah, and down Robinson. the line there, Robinson. Well played there. Good strike. Oh, for Campbell. Oh, what a good strike by, by Campbell. Really good strike. On the half volley. Oh, really tough technique that. And nearly executed. top of the net on its way past wrong side of the post though that's the goalkeeper who here this time has afforded time and space with it they're going to have to change the course of the game somehow here St Peter's Very comfortable at the moment for her Smith. It really is. Really is. Well done, Robinson again. Yeah, got it well for the header, but the referee deemed it that one to be a foul. forward the goalkeeper comes and oh, gets it well, good goalkeeping command that penalty area such a great side for the defense when the goalkeeper comes and collects it like that can't beat it cannot beat it 
might have just heard from our stadium announcer. Make sure you go over to Out Schools Football on Twitter. That's the Twitter handle for the English Schools FA to take part in the Player of the Match vote. You can vote for either Louis Fitzpatrick, Lewis Kennedy from St. Peter's Catholic High School or from Hurstmere School here, a goal to the good. Their goal scorer, Sam Robinson, is also up for Player of the Match alongside the man who got the assist for it, Will Wright. That scores football for that Player of the Match vote and the winner will be presented their award on the field of play during the trophy presentations. Ball that really perfect weight on it as well. Robinson, okay. well recovered, good defending. Well recovered, Renton getting a shut off for Robinson. Having a fantastic game in the second half down his right hand side. He's doing a good outlet. There was an excellent spray pass there as well from Lincoln yeah, Hunter. It was, it was. Well, it's the final five for stoppage time, of course, and we have had a couple of notable lengthy stoppages in this second half. But if anything, it's definitely Hurstmere that looked more likely to get the second goal, and that would kill the game. To Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick forward then, and now St. Peter's will come on the charge. Oh, good defending. Impressive. Josh Woods. Wonderfully timed. O'Neill, the latest man to suffer with cramp after that sprint down the line. Really good tackle. Still O'Neill is down at the moment, so Fitzpatrick just being made to wait with this throw. Back there to Fitzpatrick. Out once more for take two. Have to try to build this pressure here on the Hurstmere goal. Presented back there though to Hurstmere and it's side in red who are coming forward on the attack again. Robinson has a little pocket of space and said it's gone the other way. Here is Robinson now. Got ball up as well. Oh. Well off target though. Yeah. Good play. Build up play again. Getting more confidence as game go on. If you thought it'd be a bit the other way round in terms of the pressure, but it's Hunsmere. Look more likely to score. Long from the goalkeeper. Yeah, there's a free kick there. Yeah. Can Hurstmere keep this out now? They look really, really confident. Can't recall a chance really, can you? Uh, uh, for St. Peter's Catholic in the second half really. Yeah, no, certainly not yeah. in the second period. They yeah. just had that one moment very early yeah, on, which, yeah. which was the, the own making really of the Hurstmere back line as well, yeah. but it's been very sparse, very sparsely populated opportunities to say the least. Oh, oh header on goal. 
well held. They've got to go for it now, though, St. Peter's. Yeah, there's another midfielder running from beyond as well. They could go take a gamble. They really do. Hunter, though, won't think about the corner flag yet. They want the goal to kill this game. Back out wide. Hunter went for goal alone, but it was always rising. How much stoppage time will we have? We think it could be a fairly long amount here added on. Seven minutes. Of added time, so there is still time plenty here time, for St. Yes, Peter's. Yeah, plenty of time. And so often you see, just give the players a boost as well when yeah, the, the announcement goes at the added time. Absolutely. Fitzpatrick all the way across and the header on as well, but the goalkeeper should get there. Goalkeeper there will eat away at a few more pressure seconds as the clock continues to tick down. And Smear continue to edge ever closer to that final whistle. And they'll want to keep the ball in the half of the field where they want it. And that's towards the St. Peter's goal and as far away from theirs as they can possibly keep it. Bishop. For the keeper. Get the urgency now. Need bodies forward. Really do. Well won though at the back there by yeah, Miles. Been really solid. There's me. I've been really, really solid at the back. Those on the Hersmere bench are watching on, waiting, anticipating. Long it goes from the goalkeeper. And we're out though and still the goal not troubled down that end in the second half. And we're on the break here. Yeah, there's a big overload as well. Latimore forward to Hunter. All the way across, it's collected as well. The cutback option is on. Will it be for them? No, good tackle. Let's take it away from Whitfield. Oh, 3v3 here. Oh, they'll quickly back. They'll get back in numbers. Really do, well done. There's still time if St. Peter's can just find something to ignite the engine. Loose ball that time from Kennedy. Now then in behind here, Hunter over oh, the goalkeeper, well. but it's well. wide. A chance to kill it there. And he knows it. Sutty on for Campbell. It's a defensive switch here made by boss Michael Dyers. They're just trying to shore things up a bit. Yeah, get a bit of time as well. Me now very nearly there. Battle on for it though, it goes back through to the goalkeeper, and the referee was satisfied. away by Robinson up to Hunter again and Hersmere again in search of the goal to oh. kill the game what 
How does the referee see that one? Fairly is the answer. Not particularly convincing, but then again, I don't think anything's going to be in the final couple of minutes. There's a foul that time. Yeah, he's done well. He's done well, too fair. Last big, last big push here now. One last big push for Hersmere to get over the line. St. Peter's have got to throw the kitchen sink at it. It's all or nothing time. If they want to force a penalty shootout. Out of play though, wasteful that time. They can't afford to be wasteful at this late stage. No foul. Just went to ground far too easily there, Breden. Goalkeeper had come for the hand, but it was taken away from him. I look at the work rate right there. Yeah, to a man, every single one of the Hurstmere players are working hard to see this one through. Just this stoppage time period, really. And St. Peter's have began to up things a little, but still without really getting into the attacking box. The attacking half, yes. The final third, no. Just hard to see it happening, but never impossible. It's a good tackle, though. Last ditch here now. Fitzpatrick has stayed down for the time being. Oh, made yeah, him back to his feet quickly yeah, though. The to get up. Yeah, yeah, to get, get up. up. Yeah, yeah. Kennedy with the throw in. It's flicked on. Last chance saloon. Oh. There is a chance oh. as well. What a goal! Well, did you see that coming? It's Josh Rothwell, the substitute with a screamer. And we're heading to penalties, Tony Daly. Yes, we did not see this at all. Did not see it at all. And the team with the momentum now. The probably only, only effort on goal in the second half. And what a strike it was. Absolute screamer to make it 1-1 what a goal it was keeper had no chance literally seconds to go the only chance of the half as well for St Peter's in pretty much the very last second of it surely the referee will blow the full time whistle now it's got to be said, Isaac, as well. They've had loads of chances out there in the second half. If you look at Hunt, he's had a couple of chances. The one should have lobbed the keeper, should have hit the target. Yeah, Hersmere will be really kicking themselves oh, that they haven't got doubt. over the line with the second goal. Yeah, without doubt. There's going to be a late change as well because St. Peter's wants to get a player oh, on for yeah, a substitution yeah, for a penalty. Yeah. Still, we're not finished yet. And it's the St. Peter's support now making all the noise. It's the captain, Callum Shaw, making his way back on. Another change I think they want to make as well. Referee just holding it, they do want to make this change. Jake Seddon also coming back on the striker for a spot kick as well. Well, it was penalties in the last game, Tony, and it looks as though it's going to be penalties here as well. Yeah, it's going definitely, well, I'll say definitely, I think the whistle will be blown at any stage now. 
Yeah, well, we're well over the seven minutes added on in actual yeah. fact now, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. There we go. There, the referee blows the whistle right on cue, so it is a penalty shootout. An unbelievable oh. ending. What a way to take it to penalties. Yeah. The substitute Rothwell with an absolute stunning strike. Yeah, it was a great strike as well. What a way to keep your, your team. It's nerved with a chance. It is. It really is. It really is. The other team on the ascendancy as well now. Could they just nick this game on penalties? Who has the nerve now? You can see the faces of Hurstmere score. They're absolutely gutted. They're going to forget that now. They really have to forget about that now and just get on to the penalties. Organise, get ready for it, get in the right frame of mind. That, that looked like the winning goal. Yeah, that looked like the winning goal. Yeah, for so long it looked like the winning goal. And as you said as well, they had the chances to make it to and really kill the game off. But it will be penalties after this moment for St. Peter's. One touch, sat up nicely and bang. It's worth another look again and again and again. What a great strike. Look from this angle here. Unstoppable. Well, they're the goals of normal time then. 1 1 the final score, and the penalty shootout is coming next. So here we go then, it's a penalty shootout to decide who will be crowned champions of the ESFA Under-15 PlayStation Schools Cup Final. It's going to be a horrible way for one of them to lose it, but a tremendous way to win it. St Peter's now with their tails up, having found that late, late equaliser as well. Persmere on the back foot, can they pick themselves up off the canvas? chance for the two goalkeepers Joe Draper or Woody Leach to make a name for themselves and make themselves a hero as well Hersley interestingly won the coin toss but will choose to go second two goalkeepers just being spoken to as well as the referee lays down the law mentioning I'm sure to stay on their line as the linesman will be there to keep an eye on that does mean that Louis Fitzpatrick here is going to be made to wait to take this first penalty. Well, we saw an unbelievable penalty shootout with late, late drama in the shootout in the last game. Wonder if we'll see similar here. There you go. Fitzpatrick into yeah, the corner. Good, good penalty. Good start. The perfect start for St. Peter's Catholic High School. And they've continued where they left off.
So can Hurstmere then here respond? It's George Bishop stepping up to the ball and it's saved! Bishop's spot kick kept out by Draper and it's advantage St Peter's. Keeper stayed big and strong there. Tried to treat it. Yeah, comfortable save. How how the things has a pendulum has swung the other way. <laughs> really has. Yeah, well, it, in the time of any time, it looked as though it was just going to be Hurstmere yeah. to get the job done. Now they find themselves behind in the penalty shootout. It's short, the skipper who good. scores. Oh, good one. And it's a pressure penalty now for Hurstmere again. Jacob Connor, the man to step forward here for Hurstmere penalty number two. Can Draper make it two saves from two? Connor steps up, sends the goalkeeper yes, the wrong way. Watch the goalkeeper go down as well, I think. Hassan will go next here for St. Peter's. Midfield player. It's Nick Hassan yes. right into that side netting. Yes, that side, they've all gone that side. All, all three hit the side netting. It's a perfect record so far for St. Peter's from the spot. With that confidence brimming across the squad. Lincoln Hunter, their top goal scorer, Hurstmere in the competition. Ten goals he scored en route to the final. Needs to find the net here. It's saved again, is it? Oh, oh. did that cross the line? It's a go. It's a goal. The referee says goal. Yeah, linesman saw it as well, to be fair. It's a fantastic effort though by the keeper. Fantastic. Well, just about for Lincoln Hunter. Managed to squeeze it in. Definitely over the line, the linesman was right there for it. Yeah. That's his job. Can St. Peter's here make it four from four? Yes, yeah. they can! Super great penalties, all of them. Really are. And now just one away. Calm again, Sam O'Neill, the converter of that one. Ronnie Sutty here for Hasmere. Sutty strokes okay. it away. Had to score and did. But now the opportunity then for St. Peter's. And it falls upon the shoulders of their number nine, Jake Seddon, back on specifically for this moment. He was the very last substitute reintroduced. If he scores, it's all over. Seddon, oh it's oh. saved, oh. and Hurstmere have a lifeline, wow wow wow, amazing, that's the pressure, amazing, keeper stood up, tried to roll it down the middle,
didn't hit the side netting as those who went before him had. But still here, Hersmeer must score. Hersmeer cannot fail, they must score and they do. Interesting. Robinson. Interesting. We go to sudden death. Jamie Breddon now for St. Peter's. It looked as though they were going to win it. Now we're into sudden death. Breddon right footed, yeah, tucks his away. Josh Woods now for Hurstmere. Again, the situation lies in his hands. And the fact is that Hurstmere have to find the net. It's saved and it's all over! St. Peter's have won it! Draper, the hero in the shootout, with yeah. two penalty saves! Great saves as well. Well done, St. Peter's Catholic. They've come back. No one gave them a prayer. The way they played the second half. Late, late drama. Well, it was a late smash and grab with the equaliser from Rothwell. And then Draper, the hero. Twice the hero. To keep out two penalty kicks. A big congratulations to St. Peter's. It finishes here and in just a moment they'll lift the trophy.
Well, trophy presentation time then. And time for her smear to really just reflect on what happened to them. Josh Rothwell, the hero with the equaliser. And Draper then with the two penalty stops. St. Peter's, their celebrations will continue. Time to find out here the winner of the player of the match vote. It's Sam Robinson from Hurstmere School. Not on the side of the scoreline that he wanted to be in the shootout. But Robinson was impressive from start to finish for Hurstmere. He's the recipient there of the player of the match award his individual trophy and the PlayStation vouchers as well for Hurstmere then it's going to have to be silver they were seconds away right at the death boat when Rothwell found the net in such spectacular style it all went wrong from there so difficult for them to then pick themselves back up for the shootout and the couple who saw their penalty saves will of course be more disappointed than the rest the job now is for manager Michael Dari just to lift his side back up emphasise what a good season it has been overall Ultimately, the, in the end, though, they couldn't complete the treble. Now feel that it was so disappointed because they were the better team for the large majority of the game. They had big chances to kill the game for 2-0 as well. But St. Peter's really gave it a good go at the end and they got their just rewards. Joe Draper going forward first there, the hero between the sticks Seddon of course who missed his penalty but it didn't matter in the end and I'm sure he will be very relieved about that Matt Seddon the manager as well following his players to collect his medal as those who have gone before him have. But the trophy then will be handed over and handed the way of St. Peter's Catholic High School. Somehow they managed to win it. And for a whole season now, they can call themselves champions, reigning champions of the under-15 PlayStation Schools Cup competition. The party can begin, the celebrations will continue long gone, I'm sure. Again, commiserations to Hurstmere. It just wasn't to be for them after that late equaliser. But a big, big congratulations again to St. Peter's. And it's St. Peter's Catholic High School who are here coronated.
So I'm here with Mr. Dye from Hurstmere School. I mean, no one likes to lose out on penalties like that. Football, hey? Uh, I think credit to them, well done. I think it was their first shot on target and they've scored a goal and we've, we've lost on penalties. But it's football, that's what happened. We didn't take our chances that we had, missed a few opportunities and, and good luck to them. So well done. Yeah, really well done. Congratulations. I mean, that first half, both sides kind of cancelling each other out. But as you said, making those chances in that second half just couldn't quite put the opposition away. Yeah, I think the boys have been a credit to us. They've been brilliant all season. Uh, it's really hard to speak after losing at such a late stage. Um, we're, we're thankful for the opportunity. Um, our head teacher, Mrs. Bennett, has been brilliant. She's let us stay overnight. We've done a, a trip down to Plymouth. And it just shows that PE and days like, like today are, are brilliant for our lads. We know they lost and we didn't get the win we deserved, but actually it was a, they were a credit to us and we're proud of them. And I think the positive thing to see here is the community, not only from the guys on the pitch, but in the stands as well. Everyone has been in this together. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an excellent school and it's one that we're really proud of. And the boys have all travelled down. We've got 100 boys from all year groups that have come. And, and these boys are uh, heroes to them. They'll, we'll look up to them and... It's just one of those things, and, and football's got the better of us today. Well, Mr. Dye, thank you for your time. But one more time, it's only right we're here from Hurstmere School! So I'm here with Mr. Seddon. I mean, it was one of those games where in that first half, cancelling each other out, and just when you thought the team was starting to run out of steam, pulling a goal out the bag like that. Uh, I think I've, I've not quite calmed down yet, but I'll, I'll do my best. You know, they don't make it easy for us. That, that just sums up every game this season. That's exactly how they played it. We've been up against it. Credit to, to Hurstmere. You know, they pushed us all the way. I think that was our second shot on target actually so well done to the lads there um, but the character that this team shows every game is unbelievable lads I'm extremely proud of you it's that determination all the way through you mentioned it every match leading up to this and even then the, the boys just didn't switch off no no they're not allowed to but you know they wouldn't do that anyway and it, it helps I, I couldn't go without saying what a massive support we've had out today parents throughout the competition in particular wow st peter's students today you've been a pleasure and a credit you've really helped us there guys well done i mean i was gonna say you had a support that i don't think stopped singing throughout the whole of that game they even were singing for you then mr said and i mean give us some final words after what has been an incredible game the words are now escaping me you know it's it's been this whole season I'm going to have to retire after this, I don't think my heart will take anymore, but, you know, it's been, it's been a massive enjoyment this season, and without the PlayStation Cup, you know, we've got, we're fortunate enough to have a couple of players, but we couldn't compete, it. maybe we will, maybe we will try the Elite Cup, but, you know, it's, it's amazing, we, the <laughs> you know what, Mr. Seddon, I'm going to go and let you celebrate with your team one more time, let's hear it, you guys have been incredible all game long, St. Peter's Catholic High School! Don't go anywhere, ladies and gents. Still plenty more games on the way here at the PlayStation Schools Cup 2023. On the way next, Formby High School and Kingsdale Foundation School. Don't go anywhere. We'll be next live on ESFA TV.
Welcome back then, or welcome along if you're joining us for this one specifically today. It is the penultimate match of the day, and here we have the ESFA Under-14 PlayStation Schools Cup Final for the B-teams. It's the national final here between Formby High School and Kingsdale Foundation School. Well, I'll run you through the two team lineups then, here starting with Formby. Charlie Nutty is the starting goalkeeper. The rest of their 11 then is made up of Michael Carragher, Samuel Johnson, Daniel Mortimer, George Campbell Myatt, Chris Hawkins, James Vernon, who captains the side, John Stanton, Liam Kirk, Max Parsons, and Cormac Wilson. As for Kingsdale, they have Felix Leon in goal. Max Welfare, the captain, is Nathaniel Fleming. And then they have Reggie Gonzalez and Kai Gabemri McLean, Jotham Rhodes, Micah Coward, Louis Games, Noah Munro, Hamilton Dawes, and Coyote Petakin. On the substitute bench for Formby, they have Harry Lofthouse, Alfie McNulty, Harry Moore, Corey Murray Caker, and Ashton Collins. As for Kingsdale, they have Lucian Lumsden, Ernie Summers, Cairo Onya, Elijah Benjamin, and Shad Juan Brian Gray. Well, the former boss is Joe Conchi. In charge of Kingsdale is Adam Pizzi. The referee is Jared Dobbing. His assistants are Ryan Middleton and Ian Copping. And the fourth official is George Burr. Looking forward to this one then, Tony. Hopefully, we'll have more drama as well. We've seen two <laughs> penalty shootouts back to back. And, well, let's see how this one goes. Who knows, we might have another. I'm exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you go back, we had the full excitement of a fantastic game prior to that with the went to penalties. And then we had a quiet game, didn't we, as such, uh, with that one. We had a drama at the end, of course, with the equalising goal. And then, you yeah, know, in the penalties. But, yes, come on, let's go Spring's on again now. What can we have here? It's been an exciting, exciting day. Some really, 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 really good games for different reasons. Let's go again. The action keeps on coming thick and fast for you here at the Hawthorns. It's going to be form beat then to get us underway in the green and black. And it's Kingsdale there in the red, white and black. Underway then, it's Formby here attacking the goal to the right to begin with. Two periods of 35 minutes here to bring to you. And if it is level, as we say, it will be straight to penalties. Vernon the skipper after that for Formby but it was taken away from him now Gonzalez the number four in the middle of the park there for Kingsdale long ball forward over the top it was met by Mortimer good challenge as well yeah really good challenge yeah I agree with that it's all, it's all over him. Free kick then after that. And it's in a good position as well, this. Yes, it is. Good range. Maybe for a first effort on goal and call the goalkeeper into action. He's desperately trying to get some players together to form a wall there, the goalkeeper.
Vernon, round the wall. Comfortable enough catch though for the goalkeeper, on target Mike. Good football. Trying to use the space in behind here. Kingsdale and it's Munro. Oh, good defending. Super defending there by Johnson. Stayed with his man. It's a nice early tackle for him to just settle down into the game. Swung into the penalty box and the header again there, that time from Campbell Mayat. Oh, lovely footwork from Gonzalez. Gonzalez has got round his man as well. In the end, ends up out behind. Yeah, good work by Gonzalez. Just overcook the cross. Come shot. But good play, good feet. Good start by Kingsdale. Plain sailing really for form being there. Semi-final, they won 8-1 against Sandback School. Might be away here. Down to the right, but it's good covering. There across came Rhodes. Mentioned form this semi-final result. As for King Z, it was a 5-2 win against Waden. Three-goal margin of victory. Coward. Back again here to Micah Coward. Coward oh. goes for goal. Certainly got enough whip on that one. Yeah, good strike. Good build up. Considered build up there by Kingsdale. Playing little triangles. Captain Fleming. Part of all the things at the moment in that midfield area, number 10 stroke, number 10 area. Forward over halfway now, Form B. Through the channel as well, good ball up to Kirk. Well defended though again. This time at the other end, it was the Kingsdale back line called into action. Vernon, Vernon, out oh, of his feet, what a goal! Good strike. Just five minutes played and James Vernon gets the early breakthrough. What a great strike that was. Took it out of his feet. Good 22 yards out. Whipped it over the goalkeeper. Some would say against the runner play because it's early doors as well. But a really good strike. Excellent goal, perfect weight on it to beat the goalkeeper. Brilliant strike from James Vernon. It's actually the grandson of Colin Harvey, played over 300 games for Everton. And he'll be pleased to see his grandson score a goal like that. Skipper leading by example as well because yeah, early on Kingsdale had started well. And he took that one moment.
foul and a free kick. Yeah, some good football being played, early doors. there from Hamilton Dawes ends up back with the goalkeeper Leon Stanton disrupted though in his progress by Gonzalez out now here to Carragher Carragher forward good deal look there decent effort Stanton spraying the ball around the moment here in that midfield area looking to get the ball out wide looking for those through balls trying to run the channel here Munro into the penalty area though and the goalkeeper on hand Balling behind there and he's got to it as well. Chance for number two maybe, it's Kirk. Just halted though, Kirk still trying to get the ball out of his feet and eventually Kingsdale were able to make the clearance. Yeah, he needs, didn't want to use his left foot there, I didn't think. Should have swung at it when the opportunity arose. Didn't shut out completely when he tried to check back onto his right. Doors back there for Kingsdale. He's got it as well and was fouled. Foul. Carrigan took charge of that situation. Plenty of bodies around him. Balls involved in it again. Referee has given the free kick. Ten minutes played. Formby High School on the correct side of the score sheet at the moment. Swung all the way around the goalkeeper, looked favourite for it. Spilt away from him, but danger is no more. Might be now, though, that's a loose ball to Coward. Coward blocked, though, well by Mortimer. Playing off this left flank, Micah Coward for Kingsdale. What we've seen of him so far. Out onto the opposite wing for Dawes. Emery McLean there sent it forward the number five for Kingsdale oh nice touch in there from Dawes nice to play love that good tackle as well there from Games cleared away there by John Stanton Petterkin only there though to Vernon 
the goal scorer for Formby. Second ball there drops down here favourably for Formby, but no foul. High ball forward to test the back line again. It's swept away by Carragher. Up to Stanton, who took it well on the turn. Out though now. From the high school, they were actually the side who went viral on social media when they scored a spectacular goal last season. Been hoping for more of the same here today. Vernon, but it wasn't collected by Parsons. Tried to run all the way through doors after it. Likewise, here Munro. Oh, well defended. They did well there, Very Hawkins. Good. I think it was. <laughs> Searching ball here in behind for Kirk to get on his bike after. Crowded out though. He's always outnumbered. Referee thought about blowing for that, but instead played the advantage. Just lost track of it for a moment there, Parsons, but he's got it comfortably now. Back to Johnson. Thompson there once more, but Passwood failed to find a teammate ultimately. Stanton now, again space for him to drive into. It's just been room for him in midfield. Carragher, no room for him though. Offside flag there goes up. Just as he was coming back from an offside position there, Munro. Yeah, he was off there. He was off. Just over the far side, there's an interesting battle there uh, going on. With Dawes and uh, um, Hawkins. In terms of play, there. Super little battle. Both very tenacious players for different reasons. Just keep an eye on that one. Yeah, over on that far right wing for Kingsdale, that is. Campbell Myers. Happy to just try to maintain possession at the moment here for me. Mortimer. Right on cue, they've given the ball away though. Stays in over on that far side with Parsons. Parsons though, couldn't find a route through that. Time pass, Petekin. Great tackle. Campbell Myers on the pie into the penalty area, but that's the goalkeeper's ball. Well, 
away with the burners on now here Coward Coward slips it through as well here for Munro if he can get run. there not yeah. quite what a good little ball there but Keith was brave again came out read the situation good counter attack there by Kingsdale Foundation Okay, well between the lines. Kingsdale. Wilson now. His first real drive forwards, but couldn't find the ball through there to Kirk. That's been an interesting watch so far, and the goal to go with that as well. Formby there, therefore will definitely be the happier side. Yeah, without doubt, scoring that early goal, really good goal as well. Other than that, it's been pretty equal. forward there down wide right taken by Max Welfare Dawes again after it tenacious little player on the far side Very composed back there. Kirk just went down there, the Formby top goal scorer, but I think just off the ball and the referee didn't see what happened. I think Kirk was suggesting that there might have been an arm used to push him over, but didn't see that myself. Stepping forward with it there was Gibembra McLean. <laughs> but a substitution here is going to happen. There's going to be a change here from the side who trail Ernie Summers is going to be introduced. It's going to be Dawes taken off, but a good first little stint on the field for him. Yeah, I like that those two there. Really at it they were. Like Hawkins out there as well. Good player. Strong in the tackle. Harry Moore is also going to be introduced here for Thornby with their first change as well. Parsons off. Well, that's loose. It's coming the ball away here to the substitute Summers. Just trickles along the ground, though. Good challenge in there from Fleming. Oh, 
Oh, Covid. Bembry McLean gets the throw in as well. Bembry McLean then taking the throw in. Having got it himself, good turn there from Coward. Did really well, and the advantage as well being played. Nothing coming off that advantage, those games. Then was dispossessed. His Good side pass. still do have it back. Munro here, wide right from his more central role. Into the penalty area, and the goalkeeper just backtracking, but it's simple in the end for him. Yeah, it'd be wasteful with that cross there as well. A little bit wasteful. Over the top, and there's a runner here in behind. It's the substitute more, but he wasn't able to make contact. Couldn't quite bring the ball under his spell, but he was the intended target for it. Carragher with the throw in short. It's foul, just a bit too over eager to get to the ball that time. Clipped in there from Vernon, good ball in as well. Goal scorer looking to turn provider. It's just that deft lofted ball in. Yeah, it's good, good ball in. Yeah, yeah. There's another Similar great ball. Again, and the oh. header drops just wide. What a good delivery. So unlucky there. Good header. What about the delivery though? Superb cross into the box. Right on the money for Harry Moore. Look at that for a ball. Yeah. Okay, oh, brilliant. Yeah, dug it out super well. What a great area that was. Just the far side of the post there. So unlucky. Over the top, the offside flag is raised. Just a little bit in behind. Too much there, Munro. Long and direct, and it might prove to be a way through as well. Substitute more again involved. Trying to get round on the far side of the defender. Some good battles out there. Fair. the throne over on the far side now Coyote Petekin is going to leave that one to be taken instead by his teammate on that far side it was Rhodes who took the throw in Twenty-six on the clock. What have you made of this one so far, then, Tony? Yeah, I've, I've enjoyed this game. To be honest with you, Form Formby playing some really good football. But I like the, the little triangles, uh, that uh, Kingsdale play as well. So very much in the game as well. It's a good game. Good battles on the football field as well. Tough tackling. In around there, not giving them spot time and space. So when they do make those little passes, those little triangles. It's because they're moving the ball really quickly, not because, not for the sake of it, they have to do it and they're doing it well, both teams. 
Well, Formby here have a chance to double their first half advantage if they can convert from this corner. Referee just wanting a word as well with a couple of players in there. Bit of holding going on in the six yard box. It's a crowded penalty area. Swung towards that near post. It will be cleared away now. At least far out at the edge of the box, but Petterkin will drive forward with it. Up to Munro. Trying to turn defence into attack quickly there, Kingsdale on the counter. Oh, good little turn there. Unlucky, good area. Don't think that need to get in the box there, that's the only thing. Do Kingsdale, when the ball's out wide, get an extra man in that box, still covering all, that, all areas. Bembra McLean. Kingsdale throwing. Again, got his head to it, but it only drops back there to Petterkin. Bembra McLean looking for the long diagonal ball. He's found it as well. Yeah, great knock. Really good. Good switcher play that as well. Great vision and then the yeah. execution to find the yeah, it was. ball as well there. Good touch. Yes, definite foul there. Good skills by Will Wilkin Wilson, sorry. Heading into the final five then of the half. Just that one moment of magic from James Vernon that separates the two teams at this stage. After it there more, and he's got there as well, and sliding in to make sure he kept hold of it. More delivers the wall there. Great determination. Yeah, it was. It was really good. Carragher then has gone across from right to left to swing this corner in. Referee calls for the corner to be taken. Carragher with the in swinger. Just dealt with that time, dealt with well enough. Coward. Still going on a mazy run through. Maybe just had his shirt pulled up but had took a heavy touch anyway. Monroe. Well dealt with again by Mortimer. Uh, Mortimer again, and that through ball. Yeah, Two up there for Formby. Yeah. yeah, that's good. That. Cross on the cover that time is Johnson. Forward down the line to Wilson. Wilson though has presented it only back, straight to Kingsdale. Fleming who had it, but 
and it was again an overturn of possession on the turn really well done Coward went for goal but from a long way out yeah a bit ambitious that one I think from that distance travel with you have a little travel with the ball you've got your pace there try and get beyond use the space behind get in around that penalty area see what happens then appeals for a foul but the referee disinterested in the claims Kirk quickly told to get back to his feet Petterkin forward over the top there and it's collected as well by Munro and still Munro but it was always rising this is a better spell now for Kingsdale yeah it is a lot better in some good positions just just needs the execution great turn inside couldn't keep the shot down good move composed at the back for Formby as they look to try to play out here from the back then the longer ball forward up to Kirk second ball was there for Wilson but free kick there given to Kingsdale see as well how much stoppage time we'll have at the end of this first mm. half so we can get first or second contact or yeah. both more defending to do here for Formby Formby though he get the first header to it on the follow up they do go to the second ball it was the skipper Fleming who couldn't keep his effort down and on target Yeah, but disappointed with that. And more time than he thought. Couldn't get over the ball. See what it bounces. He brings it down here now. More away, but only because he was offside. One minute added on at the end of this first half, then. Formby edging towards half time with this one goal lead intact forward long from Rose there's a few in behind there yeah, no, it was Mortimer. Good defending again. To the rescue again at the back there for Formby. Bember and McLean. And the charge up, trying to spark something, maybe taking it upon himself. Can he get the cross into the box? Trying to put it back, but nobody was there in red. Sprinting back as well now, but ultimately that's the end of the half. So far, so good then, Tony, for Formby. 1-0 up at half-time. Yes, and, and a deserved lead. To be fair, they've got comfortable in terms of that now. Got the good goal. Really good, really good strike there from Ver Vernon, the captain. But, you know, with both teams, as we did, we're going in when it was 1-0 half-time. Still in this game. Kingsdale. Got a good chance to come out second half. I would just like to see him, you know, get in the box a little bit more, especially when they get in those wide areas. Flood the box take a gamble there's a goal yeah brilliant strike wasn't it from Vernon and that's the moment that mattered in that first half
just the perfect way to beat the goalkeeper the captain leading by example and that was the goal for 1-0 and that's how we stand at half time then a couple more opportunities across the course of it as well as Kingsdale came back into things a little bit that was so unlucky there great ball into the box yeah it could have been two lovely delivery asking to be scored that one wasn't it yeah it was begging to be turned <laughs> yeah. in yeah. but ultimately then it's Formby ahead at half time but by just the one goal we'll have the second half coming up after the break I don't know if he's part, he's part of Forby. You want to be representing Forby. You come and join me, my man. You come and join me. Who is going to come and join us from Kingsdale Foundation School? I'm going to go for this guy right in front of me here. This one right here. You come and join me, sir. Come on to the pitch. Come on to the pitch and join me, right? All right, so we've got our two participants. We're going to play ourselves, as it's a lovely, lovely summer's day, a game of football bowls. First, I'm going to ask Rhiannon, my glorious assistant, to come and join me on the pitch from Swamp Physiotherapy. Say hi to Rhiannon, everybody. Hi, Rhiannon. Rhiannon is going to be standing in the centre of Hawthorne's pitch in the glorious sunshine. What I need both of our participants to do is get those balls as close as they can to Rhiannon. Whoever can get the closest wins the game. But let's meet our participants first, representing Formby High School. What's your name and where you come from? Formby! Formby, all right. What's your name where you come from, my man? Hector from Kingston! All right, from Kingsdale, let's go for Kingsdale first. So guys, you've got three attempts. You've got to get that ball as close to the center as you possibly can to Rhiannon. Feel free if you're here to that extra points. All right then, at the three. One, two, three, Kingsdale, let's go! Oh, oh, he's a bit of power, bit of power. Oh, that's gone way past Rhiannon. All right, for me, here we go. He's warming up. He's warming up. Oh, oh, that's not bad. Oh, no. Oh, all right, let's go back to Kingsdale. Kingsdale, let's see what you got. You are live on the ESFA socials as well, so we'll be documenting this terrible attempt forever and ever and ever. Guys, we've got to get to Rhiannon, not past her. All right, Formby, let's see what you got. Oh, oh, here we go. Here we go. Very nice indeed. Remember, you can knock the opposition's ball out of the way if you want to. Or you can aim for a Rhiannon. What are you going to go for? This is your final attempt. Kingsdale Foundation. Here we go. Oh, that's not bad though. Oh, it needs to slow down though. It needs to slow down. We let's go for <laughs> let's go for one attempt from Formby anyway. Can you get the bonus and get it right in front of Rhiannon? Oh, that's not bad. Oh, Rhiannon, that's not bad at all. That might be the closest we've had for some time. Ladies and gents, your winner of Football Bowls, Formby High School. Oh, guys, thanks for joining us. Very much appreciated. You can check that out on our socials at Schools Football. It's where you can vote for your player of the match 10 minutes before full time as well. Make sure to check it out. And also, anyone who can't be here, they can check out the SFA TV, our expert commentary team live for every little bit of the action here from the Hawthorns, the PlayStation Schools Cup 2023.
Well, here we are then, back live, back ready for the second half here of the final between Formby High School and Kingsdale Foundation School to decide who will get their hands on the trophy, the trophy for the under-14 PlayStation Schools Cup competition for the B teams. It's Formby High School here who are one goal to the good at half-time. James Vernon, their captain, with a brilliant goal in that first half. And that's the goal that splits the two teams. Let's have a look at it again. Brilliant strike. Yes, it was a great strike there. That's what separates the two teams. Got sneaky feeling there's going to be more goals though. Yeah, wouldn't be surprised. As we move into the second half, the second period of 35 minutes lies ahead of us. Both teams back out onto the field. We we'll just await the referee blowing his whistle, and then we will be back underway. Cairo Onya here is on at half time in place of Reggie Gonzalez for Kingsdale. Munro takes the kick off and we're back to the action again. Formby players, Formby manager and supporters would have all been very happy though Tony at half time. Yes they will be, they've played well, defended extremely well, they've been solid but to, you know they've got some really decent positions. Trying to use the pace to play the ball behind. Swung into the penalty area, it was collected though by the goalkeeper. Swung back into the danger decent, zone, again, the offside flag is up, yeah. it was a good ball in yeah. though. Yeah. Yeah, they do like that uh, delivery into the box, and, but what the good thing about it is they get players into the box. When that ball arrived, they know it's going to arrive. Tony's there's anything that Kingsdale can change in the second half to, to try to get back into it or just keep playing the way they were and the chances then will come yeah I think they played some good football but you know when they get that ball in those wide areas there's only one especially if, the, if it's the wide striker going out there and he's crossing the ball they've only got one person in the box they need to flood that box get at least another player in there and they're coming forward situation here, they have there the penalty yeah. area now plenty of options in there that time but yeah. none of them were found yeah that was disappointing Need to get a ball in that box, swing that left foot, try to get one to the right and it was cut out then. Substitutes, Cairo Onya has gone on to the left side. Off the pitch there for Kingsdale. Long ball over the top, Kirk after it. Back to the goalkeeper. Well defended. Yeah, they do like that little diag ball and play it really well. Fleming. Munro with the ball in that time, it's there for Petterkin, but yeah, couldn't bring it down. Yeah, just wasn't ball. able to control in the end. Yeah, you can notably, notably they are getting players into a box now, which is good. Fleming, the captain then here to take the corner. Formby have left two up. And three out of the penalty area, in fact. Late runner in there, but it doesn't pass the first defender. That near post area again. Summers. Driven in there all the way across. All the way through. 
set back, but there, right place was Vernon. Yeah, it's all Kingsdale at the moment now. Come out with a bit of positive no, which is good. Trying to get on level turns, early doors. Yeah, that's what they want, that's what they're in search of, that equaliser. It will take us back level on the scoreboard. Scored plenty of goals en route to the final, Kingsdale. 42 goals they've scored in the six games that have seen them reach finals day. Throwing his left for Rhodes. Lining up a bit of a longer one, perhaps. Munro with the ball in there. After it, there was Ernie Summers, who came on as a substitute for Kingsdale. Most of the play, though, in the second half in the form beat half of the pitch. Denver McLean trying to get the shot away there after his run forward again. Had a flurry forward like that in the first half as well. Down the wing it was in the first half. Here he is still. Denver McLean only along the ground though. It's picked up by the keeper. Yeah, good little one there, but can he get a little pass off, a little cross? Head was down, all determined to get a shot off the first time and the second time. So let's have a, have a little look up there. Can you pick a better pass to his teammates? Other than that, it was well played. Nice and positive. through early there and then was coming back wasn't a touch on the ball before it came his way never actually got to it in the end actually though Harry Moore a positive touch forward Kingstail bring it up over halfway again. Been given away then though. Vernon trying to switch the play and find more. Simply cut out. Nice control on the chest there, Munro. Onya. Fleming was on the turn, Munro back to Fleming again, just slightly too far ahead of him, didn't manage to get his toe to it. Couldn't then control the pass, so he would have been able to if the pass to him was better. That pass just bobbling as it went forward there, but there's no problem in the end. Forward from Onya. Vernon with a clip ball up. They look like a foul there, to be fair. Yeah, I thought so. The referee saw it otherwise. Liam Kerr. Challenge. Bramber McLean with a brilliant through ball pass there again. Is this the opportunity for the equaliser? Not that time. Really good defending there. Yeah. 
Moore down the left wing. Centre back has had to come across to cover. Back again for Moore. Well defended though. The offside decision. That's brought about the free kick rather than any foul in there. Just a little one two there. We're in an offside position. Good defender now. And either way, was a foul as well. Ben Brim McLean again on the ball and again going forward with it. He's been really positive when in possession. That's a good pass there, that's better. Two v two left on the halfway line at the moment as Mumro tries to provide the cross with that particular instance. He scored seven goals in one of the rounds. Munro in the 8 0 win over Shenfield High School in round four. Hasn't had that sort of success so far today, though. Yeah, he's been well marshalled. Signal for a foul from the linesman, and the referee obliges in giving the free kick. Corey Murray Caker. Here is coming on to replace Michael Carragher for Thornby. Let's see if that's a light for light change then as Carragher makes his way off. Again, another free kick, and this time in a really good area. It will surely be a shot on goal from there. Like a coward to be withdrawn, and it's Shad Juan Brian Gray. The player to come on. Four in the wall for Formby. And three players look interested in taking this one for Kingsdale. One of whom now Summers vacates the seat. It's also left by Fleming as well. Tried to go under the wall there, tried to be clever. Petakin. Just tried to catch the defence out. The wall stood firm there. Petekin now playing in a much more advanced role. He was playing the right-sided defender, really, in the first half. Up there in support of Noah Munro now. Rhodes again, the man to take the throw in longer forwards. Mortimer did well once more, though. Good, Good sliding challenge. challenge. Clean. Had be thought about an overlap there. Gabambri McLean instead it was direct into the penalty area, but nobody on the end of it. Yeah, perhaps could have travelled a little bit more as well. He won the two. Was the prior challenge and a good one? Nutty, the goalkeeper with the goal kick forwards. Still over twenty minutes left.
we will battle for it in the middle of the park and the captain there did really well Fleming uh, Gabenbury McLean again, it's just drilled along the ground though No foul, says the referee. Brian Gray, lucky to make an impact from the substitute bench. Oh, loose touch there that time from Akai Gembra McLean. Roach is caught by a training leg and he wasn't happy with that. Referee wasn't best pleased either. really not happy with that and the yellow card is going to be coming out there as well it's going to be the first caution of the game and it's going to go the way here of Nathaniel Fleming Formby then can get it forward from here. Good tackle. <laughs> referee not, not deemed so. Yeah, referee didn't yeah, think so. I yeah, thought yeah, he got I the ball so maybe Yeah, to be fair. Kingsdale are a school with a rich history in the PSFA competitions. Regularly compete in all of the district, county and national competitions. Their under 12 boys side won the PlayStation Schools competition last time around and their under 15 boys side also made it to the final as runners up. Petakit has lost his footing. Stay down and he's rolling around on the floor there, Petakin. Seems to be some concern for him from teammate Munro. Back to his feet now though. Referee stops it for the offside. Back on his feet, he's okay. games loose with the pass not what he intended Hawkins forward the referee brings it back for the foul Mortimer here on taking duty. Foul and another free kick in this last passage of play is just returning the control back to four mid. Yeah, very much so. 
he's in shooting range as well. Vernon seems to think so. Yeah, Vernon's lining it up. And after the goal he scored in the first half, well, you wouldn't bet against him maybe doing so again here from this free kick. It is Vernon, but low that time, got past the wall, but not the defender behind. On the counter attack now, Kingsdale. Fleming. Not for Munro, but did his job well there to substitute Mori Kaker. A corner. Another chance to get the ball in the box. As I said, need, need to win that, get that first contact, if not the first or second. Right over the goalkeeper, but it curls all the way out and behind in the end. See this situation's there. Need to take full advantage of those. Good opportunity to create havoc. Well, we saw a very late comeback equaliser in the last game prior to this before the penalty shootout, which then ended in dramatic fashion as well. For St. Peter's Catholic High School. I'm sure Kingsley won't want to leave it late. Formby already just taking their time over the taking of this goal kick. It's the final quarter of an hour of the 70. Mortimer trying to start that attack. One teammate though. Up to Mumro, but he wasn't able to keep hold of it. It's coming back down the other way. More though, likewise dispossessed. Won't be support doing all they can to. Urge their side on. Yeah, we need to. Uh, time ticking on. Hawkins away from the initial pressure Hawkins then cheeky lofting it forward yeah. yeah cheeky for Kirk mm. Touch a cramp yeah yeah it's regular current especially second in second half here yeah it's been the case across the the games that we've seen really on, on the big pitch out there for these young players. Still to come today, following the conclusion of this game, we'll have the under-15 small schools final between King James Academy Royston and Brookhouse College in action up next.
still down at the moment and that's provided the opportunity for the players to come across talk to their team managers and get the drinks on board as well this has come good here uh, for Kingsdale man you can have a word now last 10 minutes or so push what he wants tactic wise in terms of trying to get this goal back Kirk then to be replaced here through that touch of cramp and it's Max Parsons who's coming back on ready to resume Stanton good block took the full force there as Johnson came and did his duty exactly how was required still just that one moment early on that's the difference between the two teams it has been like that for a while now oh, the tackle could have gone beyond him On the kick. Yeah, they've had a few corners now in this second half, Kingsdale. Have another here. Let's see if they can get it past that near post area. Every corner has been direct into the box rather than a, a potential short option. It's going to be swung in there again doesn't get past the near post first man that time another man down yeah it's probably going to be an increasing occurrence as we move into the late stages now to his feet that time though it's uh, Jotham Rhodes centre back soldiering on all options there then felt it was best to go long direct from it from back to front but it's only coming back that time hope the ball they're in behind and the goalkeeper was always heavy favorite yeah, and it's a good starting position he had there as well yeah not the first time that Charlie Notti has come and done his job like that for a foul but no decision forthcoming it came back off the head there of Munro man still down for Formby but the game goes on at least for now it's stopped though let's get a little whack there into the late stages then of this national final yeah we can tell we can tell as well case of cramp 
players have put every bit hands of effort in their, in their performance and it's the consequence stoppage in play then here gives me the chance to point you in the direction of the ESFA Twitter page at Schools Football for the player of the match vote two nominations from either side Samuel Johnson and James Vernon are nominated from Formby High School and it's in Kai Gabemri McLean or Nathaniel Fleming from the Kingsdale camp so at Schools Football over on Twitter and the winner of that player of the match vote will be presented their trophy and also some PlayStation vouchers on the pitch in the trophy presentations once the final whistle blows referee urging the players back onto the field quicker than they were returning Some more changes here happening as well for Kingsdale. Hamilton Dawes is returning back to the field. And also coming back on Michael Coward, who was replaced in the second half. That pairing then of Coward and Dawes both returning. Manager will hope that that's an inspired double substitution. Fresher legs back out there they go in search of the equaliser both there drop back to Kingsdale number five Ibrembri McLean Formby here trying to counter ball down the right flank got there first though did Johnson back to the goalkeeper and the clearance was a good one good enough to get it away from the unrushing pressure now more after this down the other end and just rushed the effort though maybe saw the headlines yeah it did I think he saw the keeper slightly off his line as well but as he says it was a rushed effort and a difficult one It's the final minutes now then of the 70. Plus stoppage time of course. Change here with it's Michael Carragher coming back on to replace Cormac Woods. And Cormac Wilson, I beg your pardon. Michael Carragher back on though. another change at this point as well Elijah Benjamin coming on for Louis Games so change of piece as we head into the final two minutes plenty of stoppages though plenty of substitutions as well should all be added on in the injury time period Excellent feet, wasn't it? Trying to look his right first, really good feet. Doors. Good ball. Not on the follow-up pass though. Good 
He missed it last game. It was very, very late drama in the final prior to this for St. Peter's Catholic High School. It didn't look likely that they were going to find an equaliser, but they did in splendid style as well. In the final seconds, really. Yeah, it was literally the last kick of the game, wasn't it? You got that. Yeah, that might just give some hope to those yeah. watching on at home, trying to cheer on their Kingsdale side from afar. To Formby, they will be just keeping an eye on the clock now. Six minutes. There's the stoppage time period. At least six minutes. Alilon here. There's still time. The flag's up. Yeah, a bit careless there. If we know that wide area, you should be able to see along that line. Very, very, should be offside. If he's central, it's slightly, slightly different. You're taking a gamble in the wide areas. You can see the ball coming along. You can see the line. McNulty here to be thrown into the action. Those fresh legs at a very important juncture. Stanton has done his job well. Lucian Lumsden also on. Chatwan Brian Gray has been withdrawn. Already though with those substitutions we've eaten into 90 seconds thereabouts of the stoppage time. to move the throw in short but it's an unforced error as mm. the throw in's overturned yeah, don't need that now it's the worst time for something like that still Formby will feel it's on a knife edge throw in is once again overturned it's been Turn the one way, then back the other. I've seemingly gained about 10 yards whilst it has. Being moved back there now, the Ben Brimmer claim, but they really need to get the ball forward quickly. Yeah, they do. They do. Got the feel. No time for messing around. Look like at Ben McLean's head that time. The bounce just evaded him. Well fair. Heading over halfway. Crucial interception. Still work for Formby to do. It was later than this than the, that the equaliser came in our previous final. Will history here at the Hawthorns repeat itself? In fact, the two previous games, both of them have gone to penalties. Where he's given a, a free kick there for a push in the back and that just relieves the pressure on the Formby defence. I love that decision.
long over the top in chase of it is Parsons but it's Gabemba McLean's ball good tackle good challenge now then they're coming forward and with bodies as well in the attack oh, the slip through lock for Munro really well covered yeah. And the decision goes the way of Formby with another free kick. Final minute of the six, which we're indicating now. Are they even going to be able to create an opportunity? Usually it's just one chance, but it looks unlikely now with the very little time that's left. Formby may be in the backs of their heads now, feel as though they're there. It's been 1-0, they've led for such a long time. being allowed to continue despite yeah. the fact there was a form we played down yeah, there. Fouled there last opportunity here now yeah it feels that way doesn't it looks as though there's going to be one last chance to load the box and is the goalkeeper going to be sent forward the goalkeeper's making his way up Leon is in the attacking penalty area Still Formby have left a man up on the halfway line. That's actually pulled two Kingsdale players yeah, back. The goalkeeper's up. Yeah, very clever. Kirk's back on. and Well, they were leaving a man up, but it looks like Kirk is going to go back and defend yeah, you don't there. need two back there now, Quan. So one, one, other, one other player can go forward. He's a go edge of the box. Go on, edge of the box. Yeah, being urged on there, weren't they, from the technical area as well. And Dawes is making his way forward just off the picture as well now. Everybody either in or around that 18-yard box. Look at the six-yard box. Wow. It's all about the delivery. It's hardly even any room to get the ball in, is there? Kirk then being urged out of the penalty area. It's a game of chess in there. Yeah, it is. Here's the delivery right. Swung in there and it's onto the roof of the net. And much to the delight as well of the Formby support and surely now that will be that. Yeah, just needed it, needed to keep it there. Didn't need to shoot, just get it in that area and amongst it. Right in front of the goalkeeper, unfortunately overcooked it. That could be the last chance, I think. Yeah, I think that was last chance saloon. All eyes on the referee for when this goal kick is taken. Surely all Nutty needs to do is clear it long. Long he sends it and the referee blows the full time whistle. For the high school to crown the champions. For the ESFA under 14 PlayStation Schools Cup competition for the B teams. And it was James Vernon the skipper. With an absolutely stunning strike. That's the difference between the teams as it finishes. Stick around, we've got the trophy presentations on the way. We're also hoping to hear as well from both team managers. We have David Waldridge down there on the pitch. He will be the announcer as well for the presentations.
Once we take a look back again at the highlights, the important moments, that was the goal. Just that one late ball into the box for Kingsdale, wasn't it really after that? They didn't really create too much in the second half, in fairness, and form beat. Well, they held, hand, they held strong, I should say, with their defence. And at the end, when they were all back there, it was almost like they were all holding hands to defend their goal doggedly. 1-0 the final score. Formby's party can begin. Trophy presentations are coming up next. Well, time then for the presentations and Tony Daly, the former Aston Villa legend and England international winger who has been on commentary with me to take you through all of the games today and will be for all of the remaining games as well has headed down there onto the pitch to make these presentations alongside a member of the ESFA committee. Match officials there came forward to take their medals and now let's find the winner find out the winner of the player of the match and it goes to the goal scorer the match winner and the player of the match as well winner of that player of the match poll James Vernon the captain he comes forward here for his prize the PlayStation vouchers to go alongside the little trophy but it's the big trophy that he's going to lift in a minute as captain of the side as well Silver medalist, Kingsdale Foundation School, not the result that they came for, but it's ultimately what they're going to have to go away with. It's commiserations really, but it still should be congratulations for reaching finals day here at the Hawthorns. Such a lot of hard work I'm sure has gone into the season, as is the case I've been saying for all of the runners up sides. But it really is an achievement to reach finals. Yes, they've fallen short at the final hurdle, just couldn't quite break down that Formby defence in the end. We'll hear what their manager, Adam Pizzi, had to say about it as well. Thought about things in just a few minutes' time when he speaks to David Waldridge. But for Formby High School, then it's the other side of the coin, and it's the way better side of the coin as well. just as the two teams for our next game come out to do their pre-match warm-ups as well do stick around for the final game that's coming up next but before that here the trophy will be handed over to Formby High School Every player coming forward to take their medals. And also the manager as well, Joe Conchi. What a superb ending to their PlayStation Schools Cup campaign. 
What a superb campaign overall. Very well deserved victors here today. And what was a wonderful day for it as well. With the sun shining here. The home of West Bromwich Albion. Memories to cherish. And this moment will be as well as the trophy is lifted. The boys B teams under 14s. PlayStation Schools Cup champions of Formby High School. As the skipper lifts the trophy. And it's that man Vernon. Let the party begin for Formby then. Again, commiserations to Kingsdale. Ultimately, just that one moment of magic. And that was the difference between the two sides out there today. Stick around and we'll hand down to David Waldrich once he's ready with the two team managers. So I'm here with coach Adam. It wasn't meant to be, but your team did not give in. No, they didn't. They've been uh, battlers all year uh, throughout the whole competition. Uh, firstly, also uh, congratulations to Formby on their win. Um, I think personally we were the better team on the day and it was just a shame that uh, we couldn't get the, the goal to equalise and maybe even a winner afterwards. And that's when Kingsdale created the chances, it just wasn't meant to be. You must be so proud of what the effort that was shown on the pitch. Yeah, oh, absolutely, the effort that the whole team put in throughout was absolutely brilliant. Um, we can't fault any of them, they were all absolutely brilliant, put 100% in and yeah, we're just dead proud of them for getting to the final. It's a shame we couldn't bring the trophy home. Absolutely an incredible achievement to even be here at the Hawthorns. Well done to your team and well done to your fans as well. Co Coach Adam, any final words for us? Uh, just thank you to everyone that came and supported us. Thank you to everyone at home that's watching. And uh, yeah, top work. Well done, everyone. Great work. One more time, let's hear it for Kingsdale Foundation School. So I'm, here. so I'm here with the team manager from Formby High School. You guys went viral last year for that goal you scored and uh, I think you might go viral again this year. Do you know what? It was a similar goal to be fair. Uh, it was the last one that we scored last season but i um, been telling the lads all week, you know, get your shots off and, you know, prove today. And that was it. You got the free kick early on. You took full advantage. Did that add somewhat of a pressure for the rest of the game? Yeah, because we scored, we scored quite early which meant that we had to hold on to the game which was... To be fair, the lads defended excellently, you know, I can't fault them, but um, yeah, it did add a little bit of pressure in the end, yeah. They worked really hard to stay ahead and get their foot on the game and uh, managed to see out the full minutes. Yeah, I mean, credit to Kingsdale, you know, they were excellent side, um, you know, got a good history in the competition, so we knew we'd be up against it as well today. And to be, when they had that chance at the end, my heart was in my mouth, but um, 
our lads dug deep, you know, can't fault them, absolutely made up with them. Yeah, absolutely, you must be so proud of the guys on the pitch, but also proud of the guys and girls in the stand as well, some of the best fans we've seen here so far at the PlayStation Schools Cup. They were definitely your 12-foot athlete on the pitch, but in the stands for this one. Yeah, you know, they always come with it. We always bring a good following to these um, types of events, so... It's good at the school that they've allowed the, the, the year group to come and then the other, the other football teams as well. So, yeah, thanks for that. Well, Coach, I'll let you go and celebrate with your side one more time. Let's hear it for 4B High School. And a big thank to you for joining us on ESFA TV. But don't go anywhere because we still have one more game for you today right here on day three of the PlayStation Schools Cup.
Welcome along then to the home of West Bromwich Albion and this week the home of the PlayStation Schools Cup Finals. It is our final final today before the final day of finals day tomorrow. Here it is the ESFA under 15 PlayStation Small Schools Cup National Final. It is King James Academy Royston up against Brookhouse College and let's take a look at the two team lineups. So then for King James Academy Royston they have Corey Howe between the six as their starting goalkeeper. The rest of their starting side is then there. Charlie Woods, Sujaveen Safis, Hugh Maslin, Harry Ogilav who is the captain as well of the side. James Loden, Rashan Cross, Toby Pendrick, Jake Emmett, Alfie Smith and James Corthy. As for Brookhouse College, led by boss Leandro Brown, their goalkeeper is Mark Shuker, and the outfield contingent, Nayan Grant, Anai Chada, the skipper, Pop Park and Sackle, Samuel Kuchik, Dylan Bailey, Maddox Zadon Jones, Cherry Smith, Zachary Wahom, Fawaz Omidokin, and Chikanayu Ogwamba on the substitute bench for King James then. We have Benny Newman, Tyler Fake, Lenny Murray, Corey Miller and Zeki Wellington. As for Brookhouse College, Zenai William Savory, Jaden Smer Smerling, Marco Michael, Kenneth Ray and Velen Dimitrov. Well, Tony, we've seen plenty of goals, plenty of entertaining action and two penalty shootouts already today. Who knows what's going to come in this final? Yes, I'm hoping for another entertaining game. Some, uh, some uh, fluid football, entertaining for the fans as well. Hopefully plenty of goals. Hopefully it will be an entertaining contest as the two captains there in the centre circle. Harry Ogilvy and Anai Chadet. The captains there for King James Academy and Brookhouse College. Two periods of 40 minutes for this one. Brookhouse College regularly competing in the small schools finals and have also actually reached some of the national finals of the main competitions as well. Games that have been played at Stoke City as well as here in the PlayStation Cup at West Bromwich Albion. Change of ends there, Tony, before this yeah, one gets underway. Yeah, interesting. I don't know if you can do anything to do with the sun or anything like that coming down. Yeah, it'd be interesting why they've swapped, why they've swapped ends. Yeah, well, it was Brookhouse College who switched the sides and it's going to be King James Academy Royston to get underway then. Referee just checking that both goalkeepers are ready. They are and we can begin. For the final final today. And for the final time this game is underway. It's King James Academy Royston attacking the goal to the right. Agwamba immediately trying to take it upon himself to drive with the ball towards the penalty area. ball forward here for Cross to get after well dealt with though by Nyan Grant fast and furious to start off with
Grant forward there for Brockhouse. It's back into the centre now with Smith. Smith trying to find that wide right flank where Zyden Jones was waiting. Looks like Brookhouse are playing three up top, two wide men, one down the middle. Wouldn't be surprised if they interchange quite a bit. King James Academy, they won 5-2 against Leaf Studio, who we saw competing in one of the other finals earlier today in their semi-final. As for Brookhouse College, it was a 3-1 win against Moreland School in their final four encounter. Good touch, good effort as well. It? Well, certainly struck the ball. With conviction behind it, but yeah. just off target in the end, but good connection. Yeah, decent strike. Off target. Though. Hit that with real venom. in there down the line it's headed out as King James make some ground Referee trying to play the advantage, but there wasn't really an advantage there in the end. It was a late challenge. Definite foul. Emmett, the man who was taken to ground. Yeah, just completed his time that tackle there as well. I'll give him the benefit. It was a genuine attempt for the balls. It was late. Yeah, just a talking to there as well for yeah. Grant. Escaped without further... Punishment in where you look hard though. Was late, was late. Delivery there sent in. Oh, good header. By the skipper, good header out, wasn't it? Good head to it there as well, Hugh Maslin. Playing in the heart of defence for King James. ball was there being called for but it's not needed in the end thrown forward down that far flank Emmett did well there to just rob his opposing player of possession but didn't have it for long as he was then pickpocketed as well Kutchik crowded out, but this side do keep the ball. Madoken goes back to Pakun Sackle. Back again here to Pop Park and Sackle. Comfortable possession at the moment for Brookhouse. Kutchik there, very comfortable on the ball. 
Oh, some decent I'm falling ball behind, through. yeah. You yeah, can see the, see the idea of that absolutely, very nearly yeah. came off. Yeah, absolutely. Created space. Good one by we're home then. Park and Sackle. Clips that one forward. Having played the prior ball as well. Wombat gets the throw in. Into the penalty area. Dealt with now though as it's cleared away. Long in search of Jake Emmett. Coach Chich. Has it there though? Chanda will play oh, forward as well yeah. on the turn. That's great from Zayden Jones. He was unlucky there. A little touch on it. Great little turn, little spin. Thirty-nine goals in six games en route to the final for Brookhouse College. Into the penalty area Ooh. there, and it spilt into the net. What a strike, though. <laughs> keeper should have had that, but it was the pure force there of that strike goal, from Omidokun. What a good goal that was. Omidokun with the early breakthrough for Brookhouse. Then goalkeeper Howe will be disappointed that he didn't keep it out, but there was certainly venom behind it. Little spin, cuts inside, boom. Yeah, keeper was disappointed, but it was hit with a lot of venom, that. Great strike. Cuts inside. Yeah, he should have had it, should have had it, yep. Yeah, Ramadoka. It's a pure power. how it went in, though, will yeah. he? Oh, he won't mind at all. Hit with some power, that was. Here he is again, the goal scorer back there. And Brookhouse get the ball on the deck again then the switch of play really good pick out look at that that was pinpoint yeah beautiful ball Parkin with the ball again. in behind class. is it two it is that is pure class that is some goal absolute quality and Brookhouse have doubled their lead it's again for our Zomidokan Two and two minutes for Omidokan. The way he brought that down. What a fantastic ball. Super ball. And a fantastic finish. Super touch. It was all about this touch there. Had to be pinpoint and it was. Killed it dead. And it was it, they did the easier part. Super start here there by Brookhouse. Can they respond here? King James. Looking to hit back straight away, but it's through to the goalkeeper. Shuka. Yet to score in the competition this season, would you believe, Omidokan? But his two goals have come at the best time possible. Zayden Jones. That'll be a corner. Let's have a look at that last goal again then. Well past that was. What a great touch as well. Super goal, super goal. One hand in the air was the signal from it. It was taken then short to Zion Jones and, and on the follow-up it was always going to end about and behind. But Brookhouse College then comfortable here in these opening 11 minutes and two goals to the good. Both of them scored by Fawaz Omidokan.
good header. Strong header back. Grant. Forward down the left. Grant with the ball hung up high as well, but just too much on that one. Yeah. Yep. It was. It's ripped in. Goal kick here is going to be left to the defender by the looks of things, or goalkeeper's taking it, just tapped it short in the end so they can bring it forwards. Back to Shuka, yet to be tested. Move any efforts on his goal. Yeah, even the defenders very comfortable on the ball. Long forward down the left flank again. What a pass that is. The range of passing from these two centre halves is phenomenal. So what will happen if, if King James do not press the back two stroke three that's what's going to happen they're going to be able to pick a pass because they've got willing, willing runners who make those run the channels and they can hit the ball with quality because they're not being pressurised so they're going to have problems all afternoon if they don't do that Hung up high towards the back stick there it was curling delivery into the danger box Emmett Touch trick though here now for Brookhouse. And back again to the goalkeeper Shuka. Okay, he's done it again, good cheek. Long over the top, nicely taken he's down as well. Down. Sold the defender, surely. Oh, Somehow they managed to keep it out. Yeah, We're yeah. home very close to number three. Yeah, I don't know if he said one extra touch too much there. Is it un unbelievable touch but the passing we're talking about that passing through here here it is takes him inside super stuff what's happened there's a physical he got to oh good tackle excellent recovery time that one to perfection and had to inside the penalty yes, area as did, well you did yes great challenge go on sir oh, great pace down that left wing but it's then swept back to the goalkeeper Bit of a heavy touch, but was able to get it clear. First little sign of a potential breakaway counter there, though, for King James that we haven't before seen from them. Here forward goes Maddox Soden Jones, but no longer. Just opening up a little. one back oh look at that oh into the penalty area as well Aguamba. oh dear dear oh dear dear oh dear that's worth the admission fee full stop <laughs> <laughs> I mean look at it again yeah, excellent it really is Enjoying themselves out there now as well, Brookhouse College. Two goals to the good.
cross into the box again. It was taken on the chest and then Ooh, goal yeah, bound. Yeah. It was dropping. Yeah, just didn't effort. quite drop on target, yeah. but it was a decent try. Yeah, it was. Good effort. Brookhouse well on top here, playing some really good football. Yeah, it's been one-way traffic, hasn't it, in these 17 minutes so far. Touch. Cross, forward there. In search of Alfie Smith. Not to be confused with his namesake in the opposite 11, Cheeto Smith. Chikanayo Ogwumba was after that one again for Brookhouse. Just ran through to the goalkeeper there. Long out of his hands. Zayden Jones. Zayden Jones trying to slide that one through unselfishly, but didn't quite work out for him in the end. Yeah, play some lovely football to do. Very technical on the ball. This Brookhouse College team. Forward there from Hume, who, uh, from Sujaveen, Southeast, I beg your pardon. King James got to get him out of this game now in this situation here. They need to push on. I know they're, they're worried about their passing, but they, if he can pick a pass from here, he will do. You have to close them down, otherwise they're going to just pick passes. You're going to have to be a bit higher on the press. Brookhouse still continuing to probe, and they get the corner on that occasion. Nearly midway through this first half. Both the goals have been scored by the Brookhouse number 10 for Waz Amadokan. Short option there is utilised. We're home. Turns as well and no pressure from the defender. It's Zayden Jones and oh, Stella was oh. against the bar and back to <laughs> Zayden Jones. How has that stayed out? It was twice against the woodwork. Wow. And somehow King James survived. That's better. That's good play. Well done, Bay Emmett. There, he needs what he needs to do. He needs to work that hard. What? That's fantastic play there. Well worked corner. Well, screaming goal hits the crossbar. Comes back out, crossbar again. <laughs> How it stayed out, I do not know. Yeah, the crossbar to the rescue there for King James Academy Royston. The woodwork to thank for the fact that it's still only two. Gwomba advancing down in those wide areas again. Leandro Brown in charge of Brookhouse will be absolutely delighted with what he's seen from his side so far in these opening 21 minutes. Yeah, they are a fantastic team, playing some really good football, they've got them well drilled, very talented. 11 here. Yeah, coaches Callum Burston and Thomas Owashilik alongside him in the technical area as well today. Delivery that was meant that time. 
pulled out of the penalty area in the end. Again, it was Rashawn Cross there trying to make inroads into the Brookhouse defence. Seems to be a bit of an outlet for King James, but he hasn't had too much of yeah. the ball when, when they've tried to break forwards. Yeah, he's, he's lightning quick, but Teddy Smith there matched him. Stride for stride. Cross with the ball back that time. Back to the goalkeeper and under pressure there. Oh, oh, it's a loose one as well. It's presented the chance oh, and the goalkeeper makes the save. Big chance. Big chance. Well, it was Alfie a loose Smith, pass across yeah. on a plate for Alfie Smith. Yeah. yeah. Took Massive it on first chance. time. Mm. Error there. Let's hope we don't rue that one. Yeah, well, had that found the net, then they would have now had their tails oh. up. Look at that. From Zayden Jones. Yeah. Super feet. Good defending as well, though. Zayden Jones still. I'm getting dizzy myself here. <laughs> Honestly, superb skills. Forward now into the box, <laughs> all the way across. How was it? It turned home. It's still there, though, in the penalty area, and the block there was made by the captain, Ogilev. Great ball across. Should have finished that one. Well, they've definitely had chances for a third, but look at that. Oh, look, that's absolutely superb feet. Yep, let's do it again. Super stuff. That's to shoot there, but it was across as it comes back out as well. But then the follow up effort. Now we're going to drop on target that time. man down in the King James Cavalry opportunity for King James to regroup have a look at the coach it's been a tough first half for them referee calling both sets of players back on King to resume the game referee Jack Backcock Goalkeeper touch there again brought the, the pressure from Cross, but it's dealt with much more simply in the aftermath than the previous time when it then was presented back to Alfred Smith for that glorious chance that he couldn't take. So the pressing the, the press ball a lot better now. Our King James. Not allowing any freebies from that back where they can pick a pass with really runners up front. But much more difficult when your head's down to pick that pass. Back to the two number eights in there in the middle of the park, Toby Pendrick and Cheddy Smith for Brookhouse. Bypasses Smith that time as Brookhouse man was allowed to advance. Grant with the quick throw into Park and Sackle. Swung into the mixer. Mkwamba. That's right. Okay. 
header on from Bailey falls though there for Smith trying to unleash Emmett in behind but good starting position for the goalkeeper which was an important yeah. factor in that absolutely strip that up to get onto the end of that and it's just wide in Ooh. the end referee says corner cross it was with the chance big chance again yeah. that's two yeah. big chances that's that King right. James have had yeah. now absolutely absolutely it's a good save in the end yeah, goalkeeper deserving of the credit for it Cross latched onto the end of the loose ball really with his pace to get there he's going to take the resultant corner now Smith's gone short but Chad has gone out with him was allowed to bounce drops for Emmett On the oh, turn there to number nine, Emmett. Now here, cross. Into the hands of the goalkeeper that time. Yeah, that's better there from King James. Turn them in. It's a good play, well done. And it's a resultant, really, from them pressing the ball bet much better. High up the field. Zyden Jones, tenacious as ever getting to that Park and Sarkle with the ball out wide right here now for Chad swung in as well first time goalkeeper opts to try to parry away and did so see King James working a lot harder in and around the players the Brookhouse uh, players as a result looser passes because they haven't got that much time now that's what they need to do it's hard work but it needs to be done Tyler of fake here is on for Alfie Smith in the first of what I'm sure will be many Regular substitutions, change made by Glendon Crook, the boss in charge of King James. Chad has thrown. Infield there as well here for Brookhouse and collected. Smith with a strong challenge and the referee thought it to be too strong. No complaints from him either. with the ball all that time here for Zayden Jones Zayden Jones still with it at his feet danger man over on that wing as so many of the Brookhouse players are danger men in their 
11 here out on the field at the moment. Clearance was more up than forward over the halfway line though, didn't reach that mark. Brilliant again from Agwamba into the penalty yeah, box. Yeah, Told to get back to his feet there. Yeah, yeah good, good challenge. Defender, yeah. Good defender. Cross trying to get the birds on again. Up against Chadder once more in that individual battle over on the far side. That is a good battle out there. Just cut inside. No, just followed his line. Well done. Well defended. It's good defending. Direct throw there into the penalty area. It could be problematic as well at the back there for Brookhouse. Runs all the way through across here to this near side. Delivery was sent back in by the substitute fake. Oh. And on the follow-up, oh, it's just a whisker wide. Not far off target at all. Super effort there. What a good effort. Just take one of these chances. They're still in it. Still in this game. Had a really good last 10, 10 minutes or so. So close to pulling one back there, Corthy. Great touch. Really good volley. Fake again, trying to go direct down the wing. Didn't happen for him on that occasion, though. Trying to make an impact though from the substitute bench in his recent introduction. Involved in that prior move as well. He's been presented the ball back there, gifted it back to his feet. Breaks there for cross. Twisting inside the penalty area. The decision is skull kick. King James player certainly felt that it should have been a corner. Forward up to the man on the hat trick, Armid Oaken. He's bursting away again. A couple of options in the centre and another arriving there as well. All the Ooh. way across and the header is just wide from Wahom. Again another chance for the third. Yeah, it was a big chance. Again, hit the target from there. Again, a great cross. Great work from Armid Oaken. Yeah, free header. Needs to hit the target, he really does. I've played down here at the moment, and it's probably the man who's looked the most lively for King James, Rashawn Cross. the stoppage in play then but let's have a look at the goals boom rocket of a shot keeper would be a little disappointed with that but it's a pure pace of the shot that done him yeah cuts inside Some balls moving all over the place what a pass this is here some pass oh, look at this touch exquisite brings it down thank you very much what a great two great goals he scored there
Yeah, a reminder then, this is the final game of the day here at the Hawthorns in the PlayStation Cup National Finals. Still five more games to bring to you tomorrow, though. We'll be back live here at the home of West Bromwich Albion on ESFA TV with live and exclusive coverage across all of those five games tomorrow. Gwamba. Well recovered. Back to the corner. Good enough to halt the progression of Chico Gwamba that time. All the way to the back stick. It was a really inviting delivery. Begging to be turned in there. Some delivery again that well attacked. And again, brilliant defending, really was. A couple of the substitutes out from either side warming up on the near side as well as this corner is being prepared and it's a good ball in the goalkeeper managed to put enough on that to turn it away though oh brilliant touch there with the sole of the foot to take it away it's going to be another corner I tell you what oh, that's such great skills he's got there faces man drags it round Unbelievable touch there, sole the foot. Can't tell you what a, such a difficult skill that is to do and doing it at pace as well. Header away that time. Tyden Jones there though for Brookhouse. Emmett. Looking to try to burst away on the counter and there's a player arriving well in, as well in the centre. It's Thake if they can find him. Well it's intended for Thake, but yeah, well defended. Superb build there. Fantastic one by Wahum. So apologies, Emmett. King James here would love to get one back before half time. Could Corner be at the nice. other end. Would be there really at the back post where Head the ball up. ended up. Got it well. The indication of injury time at the end of the first half is two minutes. Smith out wide here for Ogwamba. Ogwamba with a curler, the goalkeeper holds on to that one. Would have been disappointed with the one that he let in to begin with, how but been tested since then as well might be tested here as well it's just a, a roll along the ground and it goes wide anyway in the end yeah just uh, disappointed with that as well it would be but in general second half of this first half King James have had a lot lot better created two three chances themselves good chances could have been back in this game Grant Goalkeeper was coming for that one, but it was taken out of his hands, really, by Hugh Maslin. Yeah, did, did the right decision in the end. And they took charge of the situation.
Oh, on the turn there. I'm a Dokum. I'm a Dokum still. Good stop. Good save, good save. Didn't quite get hold of it. But it was sneaking in that corner thing. There. You're on his left peg there, I'm a Dokum. Play the two minutes that we're added on. There is still time here for this corner to close out the first half. Taken short there into the feet of we're home. Back out to the corner taker. To the back stick. And the referee bows up for half time. So, so far so good then for Brookhouse College at the midway point and it was Fouaz Omidokan at the heart of it all, Tony, with two goals. Yes, and he's been had an amazing game, two really good goals, plus he's, he's running things in that midfield area, breaking into the box, time running with it, very good team, this Brookhouse, wonderful to watch. I mean, the first 20 minutes when, when um, King James stood off them. But once put the pressure on and made it a lot more difficult, but still playing well. King James got a lot of hard work to get back in this game. Yeah, I'm out to decline really for King James in this second period. Brookhouse College, if there was an element of fortune about their first goal, well, it was a brilliant finish for the second. Finish. It's that first look at his first touch. Absolutely killed it dead. Unbelievable touch. What a pass. It's going further from the pass there. What a superb through ball that was. That's how he's down then at half time. The brace from Fawaz Omidokan. And that means that at the midway point of the final game today, it's King James Nil, Brookhouse College 2.
For the final time today then, welcome back to the action from the Hawthorns. It is so far so good out the midway point here for Brookhouse College. Two goals to the good, both of them scored by their number 10, Fawaz Omidoken, in the final of the ESFA Under-15 PlayStation Small Schools Cup competition. And I think the message from their manager, Leandro Brown, Tony Daly, will probably be more of the same, please, in that second half. Yeah, without doubt, the place of a fantastic football really looking forward to if they can continue that in the second half but also as well now can go get back into this King James Academy okay they have to play with that high press again they really have to close them down because even at the two cent halves they can they can play, they can pass a ball as well and if they're on a pose on pressure even though it's a great great balls knocked in it's a lot easier than you got your head down you're under pressure same all over the field gonna have to work hard and when they get that chance they need to take it get themselves back in the game as early as possible yeah. Otherwise, just couldn't run away from them. Yeah, they did have chances, didn't they, in that first half, King James? Just weren't able to get on the score sheet, though. If it was 2-1 now, then maybe there would be a different feel to it if Absolutely. they'd have scored just before half-time. But that, that would be the, the ask, really, to get a goal quickly, as you say. Difficult, though, of course, against a side like Brookhouse College that stand in their way and firmly stand in their way at the moment. Chad there forward down the line for oh, the man of the half, the man of the moment twice in that first half. Omidoka, oh oh look at that. Omidoka with the ball in, header out, still there though, edge of the penalty area. Can I weave my way through? Not that time. Just like his playground out there yeah, at the moment, though, isn't it? It really is. Super skills. And again, we're all over the place. Driving into the penalty area, and the shot in the end is too high. Again, though, Brookhouse College, well, really, beginning their second half, where they left off on the front foot from the first. Yeah, absolutely. Just cut inside here. Just couldn't wrap his foot around this. and forward there for King James throwing now though for Brookhouse Kuchchik back to the goalkeeper cut out there by Safis will be taken by his opposite number and the captain who at the moment is on course to get his hands on the trophy at full time still work to be done definitely for Brockhouse here he goes again into the penalty area there and the, oh. and the strike at the end of it oh it's against the bar again rifles the woodwork for a third time wow that's a fantastic strike Mark and Sackle denied only by the woodwork. Absolutely ripped it.
Park and Sarkel again. At a school, Brookhouse College is a footballing academy. Reliably informed that they have links with different countries as well. They've brought players across from Belgium and also players from Madrid. Real notorious small school as they are, but can attract players from far and wide to come and play their football while studying there. Yeah, got a fantastic blend of players here, you can see that. and Jones they're being tightly marked as throwing went past him though Smith Park and Sarkle and Chetty Smith again falls back to him still Brockhaus on the front foot into the final third oh, and there is the third Done him with, with his eyes there. What a great goal that was. Well, it's a brilliant start to the second half of Brookhouse College, and it's 3 0 now. And it's a mountain to climb if King James are to get back into it. Super finish. That might be done and dusted now. Yeah, Chicanaro. The legs. Yeah. Ogwamba it was with the finish. Grant with the assist. Ogwamba with the strike. Just five minutes gone in the second period. It's not the start to the second half that King James wanted at all. No, not at all. You've got to admire the goal there as well. The team are playing against. They've come across a, an absolutely tremendous team. They've got to keep going. We saw it happen before. We created some chances in that first half as well. Good chances. I'll still believe in. Oh, excellent touch, but then it's blazed high. That time by Ahmed Oaken. Yes, yeah, that's up for him there. That one's still going. Fantastic first touch there. Let's bring it inside. It's going for power instead of placement there. Brookhouse College have scored three goals in each of their quarter-final victories and semi-final win. They're on the score sheet three times here today as well. They concede the one oh, in both the quarter-final and semi-final, which might give King James hope. Oh, good effort. Oh, not far away. Oh, what a good effort that was. Really something out of nothing there for King James. Had that chance presented to him in the first half, Smith, and with a much more speculative long-range strike there, but wasn't far away at all. No, not at all. Park and Sarkle. Oh, 
Over the top here for Omidokan again on a hat trick, remember. Back across and selfishly just misfired there. We're home. Zayden Jones, it wasn't cleared. Back in there now, but it should be the goalkeeper's ball. Yeah, he missed that one there, put, put on the plate. He says really unselfish. Should have finished that one. Looks as though the chances are going to continue coming though for Brookhouse. Continue flooding their way. Potential for more goals. Foul for a push there that time by Park and Sarkle. Communication there, should have gone through to the keeper, but as he said, he's cleared it. We'll talk about it after. He's cleared the danger. Woods forward, bounces through. Ten minutes played in the second half now, and Brookhouse College have extended their lead. After it, there, Fake. Started on the substitutes bench, but up to that one there. Fake with it again, but only momentarily that time as it was taken away from him. Sathis then did well. Fake swung it in there first time, but it was always just hopeful and it was too difficult an ask really for Emmett. Here's Park and Sarkle. Make it difficult was the call from the King James manager. It has seemed like it's just been easy out there for Brookhouse College, but that's testament to their quality and the way in which that they move the ball around so well. Yeah, they really do. Even under pressure, it's, it's bad enough when you give them space. When they're under pressure as well, they can still still produce, still beat a player, still pick a pass. Southeast there withdrawn and it's Rashawn Cross who is back on. Man for man marking in there as it swung in from that free kick to the back post. Oh, and my there's word. another, is it in? Has it crossed the line? Oh my word, what a goal. Has he given it? I don't think the referee's oh. given it. That looked a goal to me. I thought it had gone oh into the game. It'd be interesting to see back yeah. on the replay. Oh dear. 
Well, it was a great cross and touch as well at the back stick, nonetheless. You can hear what the Brookhouse support mm -hmm. think about it. The linesman was well positioned to make that judgment, but ultimately felt that it hadn't crossed the line. Free kick. Let's try and clear this up then as to whether it did go in or not. Just to notice the wall there. Difficult to see from yeah, that first angle. Good. It looked from our yeah, position yeah. as though it had gone in yeah. first of all. No, well done, Lino. I don't know that one if it's behind it or not. Well done, Lino, if he has. We'll take it back. We'll give it a better fit. Yeah, from our position, it looked like yeah, it had gone it did. in. It did. Right, the whole of the ball was over the mm. line, but I'm not so sure. I was looking at it back. Break it down the other end, was struck with power, but not the direction by the skipper. Gilvain unable to hit the target there. question really is to whether it yeah, backed back off the post, the post and then yeah, back behind the line it's difficult to tell because yeah. it's in the air isn't it so absolutely. it's above the line yeah absolutely got to give him the benefit yeah it was good. definitely on the line when it bounced yeah. and then off the post good effort though from that angle really was The outstretched arm for Cross there. He's frustrated with that. Midokum on the ball again. Excellent switch of play, crossed field there from right to left in the diagonal. Penalised for the shirt pull there, though, the player on the far side. Position there going against Stugwamba, scorer of the third goal for Brookhouse. Substitution there with Chadder being replaced. And it's Canas Frey here coming on for Brookhouse. Free kick. 56 minutes now on the clock. 3-0 the score in favour of Brookhouse. Very much the stronger outfit out there from what we've seen as well. Yeah, for sure. Hendrick, he's given the ball away though there to Zayden Jones. Park and Sarkle. Again, just dictating the play, playing the game at the tempo they want it played with the possession, but they're giving it away then. Defended. Fantastic touch there. On the turn, Amidokan. Oh, 
Emmett is after this. Looked a bit of a lost cause, then back to the goalkeeper, or then the slip as well from Cherry Smith. Could have made it more difficult. Streets of play, what change of play and a touch. Oh, just lost it in the end now. The first touch there was <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah, the switch in the touch. Mm. Man down here at the moment for King James Academy. Concerned with cramp. As we've been saying for all of the games, it's yeah. a big pitch out there. Yeah, it is, it is. It's the second half here. Man to win, have to do cover this pitch. It's a big old pitch, this. Helped back up there. McGilvey. Going to have to leave the field of play. Having received treatment there, though. Throwing Dean two have come in play. Oh, not unlike him there. Yeah, it's one of the first miscontrols that we've seen there mm. from Chica Ogwumba. Amadokan. Still in search of his hat oh, that's a brilliant ball by through to Agwamba. Oh, unlucky. That was some goal. I mean, look, the, the, the movement, honestly, and the passing. It's an absolute pleasure to watch. It really is. Had a kept it in play, but there was no support there with Fake. the final 20 minutes of action here today day three of four will come to its conclusion once this game is complete the festival of the finals for the PlayStation schools Cup competitions 2023 the biggest schools football competition in the country And just being held there, there's a substitution here happening. Corey Miller coming on here for King James. Switches there with Maslin. kick here left for the defender so in the first half and it was taken extremely short and then I have to be brought be brought forward but it was taken direct that time by McGilvy trying to launch that one longer but in the end it didn't go very far Oh, it's Oaken again. Oh, can that for a ball if they can get there? Round the goalkeeper. Will it be finished off? Surely now! 
It's 4-0 to Brookhouse College. Omidokin at the heart of it again with the assist. What about the pass? What about that pass? Omidokin, he's, honestly, he's some special player for me. He is a special player. Ogwamba with his second as well there yeah, with the close range yeah. finish. There, yeah, just sat up nicely. He's done ever so well there. Defender can't do anything else but that. And finished. Super goal. Omidokin has two, Ogwamba has two, and Brookhouse College between them have four. First the brace for the number 10 and then the brace to follow for Agwamba wearing 11. The accuracy on that pass though was something yeah, special. It's had really. backspin on it. Was that good? Ridiculous. Side is the decision. The goalkeeper yeah, yeah, yeah. missed it. Mm. Might have been a chance to put that one away yeah, for, for yeah. a goal back. Otherwise, Pass in here. Unlucky. Well, Zayden Jones couldn't yeah. get past the defender and keep the ball in play that time, but as you say, the range of passing is just incredible. To the penalty area, Zayden Jones. Oh. Off target though. Lenny <laughs> Murray is coming on here for Alfie Smith. Yeah, another one down with Cramp. Twice Smith has now been withdrawn in the game. Trov coming on here for Weho. Made to substitution. Throw in. It's King James on the attack at the moment here with Emmett. Oh, good tackle. Yeah, good challenge.
the end run over there, Brookhouse. As they go in search of goal number five. Yeah, he does those runs from out to in really effectively from the wide areas to in. If the pass is accurate, it's so difficult to mark, it really is. Nine minutes played now as we bear down on the final ten. Just too much for that one to be caught though by Maddox Side and Jones that time. Held up superbly again back to Park and Sarko. Now I'm a token. Goalkeeper has palmed it away and gets there at the second time of asking. Sometimes a good recovery, keeper. Well done. Cross. Michael Cross is working really hard. Unlucky. Try to feed that one through. Thirty nine goals en route to the final for Brookhouse College, and four more to add to that today. And there's going to be two changes here for Brookhouse College as well. Double change. And it's the two players that we are yet to see for them in their squad today. Marco Michael and Zenai William Savory who are coming on. He's enjoyed it today. Yeah, Eric Wombat. Being taken off there, but he's been brilliant. Down the other end there, cross. Head across now to At Schools Football over on Twitter. At Schools Football, the ESFA Twitter page to take part in the player of the match vote. I'll tell you the four nominations for that player of the match in just a moment, but it's Brookhouse College again on the attack. Nothing going to come of that vote. And cross with the header on. So those up for the player of the match, then two from either side as ever. It's the format of the voting system for all of the ESFA national finals from King James. It's Rashawn Cross or Toby Pendrick. And for Brookhouse College, probably unsurprisingly, it's Fawaz Omidokan and Chika Ogwamba. That scores football on Twitter. That was brilliant skill. Again. Yeah, how many times have we said that about, well, one of the Brookhouse College players, but Omidokan in particular. Well done, he's battled well in there, to be fair, Pendrick worked really, really hard. Bit of a testing distance. one for the goalkeeper, wasn't the simplest of balls for him to deal with. Well done, Cross there. That's someone about putting pressure on, not making it easy at all. Causing errors, that's the hard work. Benny Newman also coming on here then late on for King James Academy Royston. He 
comes on in place of James Loden. All players on off from the King James substitute bench bar Zeki Wellington now. Midoken sliding that one through. Could it be another yeah, assist yeah, for him? Yeah. It is. And that it's finished good. off by the substitute, Marco Michael. Brockhouse College have five on a five star display day. Michael gets his goal. Again, fantastic through ball. Picks him out a treat. Beautiful, beautiful. The, the, the way to pass. Again, looks easy, but it's not. The way to pass is there. Excellent finish. And for the change of goalkeeper here as well. It's the confident situation that Brookhouse College find themselves in. So Mark Schutke is replaced by the replacement goalkeeper, Jaden Schmerling. Job well done today, though, for Schutke. Clean sheet well kept in his part, and he'll be hoping that. Schmerling can hold on to it as well. James coaching team just sending a few more up from the back as they look for a consolation. We've said it in a few of them, a few of the more one-sided games that we've seen, but it would be nice if King James could get a goal just as that consolation yeah. for them yeah, today. It would, be, it would be nice for sure. Bounces through here to Michael again. Michael again oh. for goal. Well, wasn't far away from it. Just swerved away, close though. Yeah, didn't get true connection on it there. Again, went for power. Cut across it. Goal kick again taken by the defender. It's only coming back though the way of the King James goal. Again, driving towards the danger zone that time. Travelling with it, with it there was Frey. Madokan oh, over the head there of Cross Silky again all the superlatives to describe it as well it's been outstanding yes it really has
out for the corner it's the final 90 seconds now half normal time at least before we head into stoppage time with the score at 5-0 though I wonder how much stoppage time we'll have that header away there from the near post area Emmett's ahead of the ball but it wasn't coming his way Sarkel again looking for the longer ball through and again looking for Omidokan see back again looking for Dimitrov the substitute not quite there for him Vance is back here for cross good first touch and the second as well now then there's an overload here in the attack for King James as well into the penalty area from cross well defended, Great really recovery. was, really was, that's how important the clean seat is for them. Well, well done Cross again, he's worked so tirelessly today. Three minutes added on at the end of the 80. Three minutes of action to round off all of the action from today. saw a 10-4 win in the first game following that it was two penalty shootouts late late drama then the 1-0 win performed behind school in the game prior to this and it looks as though it's going to be a 5-0 victory here for Brookhouse College we saw some fantastic football haven't we yeah and absolutely nobody can dispute that they are the deserved winners actually been more straightforward for, th for them today Brookhouse than it was in their quarters and semi-finals as well but ultimately they've won in every single round and never needed penalties to get there as well haven't needed extra time either extra time of course is in play in the competition in all of the rounds bar the final where the games run to a tighter schedule on a finals day like this player down here at the moment for Brookhouse medics being called for Well then, Tony, as this is breaking play here, just any final thoughts before you'll be heading down for the trophy presentation as well at full time and handing over the trophy to, to Brookhouse College? Yeah, I, I thought we've had a fantastic day of football today, some really, really entertaining games. We had loads of goals, loads of drama. And for me, this final game, just it was a, for me, I'm sorry to say, an exhibition game of how to play football. <laughs> There's some really, really talented players uh, on, on display today uh, for, for Brookhouse College. You know, and you know, I wouldn't be surprised if I've seen a few of them playing league football in the next few years. Yeah, when you look at the the players that they've had across the squad, I'm sure they've all played their part across the season. But Amidokan in in particular today, and Gwumba as well. Just so many of them as well. Just yeah, just the quality just, across just the whole board, the midfield, absolutely, the yes. back line. Yeah. I mean, we, have, we, we haven't talked about the, the, the back lines before, but it have been un unbelievable, you know. The ability to, um, you, you know, to, to be ruthless in terms of the tackling and winning the ball, but also they can put down and get down and play.
Yeah, well, we're late into stoppage time now. Medics are on at the moment for a, for a Brookhouse College player man down, but the referee blows the full time whistle. As we take a look back at the goals again, Tony will head down for the presentations as we look back at the highlights for Brookhouse College. It's a day to remember and the big 5-0 win here for them to go with it. Just a, a dampener on the news is the fact that a stretcher looks as though it's going to be needed here for the Brookhouse College man who's down. Do my best to keep you updated with that, but it's hard to tell at the moment who it is who's actually down and what happened to them. It's a bad way to end things for them, but a brilliant game for Brookhouse College. As we take a look back at all of the goals, all five of them. Excellent finish that one in the first half there. Amadokan was brilliant from start to finish as well. As the highlights continue to show, but the main concern here is for one of the Brookhouse players who I think just, just collapsed down at the end of the game. In good hands with the, the ambulance team that are on at the moment. It's really hard to tell which player it was who, who's gone down here for Brookhouse, but it's a it's a nasty ending to the to the brilliant day really. <laughs> We look still at all of the highlights for Brookhouse College. What I can confirm to you, though, is that the medics are on. It's the ambulance staff, so the player down is in the best of hands here. Finish that one across the goalkeeper, as they all were really for Brookhouse College. It's just to the side of the picture at the moment. I think the, the parent of the player by the looks of things is, is on anyhow. Obviously not, not showing what's happening at the moment, but there's a, a player on a stretcher just to keep your data. But we still await the, the trophy presentation at the end of today. Tony Daly is down there pitch side now and ready to take part in the presenting side of the presentation there's a standing ovation and a round of applause as well for the player here being helped off on the stretcher and I'm sure he'll head straight to the ambulance which is parked outside it has been for all of the games really wouldn't want to guess it as to which of the players it is who's been helped off on the stretcher it's disappointment today for King James Academy Royston beaten 5-0 by a better team on the day better team from start to finish in Brookhouse trophy presentation is now just being readied and stick around as that trophy will be handed over in just a moment
So then time for the trophy presentation, but first and foremost, just to confirm it was the number 15, Kenner's Freight, just because I'm aware there were people concerned at home for Brookhouse, who, who just collapsed down at the end of the game there. I was in the best care at the moment with the medics, the, the ambulance crew that were already on site here at West Brom. The trophy presentations then as the referees came forward there for their medals. Fawaz Amidokan steps forward for his player of the match trophy and the PlayStation vouchers which will go with it. He was brilliant from start to finish today, Amidokan. One of those which Tony Daly, the Aston Villa legend and former England international high accolades as he was alluding to, I think, could well go on to play league football in the, in the next few seasons. He was brilliant. King James Academy Royston then here will come forward one by one to take their medals each player stepping forward for their runners-up medals it's not the color silver that they wanted it to be James Academy Royston then with their silver medals and Brookhouse College will come forward to take their gold medals and be presented with their trophy to be lifted then by the captain Chadder. David Waldridge, our stadium announcer, leading the announcement for the presentations and the medals there being handed over by Tony Daly alongside a member of the ESFA committee as well. But a great event so far here, held by the English Schools FA at West Bromwich Albion. One more day to come still, we'll do it all again tomorrow with five more games on the agenda when we'll be back live on ESA, ESFA TV tomorrow morning. The captain there, and I chat it with the trophy, with Tony Daly alongside as well. And they now will be able to lift the trophy and celebrate. Brookhouse College! Brookhouse College lift the trophy in celebration. It wasn't a coronation for King James today. Instead, the crown is held, 
handed over to Brookhouse College. Hoping to hear as well from the two team managers just to round the show off with David Waldridge on the pitch as well. So from me, Isaac Barrington in the commentary box and Tony Daly down there pitch side at the moment, but he's been alongside. Big thanks to Tony for his company in the commentary box today and we'll both be back tomorrow. From us, it's goodbye, but do stick around for the interviews. Congratulations again to Brookhouse College. So I'm here with coach Rob and uh, it was a tough final to take in the end. Yeah, the other team showed lots and lots of quality. Our boys are obviously a bit disappointed, but obviously we're trying to get them to reflect on the bigger picture that they've made a national final, runners up in their national cup. And that's a huge achievement to be proud of. And that's absolutely it. What an achievement to even reach this stage here at the Hawthorns. I mean, it was a journey just to even be here on this pitch. Yeah, there's been a long season for them. They're putting a lot of good performances. We've had some great away days, away trips, etc. And we're really hoping that they'll still look back on this with really fun memories. Well, I know there's certainly some proud parents in the crowd. You must be so proud of those lads as well. They really gave a good account of themselves. Yeah, fantastic effort from the boys. And as I said, we came up against a really good quality team. And the boys hopefully will be keen to come back and try again next year. Well, coach, I'll let you go one more time ladies and gents let's hear it for King James Academy Royston So I'm here with Coach Brown and uh, what a professional performance from your team here. Yeah, I think um, we dominated throughout the game. Uh, really, really happy. Obviously the boys have worked really hard, so quite pleased for them. But it was not only a professional performance, a disciplined performance showing maturity way beyond their years. That's what we try to do, we try to develop the players as much as we can. So yeah, really happy again. And that's one of the things happening at Brookhouse, isn't it? Really using that community to develop that young talent and uh, put on displays of like what we saw there. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, coach, I can see they're all celebrating behind you. I'll let you go one more time, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hear it for Brookhouse College. So that's it from us on day three of the PlayStation Schools Cup 2023. We'll be back again tomorrow on ESFA TV where we do it one more time. Day four of the ESFA School Finals. Back with you right here. We'll see you tomorrow.